Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing today? And we have a very special guest with us today. It is yeah. none other than Bick from the Beluga Pod. How are you doing, man? Hello. Thanks for having me today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, dude. I'm doing good. We just, uh, you know, it's uh, it's an exciting situation. It's good to have you on at last. Finally, it's happened. I think easy. this is going to be a yeah easy. It's going to be a spicy tea time. And uh, yeah, do, do you have anything you want to you want to start off with? I think there's there's a topic that's a little bit close to your heart that you want to bring up. I think I think it's what I want to talk about as well, actually, uh, in general. So you actually got my message yesterday. The, what I uh, oh yeah, what I yeah, I, I I um I was going into Jebro stream yesterday briefly, and I was <laughs> um, watching you know how he was not defending a net for pvp and how wooden potatoes was defending a net and pvp and how the game is structured and a lot of players in this community especially from my end they always talk about the imbalance that this game brings in pvp that makes the entire melee complete cancer right and i, I don't know what it is that that some players in this community, and not spe specifically uh, speaking out with some uh, calling anybody out, but I don't know how you can defend the necromancers in this game right now in in ranked PvP when it comes down to the most OP melee class in the game. That's not even melee in this range. That is pretty much Condi in range, and. I, I know there's a lot of people that feel this way, and I know a lot of people t talk about this every single time we go live. I mean, it's literally the top thing we talk about. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like everybody agrees with me or, you know, Jebro, et cetera. And by pers personally, I think by design, Anet has been doing these things on purpose to move from the PvP scene into a different, more team play scene. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think Nemesis was always right. <laughs> he had that theory. Papa Nemesis knew from day one. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Necro is is uh, is in a in is in a spot right now where it's extremely oppressive, right? It's like, unbelievably oppressive, uh, and I think it's pretty difficult to defend. I, mean, I, I I'm I'm surprised that anyone would say that it's not a little bit busted, right? It, it definitely is a little bit busted. In the way that it is, like pretty much everything about it is just very good in conquest specifically. Like, uh, it really is worryingly good in conquest because the way that the shade can cover the entire point at range, and you could just basically you can pretty much just put all your damage onto the shade, I and mean, that's always yeah, that's, that's always going to be a problem there. But do I think Arena is doing it intentionally? No, no, I don't think they're doing it. In I think I think they just thought that Scourge was a cool idea, but they didn't. They didn't really. They didn't really think about the consequences. And I actually have some pretty good evidence for that. Actually, if you don't mind me putting this across, um, in the the test weekend for Path of Fire, um, Scourge, the Scourge, you know the you know the Scourge shade by default hit five people, and with the big shade it hit ten people. So this meant that if you were in world versus world and you were in melee, you could hit twenty people with all of your abilities. So honestly, I just don't think ArenaNet. They didn't even think. They didn't think of the consequences. They, they just they just straight up said like, "This is cool. We think this is cool. Let's put this in the game." And they didn't really think about how hilariously broken it would be when they actually did put it in the game, right? Uh, and that's that's why that's how you ended up with Scourge. And I think sometimes the the balance team is is trying to resolve things, but I think a lot of the time the game is is to a certain extent designed around the flavor and how much fun it is to play. And uh, you know these things are kind of fun to play, right? Necro is fun to play, dude. I mean, I, I don't want to say it. like it's disgusting, it's dirty, but it is fun to play. You know what I'm saying? As that's what I <laughs> that's what I would say to that. And I think if you're going to resolve some of the issues with Scourge, I'd definitely probably say it's something to do with the dual presence it has. Like I think it's an issue. I think it's a bit of an issue that everything is happening on the shade, but also around you as well. If there was maybe some kind of choice you would have to make, for example, maybe maybe there was some way you could cast your abilities either on you or the shade, 
or something like that. You know what I mean? I, I did a chat once that release stream, dude. They, they, oh, oh, <laughs> yo, it's right next to me, dude. I'm about to release this second. Dude. <laughs> I'm about to release it a second, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and as Loot Ball said, there's a huge, a huge problem is is the lack of telegraph, right? Like, there's all the shade abilities, just instant cast, can't dodge them, uh, and they have an animation, but the animation plays after you've already got fucked. So there's a few, there's a few like design problems with Scourge that make it very, very oppressive, and hopefully will be fixed. We we know we've got a balance patch coming up, and I would certainly expect Scourge and uh, uh, Scourge and Firebrand in particular to be addressed. I would say. So that, that's what I would so, say to that. <laughs> Inks, do you PvP? Uh, no, I haven't PvP'd in several seasons. Want to know why? why? Want to know why I don't PvP? Why is it? Because ArenaNet pe- Arena allows people to win trade and break terms of service left and right, and they literally but, don't seem to give a shit that, about the PvP but, community. But does that really stop you from PvP? No, I mean, I'll be honest. No, does it stop me? No, it doesn't. Yeah. But it, it means, but what, if, to what, me, it feels like... You? Uh, honestly, what is the point of competitiveness if the people at the top, who already are generally skilled enough to get to the top, are just going to cheat their way to get there anyway, and then sell spots to whoever is the highest bidder to say you're allowed in the you're allowed in the top club even if you don't deserve to be here? Okay, it defeats you, the whole purpose. If you took that away from the game, would you PvP <laughs> afterwards? I PvP for the first like six seasons, I think five, six seasons. And w- so once you find out that people were were win trading or cheating, you you stop automatically. That that that's not keep you out of the game. When it started to get really out of hand, when it started to become super public, and literally there was no response, that's when I was just like, you know what, I've I've had enough. They don't care. I don't care. Okay, so let me ask you guys a question because this this has been on my mind for so long, and I. And I just I just talked about this like two seconds ago. But do you think, by design, behind the Illuminati, with the big eyeball, the pyramid, and the dollar signs, do you believe <clears throat> that by design, this push for PvP outside of War of this World was designed purely as a mistake, and then they they try to recuperate what they made a mistake on, which was. Forget about PvE, forget about War of World, push PvP 100%, realize that fails, and then now tries to you know negate what they've done by trying to reawaken PvE and then War of World by design. So they, they do things like Scourges and Mesmers, and then they give you patches in between of seasons, and then drought patches between balances, and then they give you crazy OP warriors. And then by each season is just like, oh my God, did you even think about it? Do you think this is by design made this way so players start playing together instead of, you know, into the solo queue? Because, I mean, if you, if you look at the PvP aspect of Guild Wars 2, by design, in my opinion, by by how we still went from 2015 and where we're at today, it just feels like just a bunch of mistakes that just can't get right. And no matter, it seems like no matter what we do, no matter how we beg, it's just like, Another mistake, another mistake, another mistake. And one has to ask, is this done? Is this being done on purpose to pretty much get rid of the game mode and move towards more team play, which is War of the World? Well, honestly, I, I kind of think that in this situation, I, I mean, this is my opinion, and I, I can totally respect if people would disagree on this, but I would never, I would never um, kind of say that it's malice when you could just as easily say it's incompetence, right? And I, I don't... I don't think they're doing it on purpose. No, I, I don't. I, I actually think they're just. Uh, I just think I'm just going to be 100% real with Ar- Ar- Arena. 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 Listen up. I think Arena is just a little bit disconnected, to a certain extent, from their own game. They're trying to reconnect. They are trying to reconnect. We are seeing forum posts, interaction with the community. They want to get back together. They want. It, it's a breakup, dude. But they want to get back together. You know, there has been that rift between the company, and the player base. But actually, I think they are trying to bring it back. Uh. But right now, I think they aren't quite sure who to believe and who to listen to, to a certain extent. So I think... The, Play the, the game. The, the, you don't need to listen to anybody. No, they do. They, they, they do, though. <laughs> because at, 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 the end, at the end of the day, um, at, at the end of the day, they, they, need to, they need to have feedback from the players um, on what matters. And they, they did used to do this sort of thing, and they need to start doing it again now with more regular balance. Uh, and to get that stuff going, and that is that is what they need to. Do. I think they are going to do so, that. I don't. I don't, I don't quite understand. So, well, yeah. 
if something is unbalanced, brokenly unbalanced, you just you, you your goal is to fix it to make you know there's there's never going to be a perfect balance. There's always going to be one or two classes that reign supreme. We've seen that in every single season. But my point is, if something is broken OP balanced, you should try to address it as best as possible to make it less so. Well, the trouble is, there is also a tricky thing here. The reason why the elite specs from the, the current expansion are always going to end up being really good is because they want to sell the expansion, right? They, they always sure, want absolutely. to make the expansion good. And the trouble with something like Scourge... The real trouble with something like Scourge is because of its design and the way it can cover an entire point with a, a shade. Is that it's either, in my opinion, I actually think there is very little middle ground with Scourge. I think it will either be busted OP or totally useless. And a T bot. In my no, you're, you're probably about to say, does it deserve to be useless? I actually kind of think yes. In PvP, I think Scourge probably should be useless because I think it being broken is worse than that. Just go back to playing Reaper, man. Like Reaper's fun now. It's but see, like that that's that's what I wasn't gonna say that. Um, my thing is you have to sell the expansion, but statistically you see more money, more problems, more players, more money, more players, more problems. So if you if you take the entire more, 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 then you have more chances to actually sell your expansion. So if you have a pot of two million players, the chances of you selling hot expansion, pot of uh hot uh path of fire expansion is so high. There's, there's no, in my opinion, there's no reason to nickel and dime your player base trying, to, uh, trying to make something OP just to sell it. Because if you have specs that work and you make the game fun, players are gonna buy the game regardless because they want to support it and B and they want to see what Spellbreaker plays like after they're done with Berserker and Warrior. Like nickel and diming and making the game free to play, in my opinion, is a bad move for any MMO company or anybody. Like. I think that was one of the one of the downfalls of Guild Wars 2 was going free to play. And that's a whole new topic. But, you know, having to make things OP just to sell the expansion is borderline, in my opinion, wrong. Like, that is the exact opposite of what she will be looking to do. Because mm. now the people that were playing Berserker are playing Spellbreaker. And they get bored and they're like, well, 30 days, 30 bucks, I'm out of here. And pretty much that's what happened to me. I'm like, you know, I came back. I played the game for like 30 days. I got sick and tired of all the kind. I got sick and tired of all the, the OP warrior versus warrior kind of things. And I said, you know what? I'm gone. And then once I made a pension pack, I came back like five weeks later. But that's after I played every single MMO. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm certainly not going to disagree with the fact that this isn't a good methodology, a good approach. I don't think this is working. I don't think it's working. I think it is driving people away from PvP. Like the way, the way that this stuff doesn't get fixed... You know, this isn't getting fixed nearly fast enough, right? And we kind of heard that they are going to, right? But they won't do it quick enough. And at the end of the day, like this, there there are some currently some pretty major issues in PvP. Like you could, you could, uh, I think it's less so in World vs. World. I think it, because of the, there's no points in World vs. World, so Scourge is nowhere near as bad. But the, it is yeah. still a problem there. It is still a problem there, uh, but this kind of design cycle is not going to work out well for Arena. This isn't going to work the way they're doing this. Uh, if they keep doing this, it is going to eventually kind of kill the game mode. And, and we do kind of see, I mean, just, uh, you know, look at them, how many people aren't streaming PvP. I mean, I, I, a stream that is kind of funny to watch is, is just is just to watch, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, watch watch Cinder or watch Angels, right? They all, like, they'll lose games. That they're like really going crazy, like taking one v twos, going crazy, like trying to carry the team as hard as possible. But they just like free lose because like, the the player base isn't there anymore. Like they don't. There's the games aren't fun right now. Like the, the PvP is is not fun, uh, and I'm sure like you can have the, like the odd fun game. But I, I've actually I, mean, I can kind of say, say this. I've I've actually played quite a lot of PvP this season on on um on, on my old account, boys. Uh, and honestly, it's just it's just not nice, man. Uh, you, you just try and do your best, but it, it kind of doesn't really matter because like the, the the games are such a clown fiesta that it, it just generates a pretty impressively unfun environment, really. And and that is as a result. It's like it's a vicious cycle, man. Like the w more this happens, the worse it gets. The more this happens, the worse it gets. Well, and un and unfortunately, the size of the player base is why I think they allow people to get away with the things that they pull without repercussions. Because I, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe they think they're up against, you know, a rock and a hard place. They start banning people. What does that do to the community? Does it get better or does it get worse? I mean, I would think it was said the president. If you're banning people that are <clears throat> win trading, you're banning people that are using speed hacks, you would set the president of basically what you expect out of your community. 
I you know, would I, think so I was, too, but what I season was, are we uh, in? I mean, we're season 10, but this is the thing. Like I was, and this is, this is like, this, this, this is documented. I have emails to document this. I was playing PvP about two or three years ago, and I was playing off meta, Berserker Ranger, pew, pew, baby. Woo! You know what I'm saying? Easy, baby. And, uh, you know, we lose the match, and the warrior blames me for the match losing. And, you know, he tells me to go on a real website and play uh, a real build, which is, uh, you know, metabattle.com. And then I told him to go on a different website and become a man. And that website was, you know, uh, a website that basically, you know, teaches you how to be a man. And I got suspended for seven days. Now, I know they're there. I know they're there. By, by own purpose, I know they're there. So the people that are win trading, the people that are, you know, hacking, et cetera, I know they're I know that Anet knows this. My question is, what is it that makes you think that allowing this in the community is going to make more players play? Like, I understand you're going to lose one account, no, five nothing. accounts, ten accounts. Nothing. What's what is the the and and who are you listening to? Who is it that's making these decisions? Because I know Teapot said they are opening up, they are listening, but who are they listening to? They're not talking the, about this conversation though. They're like, not whoever, talk, and they're not going to. I would and I don't blame them for that from a PR perspective. Would you talk about this conversation? I sure as hell wouldn't. Hey, I, I run a company in real life, okay? When my employees come to me and say, we have a problem, my biggest thing to, to, to me is that I have an issue in front of me. And if I don't address it, I'm going to lose A, that, that employee, and B, maybe that customer that is being served by you know, that, 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 uh, dri that driver, except that, that employee. So for me to, to sit here as a customer and, and, and pretty much not, not a streamer, but I, as a consumer, I'm the same guy that eats the hot dog and says, Hmm, this hot dog smells like shit. I don't want to eat this hot dog. You know what I'm saying? So as, as a consumer, I would say, you know, I'm wondering who you're listening to because I'm telling you, I'm not happy with what you're doing and you're just, putting more mustard and ketchup and mayonnaise and I just got mayonnaise, ketchup and mustard all over my face and I don't want anymore. I don't want to release anymore. I just, I want it wiped off and I want this thing cooked right. Yeah, you don't want any more Condi. You don't want any more Condi's on that hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> then you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I get you, man. And, and that, that is kind of the, 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 the problem here, right? There is, it's, it is the kind of the bit of a problem. Uh, and when I, I think arena are trying to listen, but, uh, I think a big problem is is a conversation that I actually think is actually impossible to have. And the conversation that is impossible to have is ArenaNet's management structure, right? It, it seems like it takes them a very long time to get anything like this stuff done. Like we've, we've, heard, we've heard rumors about the balance team, like they can't change a skill if the law team doesn't like it or something like that, right? Like we, we've heard like really wacky things about how, how the internal balancing works, right? But I, I, I don't know. Hopefully, Arena kind of sees enough stuff like this and realizes that they have to fix it, right? Because otherwise, they are going to end up with just... Well, here's the thing, right? I'm going to say, they're just going to end up with, like, an open-world casual PvE game, which might be what they want, right? And that that's kind of the scary thing. That, that actually might be what they want, to a certain extent. Well, uh, well, well, they don't have to worry about any of this, tr you know, tricky win trading stuff, right? You're not going to win trade a world boss, are you, boys? You know what I mean? So, it, it's... Uh, ooh... <clears throat> Look at that, lads! Sorry, Sorry. she's uh, she, we have a special guest here today, guys. Yeah. Her name is Strawberry. She uh, this is her time that she hangs up with me before I go to bed. So if I don't do it, she's gonna start screaming. Berserker Ranger, <laughs> baby, pew pew, easy. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, it, it's. I think. I, I think ArenaNet may, may be kind of wanting to kind of let it die to a certain extent they kind of want they just 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 you know just sleep now just sleep that's they're saying that to the, they're whispering in the ear of the pv community the pvp community you know the pain is over just well unfortunately just rest, just rest. <clears throat> unfortunately i think probably about what what was it about a year and a half ago or so when grouch left i think when grouch and a couple of other people started to leave who were very pvp passionate uh, who were kind of the driving force behind a lot of the tournaments and stuff that did happen and were going on. I think when those people left, uh, you know, whatever arena it was working on at the time, I just think that that stuff kind of got shelved a little bit. And a lot of that momentum was lost. And a lot of the pro players, I can understand their frustration from the sense of they weren't talking to them and they weren't telling them what was going on. Is there going to be another world tournament, another season or whatever? Um... But th this whole thing with league season, win trading, 
the French mafia is on on EU, and yeah. it's just there, there's 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 people promoting websites now. Uh, they're they're just so public about it anymore. They players mm. just don't give a damn. They don't even there's care. No fear. There's no fear. They're, there's no fear because they're, they know they're there's just no consequences. Like, yeah. Hey guys, do you want to speed hack like I speed hack? Here's a website. Go to it, download, and have fun. We'll see you in the top ten. You have to pay your way to get into that though. But otherwise, we'll see you in plat two and three. So. That's, you know, PvP is, is an important topic because it, it runs my life every day. I go downstairs, I PvP the, the tomatoes, I PvP the sandwiches. All I do is PvP all day, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. Uh, but PvP is, is, is a, a major <laughs> factor for me, but it's not the game, the thing that got me into this game. PvP was pretty much what was shoved down my throat in 2015 when uh, Heart of Thorns came out. Like, I, I wasn't... I would... If you guys, if anybody played Guild Wars 2 from 2012, PvP was a game mode that basically you would go in there and you would just basically suicide 10 times, get your dailies done, and go back to War of World. Do you guys remember that? Well, <laughs> do you guys remember that? Strawberry does. <laughs> yeah, I <remember>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that one. You know, um, you know what was like, really interesting was before two, in 2012, before the game launched, there were quite a few teams who are now playing games like Overwatch, and um, uh, there, there's a few others out there. Some of them, some of the people, some of the leaders actually work for other game companies. Um, but there were several teams who were pro itch, who were excited for the launch of Guild Wars 2. It launched without all of its tools ready for spectator mode tournaments and otherwise that didn't quite work well and without a real structure to do live tournaments and so on. And that that community quickly died away in 2012 really okay. fast. And and that's like Jebro and everybody else like I wasn't saying that there wasn't a PVP presence. I'm just saying that World was World had a huge he had had a huge presence as had had a huge presence in the game and oh, sure. in the community. Like World was World was massive compared to in my opinion PVP. I think PVP was a secondary game mode. For not the pro players, I'm talking about as a majority of the game. Okay, so as a, as a majority of the game, it's what I like. What got me into Guild Wars Two was pretty much because I bought the game, I, I deleted the game, and I was like, "Yo, this game is not Guild Wars One." I know, sorry, right? this game is not Guild Wars One. This game is Guild Wars. What is this game? So I deleted the game six months later, and then I looked at some videos on YouTube, and I'm like, "Yo, what is this game mode? Like, what is this?" Because I expected Guild Wars One, and Guild Wars Two to be the same. And once I saw World of World videos, I simply downloaded the game again, went to World of World, and never looked back. I loved it. Excuse me. So. What is it in 2018 that's going to get players into Guild Wars 2? Like, what, what is it? Because, like, as much as I hate Wind Traders, as much as I hate the Scourges, <sighs> as much as I hate Strawberry talking over me, what I hate the most is that as a new player, as, as me trying to get players into this game when they download it, I pretty much show them how to play it and I let them loose. But... The first thing is they say, is there is there a faster way to 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 run? So I have to show them how to do swiftness. Is there a, 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 so my my thing I point is is go get Path of Fire. And once you're done getting Path of Fire and go get Heart of Thorns, because now you can glide and now you can use a mount. But to me, that's that's like a, really a, a, the big problem because a new player experience is so limited. It's so limited. It, it, it's so so limited because what is going to make you play Guild Wars 2? Is it going to be the raids? Are you going to skip everything and go into the raids? Is it going to be the PvP, the same thing that we're shit talking about? Or is it going to be War of World? Like, what is going to make you play Guild Wars 2? And that, as, as, a, as a player that plays this, promotes this game, and tries to grow this community, even though I have uninstalled this game on stream 10,000 times because of imbalance, etc., what is going to make Guild Wars 2 players come back to the game, stay here, other than the amazing content that is provided through combat? The combat system is awesome. I love the combat system. But outside the combat system, what is going to make players stay in this game as a new player? And that's, for me, PvP is the low, the low problem. For me, the new player experience, the zones where new players are starting out, are they full? Are they empty? That that's mm -hmm. pretty much what's going to keep the game alive because you have to have new talent come into the game to, to be able to fill those roles. But that, that's that's definitely a really interesting question. It's not something I've really thought about a lot actually. I have to say, what would what would get you to stay in the game? I think it is. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I would just say like the, the overall, I would say the combat system at the end of the day is what is going to hook you on the game. I think you start playing the game and you realize how good fighting feels compared to any other MO. And I think it's kind of a bit more open-ended. And if you look at the way the content is developing, I guess they are adding basically a lot of um, casual content to the game, right? It is mostly story-driven. It's story-driven, open-world driven, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, the universe, the, the universe, the lore, stuff like that is kind of what they're is a lot of the stuff that's happening right now and kind of finding out the plot of where everything is going to go in that regard. But yeah, I mean, I'm to a certain extent that, that, that yeah, I would say that PV, PVP for, isn't really getting pushed that much. I think um, I, I kind of agree with you. I definitely agree with you, Bic. I know we agree on this. I know we see eye to eye here, but I think World versus World should be the game mode for, for Guild Wars 2. I think it's actually perfect uh, for, for Guild Wars 2 because in my opinion, it's, just, it's such a casual thing. You can just hop on. So it fits that casual demographic. You can just hop in, get no. in there, and get some action going. Uh, and then also, you do have the, uh, the 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 ability to do some, you know, some cool, uh, you know, some tryharding stuff. You can do those one v ones. You can do those uh, like small scale rowing. You can do GVG and stuff like that. Or you can do the big Zerg fights. I think uh, the best way to go is actually world versus world, in my opinion. Um, I don't think there should be a PVE focus because that's a very classical element of an MMO to have stuff like raids and dungeons are now replaced by fractals which in my opinion is fine I like fractals so I think that's um that's how uh, that's how that should go I think you're going to end up with you're still going to have raids and I, I love raids I think I think the raids in, in Go are great really really great I think the, do you the raids think really the raid good. community is stagnant or growing or shrinking Right now, growing, I would say. Uh, uh, right now, actually, although it is a bit incestuous, a lot, a lot of the, the kind of really try-hard players have kind of funneled off into one particular guild that's also got, you know, birds to do with it. Um, but um, there, are, there are actually quite a lot of guilds cropping up right now, actually, for, for PvE, actually. I, I, is it maybe as big as it was on release? No, but that's because then we had a massive, like, nine-month gap with no raiding content and also no communication whatsoever so that's how that's um that's always going to go pretty bad you know in that as, <laughs> in that, uh, as much in that as i would love to live in your world of world versus world is going to attract players i really wish it would attract more players i i think that new people coming in to the next expansion because honestly that is when the next push will be 2019 um and and that's not just because of the game that's because of reading that's marketing and lack thereof for season four but <clears throat> world vs. world is not generally speaking not for everybody some people are going to get attracted to pvp and stay some people are going to get attracted to world vs. world in that community and stay but i think the general mmo player of today that picks an mmo up and hops around to different mmos as they get bored is there for the pve quest experience maybe raiding maybe fractals they buy some gem store stuff because they want to look fucking pretty, and that's what they do. They hop see, in, they buy some that, garden plots, and you know they do a little farming, and then they move back to WoW for a little bit. That's and then they so go back good to BDO. about. That's so. That's what's so good about Warless World because pretty much Warless World has the PVE tied into the PVP combat. It doesn't allow players to get exposed. Like for instance. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on my girlfriend, okay? Because that's a person I can pick on without her getting mad at me. But I can get my girlfriend to a match, I can verse her, and then if she doesn't do her job properly, I'm going to expose her. <laughs> expose her a hundred percent. And not only me, but her team now is exposing her. We're all exposing her. I'm laughing at her, she's getting yelled at by her team. The chances of her getting exposed in five versus five is so high. It's so high because remember, you're taking away the team play out of PvP and you're putting it in to a random five versus five matchup, right? So that means at any point of time, you're going to get exposed because you have to do your job. As a new player, you not only have to learn your class, <laughs> you have to learn meta battle. And at the same time, you also have to learn the aspect of rotation. So for new players, PvP is very, very unfriendly. People don't know what they're doing. They get exposed, get owned, and move on. But World of Squirrel, on the hand, it's like, come here, little buddy. Join my guild. Here's some gear. Follow me. Take the camp. Go ahead and kill. Stomp that player. Look his weak. <coughs> kill him. Stomp him. And the friendliness of a World of Squirrel community is a lot, in, a lot more attractive because players don't really get exposed and don't feel like they're the problem of losing. Like, for instance, 
when I was playing Hammer Revenant last night, two nights ago, and I was drunk, I was the main reason we were losing, okay? Because I was, A, playing Hammer Revenant. I had to be drunk to play it. And B, I was playing Revenant. And when I go into a matchup and I see Revenant, it's like, uh -huh. yo, we lose. But you take the same exact Revenant in World of World, and it's like, damn, did you just one shot like five people? You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what I that's what I love about World of World is because it allows newbies to be newbies and pros to outnumber them and 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 just make some amazing and interesting fights. I just don't know how open. I guess it depends on the server, right? But I don't know how open that community is to new people all the time. If you're willing to put the work in and you're willing to ask the right questions, absolutely. If you're if you're not and you're new and you don't really know what you're doing, I don't know. Not so much. Not so much. Well, uh, uh, if you like the solo roam, then that's a totally different experience and a totally different topic. But I'm talking about large Zerg fest. Can you just run up next to Teapot and group and run next to them? Yeah, you can absolutely do that, and they can't stop you. But as far as joining the group and being in larger groups, I don't know. Not all of them are so welcoming. Well, I well, know if you, know I, if you play he, Inks plays Ranger, so. Uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. What if a new player is like, what if they're playing a, a class that is not part of the general meta, right? I think most servers, most servers actually don't care. That's not been my experience. It's not been my experience. I, I wish but, it. I wish it was different, but. I, I don't know. I, I don't think. I, I, well, maybe, maybe then. Maybe then. Also, do, do we want to call? Do we want to call uh, Jebro boys? Yeah, I would you love to call have Jebro. I love, I'm gonna release with him as soon as it gets oh, to me. Oh, I'm gonna release. Yeah, with him, release. Dude. It's on. You're gonna. He's, he's got a lot of points. He's got a lot of points to say, dude. Yeah. I'm ready to expose him, dude. I'm ready to expose. Him. Can I? Uh, well, wait, wait. Can I sing you guys a song? Yeah, do it, dude. Do it. All right, excellent, excellent. All right, so uh, I've been practicing this. Um, <laughs> this is something that I haven't really, you know, practiced in the end. Uh, I haven't really rehearsed, and uh, the lighting and all the, the the sound effects isn't really here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this live. Okay, ready? Okay. Baby, baby, come back. You want a condi on me? There is something. It's all over the ground. Torment. Poison. Fire. And AIDS. It's all over my legs. I am running. But it's still killing me. That was a... Uh, <laughs> what? That was a little bit of necro, uh, necro, uh, it was a necro dedicated yeah. song. Yeah. Wow. That was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> that, that was, that Thank was you. art, I have to say. Thank Look, you. I Thank think you. we've got an extra person now. <laughs> What's Wait, up, hey. Jebro? Is that Jebro? You say, dude? <laughs> yeah. Are you ready to get exposed, Jebro? I, I, I just heard the song. I, had yeah? to, I think I just heard the song. <laughs> was you that song? It? I don't know. It's, it's some, some guy, some guy who dies when the entire raid just kills a boss. I mean, Whoa! I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Jebro, Je Je you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm making an exposed video of Jebro and raiding. I'm done. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's going <laughs> on YouTube tomorrow, dude. And thanks, you think it's fucking funny, but you're next. <laughs> Wipe that smoke off your face. <laughs> he was born before me. He copyrighted that. No, Vic's awesome. I love Vic. He's Easy. I've known Vic for a long time. Um, Off and on. He's obviously in now. Hello everyone. How are you doing, people? Double inks, double, double. double yeah, it's double. I got, I got, a, I got a, <laughs> <laughs> You guys keep this going while I fix this, all right, boys? I got. Whenever someone joins the call, I just messes everything up, man. I'm like, right, oh, so, totally messed up. Let's right, just continue, well, continue where you left off, lads. What's your take? What's your take, take. on it, Joe? Let's go. Let's drop it on us. On? Um, I, I actually, I actually kind of wish uh, Wooden Potatoes wasn't streaming as well because we could get a fifth person on this because his actual opinion is completely different to mine, uh, which I, I really I respect. I called him out on that. I actually, I, I, the first thing I said was your conversation with him yesterday, dude. And please, please bring that up because I was there and I wanted to talk to him so bad. Please bring that up, dude. Well, one, one, me and me and Wooden Potatoes are actually pretty good friends. I've known, I've known him for quite a while now. Um, so I have a lot of respect for his opinion, um, but his opinion is different to to mine because of his uh, how much he's played PvP in the recent times. Like he's played it for a couple of seasons. He had off. He is actually a really good player. It's probably you know he's he's in top ten 
PvP at the moment on NA. Uh, NA, sorry. Um, but there's, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it back to like basic, basic, like what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, or even when I was here last, you know. And it's about who this game is aimed at. And like, question, guys, like to you, like who is this game? Who is this game ad aimed at? Like specifically in an MMO audience, everyone. Who is Guild Wars Two aimed at? Casuals. Casuals and very, very like not necessarily like pro players and like MMOs. I don't think are really you know focused too I, hard. On pro. Can I players. disagree with you on that? You can't. No, this is this is everyone's opinion. Yeah, go. Because go. that question is open ended. Who does this game right now um, market is casuals? But two years ago, who did it market? And then two years before that, who did it market? Yeah, but the so, game, the argument is, is that that's why it's a current question. The argument is from a lot of players, like maybe, I'm not sure, I'm not going to speak for Sin because he, he can speak for himself. Um, but the people who I speak to is the, the PvP is less skillful than probably it's ever been in Guild Wars 2. There's more the PvP- passive play, there's more... I, a, lot of the, a lot of the issues in Guild Wars 2, I, I can give you a prime example right now of my own class, which I love. I love Hollow Smith. I love all of the. Let, let me just preface this as well. <clears throat> anyone that's new to the channel, anyone that's coming in and likes Guild Wars 2, I am not bashing the game. I fucking love Guild Wars 2. The combat is the best. Like Bick said, he went to shit loads of MMOs, came back, and the combat is just like, you know, he loves the game. Nothing compares. So, Guild Wars 2, top of my list, easily. But, Hollow Smith, as an example, one of the main reasons it's still viable in at all is because I can dodge. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the, the dodge build is a bit of a it, yeah. There there's some weird there are some weird builds right now. I'll definitely give you that. There are some very weird weird. That's builds. not weird. That's a meta build. <laughs> yeah, I, I, know, I know, but I know, no, 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 well. no. It's a weird concept. I know. I realize it's the meta build. I realize that's the best. That's the best hollow build. Yeah. But it's a weird concept, right? That you you just dodge on people and they die because you you know you overheat you, you drain your heat on them and you drop all the mines down. You know that's. I'm a it, random dodger as well. So it's even so better. It's here, yeah, you're, like, just, you're, doing, you're doing sick. You're doing sick Exposed. DPS now, man. You're doing sick yeah, DPS. Yeah, myself. Yeah, it's just. Uh, <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to expose them. This is easy. No challenge. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't know. It's like and and since right to a degree, there was a casual. You know, that it's always been for the casual player. But when when ESL Pro League came in, ESL Pro League, like I don't know if people know this in Guild Wars Two, like and whoever, because Guild Wars Two got a lot of people into esports essentially. Like I mean, I used to watch Quake back in the day, back when like esports, I guess, was first announced to the world. Quake, uh, StarCraft 2, and a couple of other games, but I kept heavily into it with Guild Wars 2. And Pro League isn't just some... It, it made the game more hardcore, more pro, more on that level where, you know, there had to be that focus right right then and there to balance the game and to really get it refined and awesome, you know? And, and unfortunately, in Season 1, it failed. Like, literally, you know, day one almost, bang... <laughs> You know, it was not it was not great, unfortunately. Um, obviously, if you remember Chronomancer, and we've talked about that numerous times, um, that bunker build, which pretty much you know, almost killed it. But it still got decent viewership, I think, for what the community was in Guild Wars 2 in PvP. And people who didn't even weren't even interested in PvP were watching it. They're going into the mists, they were doing all the things, opening boxes, and and you know, it was actually not too bad. But before that even even before launch you guys remember those pre-launch tournaments do you guys remember those pre-launch tournaments yeah. very briefly but i remember a lot of the teams i followed a lot of the people on twitch that i was watching pre-launch um i'm trying to remember some of their names uh, but, but i'm drawing a bit of a blank but I'm some of the about anet stuff pre no, oh no, no no i'm talking about i'm talking about actual people who came from other mmos who came from other games who were very good at pvp in those games yeah. and were going to play guild wars 2 yeah. And they were they were beta testing when they were allowed to stream that stuff and and they were playing in 2012. But when the game launched, mm-hmm. unfortunately, a lot of things were lacking in PvP. So things just weren't finished. Build templates. <coughs> yeah, there's a, there's a big part of that. Um, and at, and those people left day, quick. Yeah. Like, yeah. They they seen yeah. the tools weren't there and they were like, 
some other game came out. I don't even remember it now at the, what it was. Some other game came out and they all shifted because that's what happens when things aren't ready. Yeah. And the pro so, and the thing is the pro scene wasn't sustained by ArenaNet to a certain extent. I mean they, they were they right. were cut, they, they, they they did the pro league right and all that stuff and it was kind of like oh what happened and it, and it kind of turns out that people don't like it if it takes half a year to fix stuff in the game, you know? Uh, and that's kind of the problem that, to a certain extent, we have now. I mean, how long has Path of Fire been out? And at the end of the day, the fundamental design problems with stuff like Scourge and uh, you see, they and stuff like Firebrand is still very, very obnoxious in the game. It just doesn't get fixed. And the thing is, you cannot sustain a competitive game if, if you have stuff... If you have stuff like that, it, it's it's... You'll have some people, but you won't grow the scene. Like... It's gonna take. It would take a massive amount of community effort in order to actually sustain the PvP scene. Because right now, as it stands, like there's no room, there's no real reason for people to get into PvP. Right? Like it's. Mm. If you watch a PvP stream, it's you can kind of <laughs> you, you, yeah. Just guys, just watch any any PvP stream, and it doesn't matter what level it is. Like even honestly, like probably the only places where PvP is actually fun is probably actually towards the lower leagues. Honestly, but if you're if you're anywhere. <laughs> Like it, of like above gold, you're probably just gonna see bullshit happen. You're just gonna go, what the fuck? You're gonna look at the stream and go, well, I mean, this kind of looks like AIDS, right? It's like, well, and and then there's like people like running around randomly around in circles, just going crazy. Uh, and, 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 I don't know, like people just don't understand. <laughs> I don't know, I've seen Woo. it, man. Yeah. Yeah, like, dude, I, I, I've, pl I've played solo queue, and honestly, like sometimes I actually think my team is fucking bots, dude. They just like run around in circles, going crazy. I, I mean, what even is this? It's but but the Jebro says that the game is easy though. So like we have two contradicting things where the game is so easy, but at the same time we got bots running in circles. So no. which one is it? <laughs> it? No, it's both actually. Like, it, it's just that the game is the game is the game is pretty easy. I would say that there is some interesting <laughs> and, and nuance to doing rotation, but I think the game is a pretty easy game, relatively speaking. But the thing is, like, the community is so casual that it, 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 it just makes it look a lot harder than it is, honestly. Uh, so, it, 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 <laughs> this, this is... Right, as well, because of the actual, like, it's all about, like, the game is, an, is more about, and it's always been, like, kind of that half... I, I'm, I'm not even sure if it's half like some, like half their own player's skill at their class. Obviously, you have to be you know good and mindful of how you play and and positioning and everything else. But like more than ever, like guys, if you know how to rotate in PvP, you are going to be more successful than ever right now. If you know how to match up and go up against, and I might be just speaking for NA, um, but it, it's pretty piss poor. If you know. That you shouldn't cleave down, maybe you should cleave down a thief rather than spending ten minutes trying to downstate him. You know you're going to be winning a little bit more if you know that you know you shouldn't be two v one-ing and chasing some guy right across the whole map while someone's <laughs> capping a node on their own and your team is completely outnumbered. If that you know not, fine. then well, yeah, exactly. Then <laughs> you're going to be doing well. There's I all will. these things that people can do to improve, to make themselves want to be better. But Matt said it, why? There is no reason. There is absolutely no reason for people to give a fuck about getting better. And that is the problem. That is and the Jim main Bro, of it. I want to disagree with you. <laughs> I, I, I want to disagree with you because I have been playing this game for a decent amount of time myself too. And I want to say that I think Guild Wars 2 is not an easy game. You know, I I, I want to say that players that come from other MMOs, I'm not sorry, an easy game. not in not like an easy game in terms of it's more like the actual. Some of the classes are a lot easier. It's less skillful. I, I, I think that okay. So I think when you say that you you're the word skillful, that means that you think that everybody is on the same knowledge as you, as they know all the boons, they know all the all the debuffs. And that means that you now know how to rotate and deal with, you know, the bullshit in this game. But I think as a new player joins this community and jumps into PvP, they have absolutely no idea how to a rotate, play their class, and from level 1 to level 80, there's not much there that's going to teach them pretty much anything about the combat system other mm -hmm. than, like... Listen to the storyline, Zaitan, Zaitan. Like, there's there's not much there. There's, like, there's no dungeons. There's no group play. Like, the dungeons are pretty much like gone. 
I mean, if you do a dungeon, you're gonna you're gonna have to like you know get into a guild and and if you do them regardless, like I did a dungeon yesterday with my girlfriend and we had everybody there was new. It was honestly better just to get it done than just talk to them in chat because I was I was having a headache just just talking to them. So I think when it comes mm -hmm. down to like Guild Wars Two as a game, you jump into the game one to eighty, you do your hearts. You, you, you know, you, you do a little salvaging here and there. You move on into the PvP, and then what have you learned? But what's the difference in like other <laughs> MMOs, World of Warcraft? You you go from 1 to level 110, but be, between level 1 to level 110, you've done dungeons. You've done a couple of the raids. Like, you you actually have done group content that makes you progress through the game. So, again, this is this goes back into to. the... I'm sorry? You don't have to. Uh, you don't you have to do just, any of this stuff? You can just collect 90,000 bear asses and get to level 110. <laughs> Come on, like, man! You can just Come do, on, you, you can just do quests, and, you know. Inks. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Good Wars Two is easier. What, you can just buy a level eighty scroll and you're instant eighty. But you know. Yeah. But what are you saying? But are you saying that other game? It's easier for other games to get people I, into PvP and I they think, cheaper the better. Or I think that Guild Wars Two, <laughs> the problem with PvP is how people approach PvP. Like they come from they they like I had my viewers come from. <laughs> Like let's say Elder Scrolls Online, they download Guild Wars 2, they get to the minimum level needed for PvP, they jump into PvP, get wrecked, quit the game, go back to ESO. It's like that game is on Bacandi, but did you sit on all that points? Did you try to evade any of those things? No, 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 no. You didn't learn the basics of your class. It's like me last night, I was playing Elementalist. I got wrecked in unranked PvP. Did I blame the class or did I blame myself? I blame myself because I obviously I wasn't playing it right. So again, it's it, the yeah, game is easy. You can blame the class. You can blame the class. I can't class blame fine. the class, but it was. You but I'll tell you right class. now. I mean, I feel like <laughs> you I have like... to know. You have to know the class before you have before you say this game is easy. And I don't think that this community is that knowledgeable where they all know their classes and it's so easy. Oh God, it's so easy. <laughs> Give me my tea while I'm PvPing because my this is it's not <laughs> like that. I think players struggle in this community. I think Soul Beast players, of course, uh, especially. Yeah. I think people that play off meta struggle in this game. I think a lot of players don't even know what meta battle is because they they're new to it. Like last like last night, it's like, what's this build? I'm playing meta druid. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 can't put everybody in a pot where they think that they are as as knowledgeable as you because they're not at all. I I didn't I didn't I didn't say that big though. That's not what I said. I, I feel it, like I, I feel like the underlying I, I thing is. Sorry, Inks, go, go. I'll tell. I'll say what I meant. In a minute. I, I feel I like the underlining thing that you're getting to, to Bic, and you're not wrong, is that the mm -hmm. new player experience, the the tools that should help you grow as a player, aren't very good in Guild Wars Two. This is why uh, I have senior citizen friends like makes... Inks that helps me out because this guy is so knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so knowledgeable. Thank you, Inks. Yeah, but we can disagree. Like my my that wasn't that wasn't my what I said. I didn't say the game was easy. I said the game is less skillful than it used to be. But that is not an argument for what you're saying. What you're saying is is right to a degree. Like the game is genuinely like, and still my knowledge is is my knowledge is pretty good. And you know, one of the most knowledgeable people I would say, especially now because of people who have left. But at the same time, it's more of a you know, there's one, there's a population issue, you know, two, the people at the towards the top and even mid tier have left. So that that skill level drops. So you see people like me getting further and further up into the rankings, which is, you know, fine. And there's different issues where people it's when I said less skillful, if you're an, if you're a new player now. You can jump in now, other than maybe when DH came out and it was ridiculously OP with the traps. You can jump in with Scourge and be ridiculously powerful, even if you have no idea what to do. Yeah, you just got to like, you, you just got to mash buttons, dude. You can just roll <laughs> you your just gotta go crazy. Keyboard. Like you can, and I'm not saying that you're not going to get wrecked. You know, if you've not got Firebrand on the team, you're going to have trouble. And at a low level, at a bronze to silver level, which is where these guys, which is where the new players will be, they have that issue of going against something which makes them feel like shit. And any PvP developer will tell you the same because I speak to them all the time. I have a lot of, I have speak to a lot of people in Rocket League, Paragon, which has gone down the absolute shit recently. Epic are giving up on that game. Big plays that as well. And it's got the same problem. <laughs> You know, Big's played that. I've played with him. 
and and it's got the same problem. The intro for new players, and when they go against something which is just absolutely ridiculous, it's about the feeling that the person gets initially, and which is kind of partly what you said, Bick, as well. That they feel like shit. If if I'm a new player and I come in, like you say, you know, I play Elementalist or I play, um, you know, Ranger or whatever, or one of the new specializations which aren't that powerful, and I go up against the Scourge and I just get absolutely deleted. That immediate player engagement, which is what developers look at, which is what QA looks at, which is what loads of people look at to sell their game, to make their game better, is not good. That initial feeling is horrid. And it's yeah. been like that since Path of Fire. It's also been a bit like that since Heart of Thorns as well. Because you almost have no chance against some of these really ridiculous classes. And then, obviously, the fixes don't come. The balance isn't there. But the thing is, is that I know why the balance doesn't come. Like, my almost my complaint isn't about balance anymore. Because it's like, Amen. that's never going to change. Like, that's always been the same. And I would love it to change. But I don't think it's the PvP team or whoever, if they're a PvP team anymore. I don't even think it's their fault. I don't even think it's the balance team's fault. I just generally feel like they don't want PvP to be that successful. Anymore. So, my friends, come to. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Nick. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're right. Go ahead. So, I, it just, I don't know. I mean, it's just that it's. You know why? I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. I don't know. Maybe I've mentioned it before, but it's like the game is mainly focused around i would say the pve and more casual like player base as well and they try and feed people into these different areas where pvp and everything else they they are focusing some effort on i think ben who works on the pvp you've seen him uh, on the forums in discussion he he's a nice guy I met him as well um when we had the big thing at pax west and, and they really are trying to make things better and trying to change things but there's there is something that just one example. And you guys have saw the bridge that was added to Kylo, right? Have yeah. you seen the bridges? Yes. Why? Like, where <laughs> is the where is the putting that into beta? Just 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 even just to discuss it and just say, and maybe I missed it on the forums, but I mean maybe maybe they're good. Maybe they're bad. Like, I mean, I'm not I haven't really got a massive opinion on them at the moment, but there was no actual discussion about it it's like guys we're adding bridges to the top yeah, of cut light in the clock tower can i expose you real quick Come Ooh. On. <laughs> Go who on, cares dude. who cares about the damn bridge like this this <laughs> this whole point <laughs> but, no, seriously but who cares about those people hey who cares about you about it's an example, like, it's this, an this, example this, of a conversation just, just hear about hear me on this one like exactly what you're talking about right now are the minute things like the big no. picture in Guild Wars 2, like, like just let me hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, okay? Who, like, okay, so the bridge is not perfectly angled to, to the fucking, to, to the, you know, to the right acute angle of 366 pi, okay? Now, that's gone. It's not going to make Guild Wars 2 better fixing the bridge. <laughs> let's build a fence. Let's build the wall. Let's make America great again. That isn't going to make America great again. That is an issue. The wall is an issue. Make Guild Wars great issue. again. That that's not the issue. What's gonna make you was too? No, no, no. To... You're taking it too literally. No, 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 no. I'm not taking it. No, I'm taking it too literally. These bridges, man. I'm not, about, like, I'm not taking. Yeah, bro. Let me finish, dog. Let me finish. <laughs> please. Let me expose you. But you're getting me I, wrong. Yeah. No, I'm not taking it wrong. I know what you're saying. I understand you're focusing on the bridges. <laughs> I, I, know, I know you're making these points valid. What were they? What are the beta tested? I understand that. I like. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. But the the thing is, when you look at the entire picture of Guild Wars Two and its whole, right? Like, let's, let's just take a new player. He walks in. He does the first heart. He feeds the cows. He kills the reptilians. He goes in, kills the spiders, kills the eggs, goes into the cave, takes the heart, kills the boss. And then he's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Then goes out there, plays with his rifle, gets the heart down there. And then level 12 comes around. Level 13 comes around. And then level 50 comes around. It's like you're spiking, you're spiking, you're spiking. In the end, it's like, ah. It never actually levitates. It never actually gets anywhere. The group play never, <laughs> never actually, actually reveals itself. At level forty, you're still doing the same thing you're doing at level ten. At level fifty, you're still doing the same thing at level ten. At level 60, 70, 80, you never actually learn anything other than how to kill the goddamn Doliac. So when you're talking about the bridge, when you're talking about all of these things, how are players going to be? These amazing, amazing players that we want and and rotate 
when they never actually learn absolutely anything other than when they get pulled aside and say, you're wrong, you're wrong, this is not how you play, this is how you play. But unless Big Daddy gets on you and, and or unless you research it on YouTube or whatever, you're not going to be able to even learn the standards of your class. How well, many raids have I gone into? People don't even know their classes before they jump into the raid. Well, like the structure is just not there. What, and that's, what, what the structure, what structure is there in World of Warcraft? What structure is there? I, I, I think there's a huge there, oh, come there, on. there isn't wow, one. Really? There, there isn't one. Expose no. time. Expose time. Uh, oh, okay. Dude, I am ready for this one. <laughs> yeah. I am so ready for this one. Yeah, this let's the, go expose. Look, look, look let's at bring the, the exposure. Letters oh. in, Clark, in the chat. You have to have a certain amount of responsibility yourself as a player it, it, to get it, back, there to is, improve, uh, oh, and to get back. Some it doesn't, it, this, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. this, 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 this isn't way street, like bro. taking care of your house. There's no responsibility. It's about logging in Come and on. playing the game. Come on, dude. Like, the, you, there's no responsibility. Like, my responsibility is log in and play the game and have fun. If the game isn't going to give me that sense of teaching me and, 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 and keeping me entertained, I'm not gonna watch that movie. Like if I log into uh, if I if I log into Netflix and I say, okay, entertain me, and all I see is a white page, <laughs> am I gonna watch it? No. Now you say is Guild Wars two <laughs> is Guild Wars two uh, is is World of Warcraft not teaching players at level eleven in World of Warcraft? You walk into a dungeon and you automatically know what a healer is, what a tank is, what a DPS is. When do you find out what a healer, tank, DPS is in Guild Wars two? Please answer that. There is none, there is none. In, a, there is. in a dungeon. Not in a dungeon. Not in a dungeon. Dog. In a dungeon. In, 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 in a dungeon. Raids? In raids? They would, they would, they would, it, but raids is like... So how raids. are you going to be a healer? How are you going to be a tank if you never practice it? Well, because you're going to go into the raid. Okay, okay. Let, let's let's act out the situation. Then. So if you if yeah. you if you, if you no 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 listen, I'm, I'm exposing you, Bic. You're getting exposed, buddy. Right, and this is kind of <laughs> this. Right, you're about to get exposed. All right, um, and this is like people. If people are not people are not. I don't know. I feel like you think people are actually completely retarded, Bic. I don't know. Like if you go into a raid and you go on Veil Guardian, and Veil Guardian is a great example of this, I think, because you actually need a healer. You need you need quite a lot of healing. It's a, it's a, it's a beefy it's a beefy uh, beefy fight. It's going to hit you hard. Okay, so if you go in there with 10 DPS classes, all right, you're gonna suddenly realize that fucking hell, I, 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 we need some healing here, lads. And then, then, you, then you might think, okay, so what can heal in this class? And you might think, well, you know, we could use a guardian to heal. We could use, um, we could use an Ellie to heal. We could use a druid to heal, right? And then, then, you, then you might realize, okay, so who are we, how are we gonna figure out who's gonna get, who's gonna get the aggro? And then eventually, you, as we figured out, right, we didn't know this at the start. When we got into raids, man, when the first time I did Veil got it, we didn't know this is how this worked, right? We didn't know how tanking worked. But then, then we kind of say, okay, so, so it looks like he's going on the person with the highest toughness, right? Okay, great. So then we then we go. Okay, so right, what could we use to tank? Well, we could use um, we could use a necro. That would be good. In fact, my first Veil Guardian kill was with a necro tank, actually. Yeah. Not yeah. the meta now. It was with you, wasn't it, Jeff? Actually, you're, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and um, yeah. Uh, so we did that. But then, as people learned about the game, people said, "Hang on a minute." We could use a Mesmer, because Mesmer can block, it can dodge, it gets got distortion, stuff like that. So that's actually a really great choice. And it can also do something really handy for the group, because it can buff people. So like, the players learn this stuff, right? The players Aye. learn this stuff. If you go into a raid and you're dying, you're going to think, okay, right, we're going to need healing. If you go into a raid and you need more damage, you're going to think, hmm, you know what's really good? Might and quickness. You know, might, quickness, and alacrity. And so you figure no, it might. out, right? It but naturally, that, it's naturally want, followed in the game. I want, it's naturally in I want the to game. expose myself. I want to expose myself. Boom, let's go. I'm fucking retarded. Because I didn't know any of this in raids. I'm, I'm, I'm simply fucking retarded. No, nah, nah, you and are like, not. Nah, man. No, 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 no. I'm retarded. You are not. I didn't know this. You nah, are not. I wiped on a boss four hours. Four hours. Four hours. <laughs> without not even getting one progression. Four hours. I'm fucking retarded. I yeah, exposed but sometimes myself. that's different. What happened last night? What do you mean? We, me, Inks, and Bic raided together, and we did like <laughs> ridiculously well. Like we none did. of us. Like me, me, Inks, and Bic have never played together. Like no. other than me and Bic in PvP, maybe, and no. like maybe randomly running into Inks when he's streaming and waving. But <laughs> you know, I mean, it, never played. There was an awesome. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. You might be watching who led the raid. Who was. A fine example of what this community really can do sometimes. And he'd already completed the raids. He'd already done it. And he led the raid. And two brand new guys who had never raided before. But there was a willingness to learn. 
And that's what it's about, like a willingness to be like, you know, finding out things as well. Oh, and those guys, to a degree, they did news. get carried. But Fake like, news. but Matt, Matt said it, like, you know, about Fake the toughness news. and stuff. <laughs> Isn't half of the experience and half the enjoyment, at least, of a game finding out yourself what the fuck has to happen? Even I want to tell you like, that off stream, I, I have joined, I have joined raids, and that's not how these people think. I think that these players think it's time <laughs> to play and learn their class as they enter the raid. I have never entered a community where people think learning or through learning your class is in the raid. I have played MMOs, and this is why it's so healthy to play other MMOs and experience other MMOs because you have to see what the other communities do to introduce healing, tanking, the mechanics before they enter We've the hard done content. That. We've all done what? that before Guild Wars 2. I played Rift. I raided in Rift for I, years. And, and I'm, and I'm and not I'm, saying you are, because Jebro, you, Teapot, Inc., we all know the mechanics. We pretty pretty smart and old players when it comes to Guild Wars 2. Okay, we, we pretty much can get it. But I'm not I'm not talking about you guys. I'm actually taking it away from my perspective and saying, what is a new player going to think of when he enters this community? Why would he take his time to research in this community? What's the benefits of him researching this community? What's going to keep him driving? And the answers are not there and they're not clear. And the reason I they're agree. not clear, because I myself <laughs> don't know how to PVE in Pathfire. I go into Pathfire maps, I do the hearts, and I'm like, what is this for? My girlfriend's the same way. What is this for? Why am I doing this? Well, what's, why do you, what, want, why do you, what do you want to get out of it? Like, what is your specific, like, as thinking about yourself, like, why? But you raided last night as well. So, yes. Like, what I, is I did your. Raid. What is your want? What do you desire? What do you think See, people need to? This is this is the part where I haven't been sold in Guild Wars 2 because I don't know what I want out of Path of Fire and PVE because I'm unsatisfied in PVE. I, I'm very satisfied logging in and doing a raid with my friends. It's so satisfying playing with you guys, playing with my girlfriend, playing with you, playing with you guys. Like last night was my first time healing in a raid. I loved it. Oh my God, I haven't healed since Bath of, Wrath, of, Wrath of Lich King in World of Warcraft. I had such a yeah. fun time healing. But when was the last time where I played healer and I actually felt useful in Guild Wars 2? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And if I could give that orgasm to the rest of the community that I felt last night, I would. But how do I do it? I mean, I could raid every single day for the next week, but can I get everybody in it? No. So I have to basically find a way to get that that same 10, uh, 10, man, peep, uh, 10 man healing process through the rest of the community by, by spreading more raids. But why wait till raids when you can start this game at level 1 to level 80 and introduce those mechanics and teach players how to heal in PvP, how to heal in, in dungeons, how to heal in, in all those things. Like, I think that the game waits too long and too many expansions to actually introduce itself than rather just automatically showing you in the beginning. They did try. They did make some attempts with things like dodging and everything else, which was like Inks is saying, weren't, weren't fantastic. This, the, the, the dodging, I mean, the dodging thing was I mean, it was an attempt. At least they attempted. Right? Listen, At least listen, they tried. Listen to this story real quick. <laughs> so my nine-year-old nephew started playing Guild Wars 2 last week. Oh. And uh, he's leveling up. He's level 16 at the time that this happens. Yeah. He's playing an engineer. Oh. And oh god, why? No, don't play. He's, he's fighting. Play he's fighting a whole bunch of monsters when I come running up on him in the oh. world. And he's he almost dies, but he drops his heal turret. He heals himself. Learns to burst. He's nine years old. Learns to burst the combo field. Heals up. Okay. He's fine. He kills it. I said, why didn't I said, you, do you know that you can dodge in the game and avoid damage? He's like, why would I ever need to dodge? They don't do enough damage to me to kill me. I just heal up. <laughs> game shouldn't be that hard, though. I mean, no, I, I mean, think I, that's I, a good. I, I mean, I think that's, that's fine. I, I think that's fine. But I, I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to really address stuff in chat. People are saying, you know, uh, that's what I'm saying. The game doesn't teach you. But the thing is, to me, that that's kind of like an almost desirable thing. I don't want to go into a raid and know the mechanics. I don't want yeah, a system right. like WoW. I don't. No, I don't. Not that's I don't. Not, that's not what the game does, though. Like that I WoW doesn't want, do I, that. ESO doesn't do that. Though. It does. You that's, can see the mechanics before you even go in in WoW. Because a fucking Bro. dungeon guy did. Like you have deadly boss mods. I don't want that shit. The, I, I like okay, the discovering okay. how it works, man. Like, that's you can get what I want. You can use those Say dodge now. Yeah. <laughs> but like guys, come on, you're missing the point. Like okay, maybe some games take it over the top. You're missing the point. The reason you know the mechanics is because you have gone into that raid 
through earlier access to like e easier access to that and you lower the rate. But that's not that's not that's not what we're talking about. That's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that this game is too easy, but players don't know how to rotate, people don't know how to play, people act like bots, but we're contradicting each other because the game isn't too easy, and then the game is kind of hard, and then the game becomes harder as you go up in the skill level, and then most players quit before they get there because they don't understand why they're dying. So it's clearly not easy because they they're quitting because they're not, they're they're not having fun, which is not but winning. When, I don't know when we when us when if it was me, I didn't I never said the game was easy. Well, I, I, don't, I thought you said the game was easy. I mean, I, no, I, no, no, no. It, it might, it might... It's less skillful for at the moment in PvP because of builds. And classes that get introduced like well, Scourge. It, that doesn't mean that it's you, easy. You take you take a player out of meta that's new, and basically yeah. you have a corpse. You take a veteran out of meta, and you no longer have a corpse. You still have a competitive player. Like, but not so much now in the lower always. bronze or silver league, though. That's not but true. See, that's the the reason bronze and silver league <laughs> is there is because these players don't know what they're doing, and the reason they're stuck in there, the reason they blame each that's other. That's where they start, though. That's where a new player starts, like or gold. But right? getting I mean, I, where they get, start. but like okay, so I know a bunch of players that play this game that have been playing this game for a long time, and they're still in gold, and they blame their team for losing every day. They they're supposedly amazing players, but they're still in gold. They're That's still. Just, in silver, they but yet they blame themselves. <laughs> well, they need to. Isn't that not to... lacking out? But th this is the community that this is the community you're in, though. Like you're in this community. Like, but that happens in every. You can't just say, "Oh, they're just bad," and move on. Like, obviously, it's an issue. Everybody's blaming themselves. Everybody's blaming their teammates. The community is becoming salty as fuck. How do you stop that from happening? Well, that's enough. That's a completely different question. Well, no, it's it's not. It actually leads to the same thing. It's when you're when you're running a company, you have to ask yourself, how do I how do I progress my employees? How do I progress more growth? How do I get more people into this company? <laughs> and you have to ask yourself, how is Anet going to bring more players so more talent is introduced into PvP, into World of World, into raids, and at the same time have that talent grow? I, no I, talent, I, no I honestly don't know the answer to that, and I don't know if they have a long term goal for that. Sad as that might seem to well, some people. I don't know. This is kind of this is kind of a bit of a problem. I, mean, I think this is a community issue, right? Like, I think it's I think just so. I think it's just because the community of the game is so different. It's very difficult to get what you want. You're kind, you're asking a fish to walk on land. You know, like the a casual community like like Guild Wars Two is never gonna want to do that, right? It, it's it's never gonna want to uh, you know get basically get good. They just want to have a good time, man, and and, and log on. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. what, what, I mean, and, and the stuff about like you don't I, know why you're doing. If you if you if you go into raids, like I, I, I don't know. If you don't know what's killing you on Veil vale Guardian, then I don't even know, man. Like, come on, dude. Like, I, I, I know how to answer that question. I know how to answer my question. I, I, I mean, I'll give you my answer. If I was if I was sitting in ANSC, I know how to answer. Can I answer it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go for okay. it. Okay. So this is purely through me streaming. Guild Wars 2 for the last couple of years and trying to introduce my friends how to play this game. And the first starting zones are always the best. They love them because they're like, holy crap, there's no quest. I don't have to worry about inventory, none of that stuff. It's just like, I just go in there, kill and move on. They love it. Absolutely love it. And, I, and, I, and honestly, like, Quinsdale is one of my favorite areas in this game. I love doing Quinsdale when I'm bored. I'm on the office. I just do Quinsdale and alts. I love it. Okay. Now, as they progress to like level 10, level 15, the linear progression becomes very, very unappealing to them. They're like, well, when can we play together? And I say, well, we can go and what can we do together? And that's pretty much where I, I kind of, we kind of fall off each other. Now, what I personally would like to see done is Guild Wars 2 to introduce lobby dungeons and higher end dungeons that are not fractals, fractals I, that are basically dungeons for newer players, but at the same time, veteran players like they used to have back in the day. Like, I thought dungeons were amazing. I love dungeons. I used to do dungeons. I used to have my cycle of dungeons in my group every day. We'd make our money. We'd move on. It was fun. We'd get new players in the dungeons through the guild, and it was learning mechanics <laughs> and then going into fractals. I thought it was great. And as, as, a, mm -hmm. as running players through those dungeons... You're also teaching them the small mechanics that they're later going to have to learn in the game. I don't understand why they went away from that. Can I ask you a question? Like, I mean, I mean, it might just be my chat, literally, where I get this this question. I don't know, but I'm I'm sure it's not. 
Um, number one question players ask or new players ask is, you know, how do I get to level 80 the quickest? That's one of the main questions I get in my chat. And I'm playing PvP. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm playing PvP. And they get there and then what happens? But the thing is, is like, who wants to do that stuff? Like, I mean, um, the one thing, okay, when you were talking about dungeons, and I mentioned this months, maybe years ago, I always thought dungeons is a second, just a thing that people want to play, get a flipping auto LFG queue in there, make people select a class, five people, boom, you get into a dungeon. And they can do that. They, they, I'm not sure why that was never introduced. It's fine. Like, I think that that could be something that is, the dungeons that is good, Gilmore but I don't Sewell think, but why do they want to do it? Like people the new don't players, want to do shit that they the don't new want players to do are from. are doing the dungeons. The veteran players are also doing the dungeons, but there's no nothing introduced between two expansions and towards the dungeons other than fractals and raids. Like, oh, because like, that's dead content to them. Why would you do dungeons? Well, they, they went away from know, dungeons back it, in 2012. It, basically, would it, isn't that would it, Wouldn't something that we talk about where players don't know their classes in a game or like PvP and raids? help with something like that like i mean dungeons, that... don't, dungeons don't help new play players understand their class i don't think so so if dungeons doesn't help new players understand a class and then raids is going to do so you can't do it in a five-man group you're not going to do it in a 10-man group well, well, a big well, problem I, with all this is, is, is how different is how different all these PVE game modes are. Like dungeons are very different to fractals, and fractals are very different to raids. Like they're they're all very different. Like you could argue that the core mechanics are there, and you can learn your class and all of them <coughs> and kind of transfer. But it, it the way you play each one is is extremely different, and that's kind of um. That's kind of a problem to that, and they kind of have tried to they have tried to alleviate this. For example, if you look up, uh, I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys are familiar with the Swamp Fractal, right? But that is supposed to be a bridge to raid. It's a more raid-like boss. Um, yeah. Stuff like the challenge modes, like nine, uh, Fractal ninety nine, Fractal one hundred, are more raid-like bosses, um, and they're trying to bridge that gap from Fractals. But the trouble is, and this is kind of a really interesting thing. I, I think the problem with Guild Wars two is that it's very different because for me, if someone says, you know. You should be playing dungeons. Why are you getting up to level 80? Like, the way I see it is that, to a certain extent, the game starts at 80. And that's certainly how I feel, felt when I played yeah. it, right? The, the way I felt when, felt when I first leveled to 80, my first play, my first time in Guild Wars 2, is that the journey getting to 80 was where you start the end game, right? And I realized that people are kind of a bit, they, they, you know, it, 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 uh, kind of they want it now. They want it all now. But to me, like you, you well, get to level it. eighty and you learn the class. You you get you got you you know you figure out what your abilities. You like if you figure out the play style, right? But I feel like it's at eighty is where you actually start to get into this stuff. Where you start playing these other game modes. Where you get into a this lot, stuff. Yeah, in my a opinion. lot of MMOs fail on that. They fail. Yes, now it's true. They, You're absolutely they, right. Now it is true. That's when they fail or they they do well. Uh, other than uh, maybe like um, ESO on launch, right. for example. Like ESO on launch wasn't about end game. It was just a about the fact that the fucking when you hit something it didn't feel like you were hitting anything you know there were so many fucking issues and it's actually probably an okay game now but i'll which, never go back which to the alpha testers <coughs> that i was a part of told them about and they ignored the feedback yeah, yeah same i was exactly in, the same in, in my perfect world i think the game starts at level one the experience from one to 80 is what I think, sells the game right. to the players and i, I think, think the the experience like what again this is not just promoting Guild Wars 2. This is pretty much promoting all of the MMOs that I've played. The experience from one to max level has always been, as a new player for me, is this the trial phase that I'm, that I'm going to stick with or I'm going to leave? And for most MMOs, the trial phase is what basically makes me buy the game. And that's pretty much through Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, Black Desert Online. I think Black Desert Online did a really good job of selling you the game from level one to level 56. Once they took your money at 56 to 60, they said, fuck you, easy. But uh, before that, you know, the experience from one to 56 in Black Desert Online was really appealing, really nostalgic. It was just amazing. And that's where pretty much not, Black Desert Online took all your money once you get to like 55 to 56. But unfortunately, you know, is, is that, you know, most MMOs right now? And and I think, yes, it is. I think most games, when it comes to the leveling aspect, are pretty freaking good, um, including Guild Wars 2. And am I saying that Guild Wars 2, 1 to 80 is, is bad and should should it be re reinvented? I think level 1 to level 40 in Guild Wars 2 is pretty good, but I think that Guild Wars 2 needs to have a spike in content from 40 plus 
not because you know, not because we uh, we we have draft content later on, but because I think that more players need to be sold on the game and also grow the skill level while they're actually just thinking about purchasing the game. I think that you as a player don't start growing at level 80. I think you need to start growing at level one and then pretty much rehearse your skill at level 80, not the other way around. Right, and and you're not you're not wrong in that feeling. Unfortunately, the current player base of MMOs, especially especially if you've played more than one MMO and you're mm-hmm. familiar with the genre, and a lot of people are nowadays because of successes like World of Warcraft, they don't want to do that leveling process. It's generally boring and tedious. But and that's wrong, though. Uninspired. Because, yeah, but we're we're, we're wrong. We're wrong. Because if we're if that not only wrong, that, if, hold on. Okay, hold on. Not only that, but you have a game like Guild Wars 2 or other MMOs that have expansions. Now you've got several expansions worth of content. When players come to a stream and watch Bic or Jebro, T. Potter or myself or whoever, they see us playing the end game content. They see us playing the current content. That's what they want to play. That's what they want to experience. They want to be in the raid. They want to be in the fractal. They want to be doing the end game content. So how do I get to level 80 fast so I can join Mighty Teapot? Just tell me, because I don't want to deal with all this other crap, and I'll just figure it out later, maybe, but probably not. It's, it's, it's a sign of the times, isn't it, really? I mean, the thing is, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I can't, I, I, I'm 21, guys, and I feel like an old man. You know, I mean, I love this stuff. I love, like, the level one, I, I love, like, the leveling journey in WoW. I love that <coughs> shit, man. You're, you're I an love old the, man in a yeah, young man's body. It's, it's just, <laughs> you know, I, I, that, that's the stuff I really enjoy. I love 1 to 80 in Guild Wars 2. I had so much fun, man. It's just, oh. I actually, so, it, so I actually, you're, you're, you're just joking me now. You're, no, you're, you're, I'm not so joking. you don't like it. You're, so you do like it? Are you, are you trolling or do you actually like it? Because I, I can't no, tell. No, seriously, dude. I, I, re- I genuinely enjoyed my first 1 to 8 in Guild Wars 2 a lot. 100%. I love it. I, I actually love, it. love the bro. I love it. Yeah. I really but do. And we the thing is, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm, what I'm, but this is like, this is what I think you guys aren't getting. Yeah. Level 1 to level 110 in World of Warcraft isn't dead because as soon as you go into World of Warcraft and you hit level 15, you get instant queues. So players obviously like leveling World of Warcraft. They're still doing it. If, if yeah, that well, was... The reason, the reason they're doing it now is, but why did they redo the leveling experience? They literally just reintroduced a new leveling experience. So maybe they didn't. Thank you, Jebro. You are a genius. Can, can, we just, can we just hear what he just said? Why did they redo it in 2018? They did it in 2018. They did it in 2014. World of Warcraft has been adapting and changing with the times. Guild Wars 2 has just been packing on maps and maps on top of more maps and basically allowing the, the first aspect of Guild Wars 1 to be skipped with but the expansion. But there are different reasons. And that's there are different reasons, though. World of War, the reason World of Warcraft has to do it is because it's a how-many-year-old MMO now? Dude, it really That's doesn't matter what World of Warcraft does. It matters on what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is why are people still playing the lobby aspects of World of Warcraft and not just skipping $60 into because, it? Because there's a market for that. There's absolutely a market for that. I'm just saying that quite a few new players who come to a veteran stream, they want to join that veteran experience as soon as possible. It's Like Teapot said, it's a sign of the times. Don't get me wrong. There, I can see a ton of people in chat right now who are saying, I love that experience. That's my favorite part. That's we fantastic. Were, That's fantastic. I want to um, see more of that. My, I my as, first as time, want to see more of that. My first time, 1 to 8 in Guild Wars 2, I loved it as well back in 2012. And the next time, the next MMO I play where I level up, I'll enjoy it the first time as well. Mm-hmm. But if I was to play Final Fantasy 14 tomorrow that has several expansions... I want to play with my friends at the end game as fast as possible. Same. Because that, yeah. that's what I want to experience. Now, that's a veteran player point of view, and not everybody, <laughs> perhaps. But the story you know, is good. I think it's a lot of people much. fall into it. So what I, what I think when it comes to the new player experience in Guild Wars 2 is that, me personally, I think the storyline is too long. From 1 to level 80, I think what? the storyline is too long. Really? And, in Guild Wars 2? Uh, from level one to level eighty, I think the storyline is too boring. I think the storyline sucks balls. Have, I, you, have, I, you I think actually, have you played like have you? I I've done the merciless challenge, right? Have you heard of it? This is the thing that Wooden Bazaar has done, right? If you use tomes in between like level ten, twenty, and all the different story, and you amount the amount of actual gameplay that there is an actual story, uh-huh. it's not actually that long. 
the See, story this is, is this is where we're contradicting each other because here we're talking about players don't really care too much about you know getting through the storyline, and then here we talk about it's too short. And I personally think as a as a as a as a player, like I would personally want the storyline. Well, first of all, zombies to me, the whole storyline was iTunes, very bad and very boring. I skipped the entire thing. I was just saying, skip, 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 skip. I did it 100 times. I did it 100,000 times. And every single time I did it as a new player, I never enjoyed it. I just did it purely just to get through the leveling fast. That's why I did it when I first started playing this game. But in 2018, would you ever see me do that damn storyline? Hell no. I'm pressing my tomes. I'm pressing my tomes, baby. I'm skipping all of that stuff because I think it's very, very boring. So as a veteran, just like Ink said, would I want to do this? Hell no. Hell no. You'll never see me doing that stuff. Most people don't want to repeat that process. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. So now in in 2018, how do we look at an issue that makes players want to skip a game mode that's actually really long? Like, I mean, you have to see Tyria. Tyria is massive. They've already got that. If you buy Heart of Thorns, you can get to level 80. Instantly. Yes, dude. Which is a mistake. Which is a mistake, I, but it's only I, one yeah, time though, bro. You don't you don't just yell away eighty over and over and over and over though. <laughs> yeah, but then but like I just one I time. think it's I think this I think your I think your uh, your opinion is not wrong because your opinion is your own vision of the game and how you enjoy it. Expose so there's nothing me. wrong there's nothing wrong with your opinion well, because that's what opinion is. Yeah. But we all feel like differently and we all enjoyed the game at different levels. When I when I played Guild Wars 2, I cannot remember a single game that I've ever been hyped for as much as Guild Wars 2. Other than Warhammer Online, I cannot remember a single game. And the feeling I get, and even the feeling I get now when I sometimes win a PvP match and it's just ridiculous, how, like the clutch players you can come out, I still get that feeling. Even yeah. last night, like with nine other players that I've never played with before, killing a boss that I've killed countless times... That experience is still there. What I think is one of the core things you're saying is how do you relay those positive good experiences to a new player when they I, can't maybe necessarily get access I, to them? I, I think don't know. the biggest enjoyment out of MMO <laughs> is not winning, is not losing, but it's understanding. I think understanding why you're losing and why you're winning is one of the biggest accomplishments you can get in an MMO. Who tells you that? Who's supposed to tell you that? That is going to be upon yourself to research it and basically learn it. That's going to That's be with you. you were, but, like, earlier, you were saying that it's the game. But this job. is. But this is this is the thing. This is the thing. If players are not doing that, and you are and en- you're ending up in players where they're destroying your matches because they don't understand or have the capacity to grow. What do you just say? Screw it, YOLO, Scourge, baby, Firebrand, okay, baby, okay, Hollow okay. Smith, dot, dot, right, 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 right. No, 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 boys, 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 boys. All right, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, in that case, in that case, <laughs> no, listen, lads, listen, lads, this is great, this is fine. Honestly, this, this is some really great, this is some really great, I haven't even thought about this. this is such a great, this is great, man. Okay, but now it's on us to say, okay, then. So, we agree that there is a problem here, okay? So, what are we going to do? How are we going to fix the new player experience? What do you want, Big? Right? Like, what do you want? What do you want to see? Right? What like, I how, want to see. How, how do you do it? Do you, could we, um, maybe we could rework fractals so you don't have to be level 80, perhaps? Maybe you don't have to be level 80 to get into fractals? Because, Bic, I'm just going to say it. And sorry for all the dungeon lovers. Dungeons are fucking dead, boys. They are 100% <laughs> stone I agree dead. With you. I agree so with you. I agree with you. We've got to do something I don't agree else, with you. Right? They're so fucking boring, and they're really boring. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. Well, it, and I wasn't trying to attack Dungeons and say, make Dungeons great in, in yeah. 2018. I'm just yeah. simply saying that Dungeons are one of the things that are easy to access. And uh, you're absolutely right. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I, I don't disagree that the player base in Guild Wars 2 is, you know, is a need for, for, for group content. But, like, this is the million-dollar question and million-dollar answer that can be answered in 13 different ways. Like the, everybody's right, but at the same time, everybody's wrong because what you want to see is what I don't want to see. What you want to see is something that I want to see. So how do you fix the one to level 80 experience? Well, if we were directors, we'd sit down, we'd get paid some decent money doing it and we'd fix it. But me personally, what I would want to see is one to 80, not take as, not take as long when it comes down to basically <laughs> having to run from point A to point B. I would like it be done more like Guild Wars 1. I think Guild Wars 1 took the love and experience and made it, I, I don't know, like I, I felt really excited every single time I made a Guild Wars 1 character. I don't know if you guys played Guild Wars 1, but These guys I thought, did. I, didn't. 
I thought the way Guild Wars 1 made the level <coughs> experience and, and the progression through the storyline very exciting. And I didn't mind doing it every single time. I, I actually I loved it so much that I made a, a I made a warrior that would run my friends through the entire expansion and and, and expansions, and we would just basically uh, enjoy the storyline as I was running through them. Like I, I thought the way Guild Wars One tackled the storyline, I thought the way Guild Wars One tackled the entire world and as in prophecies did an amazing job through basically showing the storyline, but at the same time getting it through quickly if you had somebody better that would do it. The Drac runs, the uh, the Sea of Coast runs, all of those things that were long taking. But if you had players end game, you would still have to do it, but you would do it very, very quickly with the group. And you always felt like you were a group. It was literally Guild Wars. Guild Wars One was literally Guild Wars. I loved it. I absolutely. How, yeah. how long ago was that though? As well, however, like, times change, I guess. However, Guild Wars One was a very it was. <laughs> it was a very it was a very structured game. And honestly, I I definitely agree with you, Big. I've the, the way the story was in Guild Wars 1, I, this is a lot of rose-tinted. I, I realize this is rose-tinted, but man, it was epic, you know? It, it, was, it, it was. was it was a better a better journey, in my opinion, because it actually felt like a journey, you know? Um, whereas now it's, it is more of a... It is a bit of a more of a kind of a solo uh, a solo experience to a certain extent. Now, there was group. You would all... But then again, you kind of... Well, not, not so much... I suppose, but you, you you could you could even play with AI in Guild Wars One, so you could do all of it on your own. But I don't know, there there was a certain uh, a, a certain like uh, a journey in Guild Wars One. But honestly, I don't think it's particularly I don't think it's particularly different in Guild Wars Two, really. Uh, in in from a from a group perspective, um, it, it, at level twenty, uh, if you when you get to level twenty in Guild Wars, you've got no idea how to handle. Um, uh, the underworld or how to do domain of anguish you've got no fucking clue how to do that uh, and, and at the end of the day i would say that guild wars 2's uh, guild wars 1's introduction objection. to hardcore content was way worse than guild wars objection 2. objection yeah go go on then go what you got okay so i'm gonna say something here guys that's gonna blow your mind you have never heard this before guild <laughs> wars okay that's <laughs> Guild Wars is the name of the game. See the way you got my God. Content, it's the first yeah, yeah. big said today. Yeah. This makes some Guild sense. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> is the name of the game. It's gonna blow your mind if you actually read the title. It's actually designed around guilds. So as you go into <coughs> Guild Wars and you buy the copy and you say, "Oh my God, this game is called Guild Wars." You automatically understand that you have to basically be in a guild to get stuff done. Like you, you want to play this together, not solo. You want to play this together, not not solo. Like that's the whole part of playing playing MMO is play with friends. So if you're not able to get through content in Guild Wars One, what do you do? You look for friends. Hey, John, you want to help me? Sure, join my guild. Hey, Peter, you want to join what? me? Sure, join my guild. What? And Beluga Pot has spawned. Dude, you just, no. you could already do that in Guild Wars Two. It's I'm even not easier. saying you can. It's, it's I'm not saying in Guild Wars Two. It's but better. I'm not saying you can. <laughs> I'm just saying this game is not Guild Wars One. This game is Guild Wars. <laughs> Uh, Guild Wars solo server roaming montage PvP solo hero dual queue until platinum. What? Dude, Wars. in Guild Wars One, you can be every single piece of content literally solo with just heroes. Dude, like go, look on YouTube is, and look. No, no, that's one hundred percent true. That is one hundred percent true, my friend. Go on YouTube dude, right now and look up uh, underworld right. hard you're, mode hero way. You know, like you you're can, absolutely right. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. But but listen, I don't disagree with you at all I, whatsoever. I don't disagree with you. I, I never I never. I never said that. I said Guild Wars is ran through and played with guilds, and that's the funnest one. If you're playing Guild Wars but, purely but just to no run through it solo, then, then there's, fine, there's play no, it. There's no guild team. Yeah, but they, could, what? they couldn't really just, you know, I mean, they... they <laughs> Guild Wars 1, I mean, I don't know how the success compared to Guild Wars 2, because I all I remember is I barely played Guild Wars because I couldn't jump, and it was a big I issue I think for me. it's a bigger success monetarily for them. It was bigger Guild success Guild than Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is a bigger monetary success than Guild Wars 1. I think so. They had to move, they had to do some kind of, you know, switch up, where they're, obviously their focus is more about... <laughs> Like, I feel like Guild Wars, and you can, you guys can correct me. Obviously, was about you know the expansions and paying for that. And I'm not sure if they had a store or anything. So like maybe obviously like Guild Wars Two is going to be more profitable, right? So they've got to think about the game is in what its fifth, sixth year. 
right? A sick fear of actual being being released. Who do they focus on? Do they div- do they get those teams that are now like and, and we get to the point where we say shit when the fuck is the next raid wing coming out you know and then we're thinking about oh but they said they're gonna go and redo you know the one to level 80 player experience players would riot like they're like the amount of people that would leave i actually wouldn't would mind but, play. but players would riot but like yeah they would <laughs> generally like they and they would be like okay now they're not working on PVP now they're not working on as much balance because people think that you know these people aren't doing anything else in their lives um and it's like there's just there's no po- I just I just genuinely think that I is there a I, point of actually focusing well, on that yeah, like maybe I tweaking think, but, I think that without new talent you're never <laughs> going to have a competitive scene because you're never going to get a growth I think you need growth, and I think you need to find a way to players get into this game. And if you want to, if you want to touch PvP, if you want to touch Borbos World, and you want to get more talent in there, you have to find a way to get more players into the game. It's a numbers game. You talk to fifty girls, you, five of them will sleep with you. That's how it is. And you. No, I, I kind of. Here's the thing. I think. That I think. I think you're, you're. You're. Sli- <laughs> I say. I think you're slightly wrong there, because I think. Um, it is the type of person that you're going to attract with Guild Wars 2 is not the type of person that you think we need in the game, okay? Because at the end of the day, um, no one told anyone, no, no one told any of the current top players to get good. No one told, and let's talk about PvE, right? No one said, no one in the game, no one in the game told no everyone in, the game in told SC. No party was good. Yeah, no one, no one <laughs> told SC to get good. No one told QT to get good. No one told very like, lucky noobs like IVT, <laughs> ES, whatever, like all these or, or, SY. Or, 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 I, I don't, I don't want to leave anyone out because others are going to get fucking triggered. HP, they like, come up with all the strats. Uh, no, no one, no, no one told sauce. them to get good. No Kitty one told, parts. no one told Syndrona how to get good at Thief. No one told Helseth how to fucking you know like press his F1 okay. skills. You know what I'm saying? Be I have how to be objection. Okay? Objection. <laughs> objection. <laughs> objection. Uh, objection. Go on. I have a role model in this community. Okay. The reason I am the snake, the sir, oh. pew, pew, baby ranger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the reason I play ranger is because when I was playing Guild Wars 1, sorry, Guild Wars 2, I was playing Necro. And there was this guy in War of Us World that fucking destroyed me. He destroyed me. I could not touch him. I could not touch him. He was kiting me around, pew, pew. I literally broke my keyboard. I put my foot through my keyboard and literally just like walked out of my house. As I drove to McDonald's to eat my feelings away, I said, <laughs> I want to be that guy. I, no, seriously, this is a true story. I said, I want to be that guy. Was it I got that back in, No, it wasn't Tap the Moss. Tap the Moss plays Warrior, not Ranger. Pew, pew, baby. That's the that's real man's class of Ranger. I kill you before I see you. Easy. American Sniper, baby. Easy represent. Oh, say, can you see? Easy. So, the pet does nothing. Pet does. Anyways, <laughs> so, so as as I logged back into the game, I messaged this guy and I said, "Hey, you want to be friends with me?" And he says, "Sure." So we we become friends. We have a guild. We play together in World of World. And I started playing Ranger. I started learning the mechanics. And this is how I grew as a player. I didn't do it solo. I did it with friends. I did it in I did it in a guild. And I grew. I I dueled. I I helped other people grow. And I grew a community within my small community of no Twitch, of nothing, no no YouTube, nothing. Just straight up playing with others in a guild and growing my skill level with my small community. That I was only maybe less than less than twenty five players. That's how I grew. And I didn't do it by myself. And I think in MMO you can't do it by yourself. You have to you have to do it with other people. Because it's, it's just a lot easier to do a boss with nine people than one person. But what's your point? My, po- my point is that um, Cinder and all of those other players did the same thing. They had a reason. They had a community that made them grow. And I think that if you have, let's say, Cinder's community, Beluga's community, Mighty Tipa's community, Jebra's community, and then let's say you double that by 20 more t- 20 more communities – you're going to have a lot more talent and a lot more chances of competitiveness. But how do you get there? You have to find a way to get more players in the game. That's step number one. And that's going to tackle the first experiences in Guild Wars 1. Not 
balancing warrior by 5%, balanced necro by 20%. You have to introduce new game modes in PvP. That's deathmatch, that's that's captured in the flag, something that makes PvP community excited. And, and then look at World of Warcraft like that. What do, you, what do you mean they tried that? Come on, dude. Like, come on. People don't oh want to play that Oh, my God. Shit. Well, you, well, no, because no, play shit. No, no, no. This is... Well, what Beavis. the hell's going on? No. But also, I'm another... Beavis. Here's here's the thing. <laughs> here, here's the thing. Come I think, on, man. I've been shoutcasting PvP for four and a half God. years. I know what this fucking community now, was. Here, they don't here, want... Nah, nah, nah. Now, here is where I think... There is a little bit of divergence on the methodology. I think we should we should take it because, in my opinion, the way you get what you want, Vic. This is my opinion. This is how he does is with more people like you, more people like me and Inks and Jebro. I hype in the game, going crazy, you know, telling everyone that hey, look, you know, this is fun. This is fun. Like it, it's on people like us to create these communities because not everyone, not everyone, Vic, is a doer. And I know you, you've got your own business, right? You go hard. Not many people have their own business and do that sort of thing. Most people work for someone else. And at the end of the day, it's the same way in video games, right? Not a lot of people are going to start their own <laughs> shit. Most people want to follow someone else. And at the end of the day, that's why the people you need in the games are the leaders. And that's when who create the communities and get people into the communities. And that's people like us, man. And I yes, ArenaNet can, fi Arena can fix their game. They can 100% fix their game, right? They can fix the problems with it. But at I the end of the day you're still going to need players to get the other players into it because that is how these structures forms in my opinion that is how the structures form not by not organized by the game i don't think it's how they're they're organizing the game the structures form within the um with, with with the players the players make these structures okay and yeah you can get more players definitely i, I think we do need more players <laughs> but for a start we need these we need people who are who have created the structures within the game that make people excited about playing it that is so how then, i would say that there right so excite excitement in games isn't balanced though that that's like the exact opposite it's of part excitement of it. it's part of it i actually kind of disagree I would say with you 25 percent to 30 percent is balance in, but, in, in PvP, is, in PvP, I'd be tempted to disagree actually, because I think a massive what, part what, of the excitement what, and the enjoyment is actually having a fair fight and feeling like you can outplay your yes. opponent, and it's not yes. the class. Yes. Okay, you, can, can I disagree with you? Can, can I please disagree with you? Yeah, sure. Can, can yeah, I, yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Through, through streaming Guild Wars Two, the last couple years, I've I've played with on one arm behind my back with Berserker Ranger, okay, and no matter how many times I PvP with somebody down. They complain saying that my bow is just straight up stupid and broken. It takes no skill. Welcome, to, welcome to online game, dude. Welcome to an 15, online game. <laughs> but this, is, this is the thing when it comes to balance. Balance can never be achieved because the, the amount of players that don't understand the game aren't going to say, well, he's playing a really glassy build. He's playing something completely, completely YOLO. I should actually win. I need to find a way to beat him. But instead, they say, oh, the game is broken. He's just killing me for 1,500 range, 20,000 fall off, fall off. This game is broken. That's not the reason. What? When people complain about Necros, they say Scourges are just completely broken. Scourges are not the actual issue. Scourges are just the, the result of a community that doesn't want to grow, that doesn't want to actually perform by playing one class. And the, the, the problem is they just give up and say, you know what? I'm going to play something easy. I want to get to Platinum. Give it up. Condi Condi, and it's pretty much like making a sandwich. You grab some wells, you put some marks, you put some you put some peanut butter, and bam, you're playing Necro so well. It's like making a sandwich. It's so simple. And I, I think the problem is that the lack of knowledge that players have in this game is the result of the metas that we have today. Very simplified metas that basically allow everybody to progress through simple mechanics. I and they never grow, they just spam. <laughs> What's up? I think I think, but the thing is, you need you need something to be less skillful and more spammy to play before that can even occur. So then it's balance. But you just but you're saying though that you 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 you, you Jebro, it, it makes no sense. You, you were just like complaining about the never saying that. <laughs> it does make sense. Like if if you if you put a class in. All right. Do you remember? You remember Dragon Hunter, right? You remember traps. Yes. You remember how ridiculous that was. You remember that anyone who is brand new to the game, who is brand new to PvP, and whenever anyone comes in a second most answered que asked question, which is the easiest class to play in PvP, and rather than people saying, you know. And maybe it's a warrior because if you've played any other people like MMO or game or whatever. A warrior is probably the one where, you know, you can understand the basic mechanics. It's not different. 
you can think about it, or a guardian or something like that. People will say Scourge because you can face roll and basically win a shitload of games without making much effort. That is what they will say. Whether or not it's technically true at different levels, it doesn't matter because that is the automatic answer. The reason we think this is because it's there is some truth in it. Um, other things, other things that got changed, things that you know, things that pe- piss people off. The reason people leave, like, ask Sind why he, you know, gets pissed off in PvP. Ask him if the skill level has dropped. People leave, uh, people have definitely left the game. And the reason that PvP isn't successful anymore, one, the main reason is, is because there is absolutely fuck all interest from ArenaNet and the fact that Pro League is gone. That was the main reason that our community in PvP is fucked. Then from that per the, from that time, this was the community. Then players got salty. NA players got ridiculously salty, <laughs> and we got to this point where people were win trading and selling oh themselves God. for hundreds it's of dollars. It is embarrassing. The problem, and I'm sorry to say this, community, a lot of the problem is us. Yes, we are. The fucking he's right. Jebro's right. He's, expo- the, he's exposed. He's exposed. Go on. Look, keep, keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going down. So Let's keep, I've, got, I've got tons Fuck. more of explanation. Shit. Then we've got that whole situation. And I, shall I tell you what? I'm not sure I'm even that angry with those guys because guess what? They were, they were hyped up. They were given this platform to earn money. Oh, and a shitload of money. He's releasing. <laughs> it, <laughs> wait, let me get big, the music. Even let me... Big knows it. Even Big knows it. <laughs> he knows what's <laughs> right. Release! Release! <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna make me cry from laughter. <laughs> I can't. I just got. I can't. I don't even know what to say. But but all right. So you've got that level of what happened. That was there. Okay. You carry on and you carry on and guess where the fuck we are now, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. On Reddit, at least a 500 upvoted post of how you can win trade in Guild Wars 2 PvP. And you today, you can do that if you go to the Reddit storm. Get rank one, dude. Friend- you can get rank and- one. All you need is some Ectos, man. All you need is that shit. Just get those Ectos. Get that rank one. Got a PvP. 2k Ectos. Let's go. But also, my teapot, question to you. Is that Fred still there? Wait, hang on. Let me see. Uh, wait. Wait, wait. Is, 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 it, is it a meme one? The meme one? <laughs> Where is it? Where's the fucking thread? The, the Ajax one. Oh, the Ajax one? Wait, no, can't... wait. Wait, what the fuck is that shit? How did I miss this? Someone hook me up. I can haven't I just, even seen can this Can I just thread. say that... The thread is no. still there, right? Wait, where's the thread? Hook me up. Where's Ajax's thread? There. Where is this fucking thread? <coughs> Someone link me that shit. I want to see it immediately. This is hilarious. These things get created every day, and they're not deleted. Oh, they didn't remove it, did they? Or is it on the they're forums? The, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they have been removed. Maybe it actually has been removed. Oh, here we actually... go. The real PvP... Oh, no. Never lose a match. Oh you god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I saw is it this still shit. there, Mighty Teapot? Uh, yes. Yes, it's still there. It hasn't been removed. It's still there. Six hundred upvotes. Again. <laughs> oh everyone. my god! It's sad. It's Who's sad to me. That? But the thing I is, it, it came off. It came off of this drop from Pro League. So many angry people, so many angry people were given an opportunity to earn a lot of money. I'll give you um, Tage or Tage as an, as an example. He was earning more money than he'd really seen, maybe, in, in his life. I'm not going to go into his personal, personal situations of everyone. But people were earning, you know, a ton of money from this. They would be That's able to, you know, even like go fors and stuff like that when we had that opportunity which is why i brought the ugo back do you want to know one of the main reasons i have not brought the ugo back for january why because of the fucking community because they're gonna because they're the... gonna win trade it and shit uh, well and, people, and just the aids not, not because of that not because of that but because pe- you, because yeah because there's just too much shit going you, you on don't, you don't want, don't you don't want moobs rage quitting whenever things aren't going yeah, quite right funny. that's <laughs> true <drunk. laughs> but like <laughs> <laughs> and fun drama and NA versus EU and then what's going on in the community at the moment. There will be cups in February. Also the community. There's just no population. I'm scared that I will put on a tournament and no one's going to be fucking interested. And it's just a genuine, like, if you want to start a business or anything like that, you don't want to put a tournament or especially the first one of the year out there when you don't think people are going to actually want to participate. And then you have so- this Reddit for 
And then it's just like... So let's dial it back a second. You said who is to blame. So who is to blame for the current it's, situation we find I, I, ourselves I, I, in? Honestly, honestly, Ix, I'm going to have I'm just going to have to kind of just boom. I just want to kind of go boom uh, to a certain extent. Because at the end of the day, I, I actually think that the blame game is, is borderline irrelevant at this point. Yeah. Uh, I... I, I uh, uh, what what we need to be talking about, and what we actually didn't talk about, is how are we going to fix it? What do we need to do? What does ArenaNet need to do? And boom, we just send this tea time. I know they I know they fix tea time. Okay, I know they fix tea. They, they see stuff on tea time. They put it in the game. Okay, they put it in the game. Simple as that. Okay, uh, and what 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 I what I mean by that is what how are we going? Uh, first for start, let's go back to do something that we want to fix. How do we fix the new player experience? How do we teach people about the game? Honestly, I think Bic, you're the best man to do it. Lay it down. How do we fix? Yeah, let's go. Go on, let's go. Hit us with Who's 120. House? My house. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. What is that? Okay. Jesus what is that? Christ. What is that? I'm Christ. saying, dude. Let's Christ. fucking go. Um, hey, let's go, <laughs> Big, dude. Look, if you if you had magic powers, Bic, you I'm are now God. Kill me. You are now God. Okay, you can do whatever you want to Guild Wars 2. How do you make the perfect, uh, <laughs> the perfect level 1 to 80 experience? This is our house. Okay, let's go. This is our house, okay? Guild Wars 2 is our house. It's our home. First of all, you have to have some goddamn pride. Smack the fuck out of these cheaters. Boom! Get the fuck out of the yes. community. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! You gotta put some goddamn pride in your game. You cheat, you speed hack, Get the hell out Get of the, the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of the community. If you want to come back in here, buy the game again. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You have some yeah. goddamn pride in your yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Second, no. you have to find a way to get players into this game. Is that going to be through balance? <laughs> Is that going to be through new game modes? Is that going to be through a better leveling experience? Yes, yes, yes. When, 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 you're, when you're trying to build a store, when you're trying to build a grocery store, you just don't put chocolate there for the fat boys. You put the green for the healthy people. You put the, the water for the people that live off water. You put the milk for the cow lovers. You put the entire aspect of a grocery store through celery, chocolate, meats, and cheese. You have to have everything there. You have to have all the... the but do, I don't know do you, you also called. cater for the people that have been there for so long that have been the basis of your so, community as well? Exactly. So this is this is how you have to do it. So What's the game modes that are neglected right now? PvP is neglected, right? <laughs> but it's not just PvP. It's also the leveling experience. Leveling experience is neglected. Do you put all your beasts in leveling, leveling experience? Hell no. But do you make it so players are going to stay in the game longer? Yes. Is that going to make it so leveling experience a little bit faster to 1 to 80? I don't know. That's going to be your call. But the, the biggest thing that I would say for the players that are playing this game especially through pvp is new game modes that are not conquest based now listen to what i'm going to say to you that is so hard to do you could just say deathmatch would fix everything but the problem is that if deathmatch is implemented in guild wars 2 wrong and one team snowballs the other team they're spawn camped like they did with the other one so you have to make deathmatch but at the same time, you have to have some sort of control where deathmatch is controlled to the point where you can still outplay somebody regardless of who's the better team. Like in Conquest. In Conquest, it's like you can still win a game even if, you're, if, you, if you lose your team fights. You can still win a game by outmaneuvering. <coughs> but at the same time, it's really boring. It's too old. You have to have new game modes. I like, like I talk this, I've talked this about my stream all the time. If I was a PvP player, I quit get Wars 2 a long time ago, and then I hear there's a new game mode that was introduced that's not Conquest. Would I come back to the game? For me, the answer is yes. For you, I'm not sure. But okay. also, like, think think about this. Think about this. Like, you, the community, the population is, let's say, low. The reason they are, as a, as a kindness, the reason they're changing matchmaking at the moment is because of that smaller population. It doesn't work, okay? Like, people want more quality games, and they're going to increase the queue times for people. And that is the problem. If you introduce a brand new game mode that's 5v5 no. and deathmatch, those right. queues are going to get longer. See, those that's queues exactly are going to get longer what I, on both, that's on both exactly sides. exactly what I talked about a couple of days ago, Jebro, is I talked about <laughs> a new game. Like, So, again, going back to other games that introduced Deathmatch 5v5. isn't Guild Wars 2 either. Like, but it's just not Guild Wars 2. It's not, but the thing is, it doesn't mean it can be. It, it Like... 1v1 is, is possible for me is very not a good thing. But I want to take you back um, a couple of weeks ago or I think it was a month or two ago when they were talking about nerfing Condi in Guild Wars 2. Do you remember the hype in that through the channels 
where people are like, Condi's going to get destroyed. Do you guys remember that when people were like, they're going to nerf Condi in PvP, it's going to be completely different? Do you guys remember that hype? <coughs> was it really? Well, sorry. Was, he was talking about the, the Condi changes. The Condi changes. Yes. Do you guys remember that for the PvP players that were like, oh my god, Condi's going to change? And like, literally, I was playing another game and people run into my channel and big, Bic, you got to come back to Gear Wars 2. They're changing Condi. Bic, you got to come back to Gear Wars 2. They're going to nerf Condi. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah they didn't yeah. really do that. Though. It wasn't a crazy <laughs> hype, but I mean, it was definitely a kind of, it was definitely a kind of, yeah, you know, this could kind of happen. Yeah, it was more like it. they're going to nerf Scourge, so now yeah. I can do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> going to bop like... Scourge a bit. And, uh, yeah, they, they did, they <laughs> did, much... they did now, as well. The, the, the biggest thing is, for me, Condi in this game has always been that cancer thing that I've never <laughs> loved. Because it's always been abilities that block, that put some sort of condition on you. Or some ability that you basically use the defensive and pretty much kills you as you're trying to stay alive. That's something that I've always had a problem with Gear Wars 2. Condi thieves, they're not they're not like meta, but and but they're just so fucking annoying. If you go in Warbus World and you start fighting three or four Condi thieves, it's like literally 15 ballerinas dancing on top of you. It's like Jesus Christ, like this is so annoyingly stupid. PU Mesmers since day one. It's it's always, in my opinion, in Gear Wars 2 being a turnoff for new players. So in, in Guild Wars 2, how do you handle Condi? I thought Condi was done really, really well back on Necro when Necro basically took abilities aiming to actually kill you other than just spam AoE the entire duration. I, I think that Necro vanilla was done very, very well, and I feel like a lot of players that were good could pull it off, but not many people could pull off Necro back in the beginning when Necro vanilla vanilla it, was like one of the worst builds ever in the game, and Necro was the light, never in meta early game. That's not true. You're, ta you're, Necro you're, was you're talking. You're talking about the early red vanilla. I'm talking about after after the uh, after they balanced out the the fire burn of like 1,000 ticks. I'm talking about afterwards. So they, the Necro was one of the more when underplayed classes. That? It was like 2013 to 2014. I think right before we hit uh, Heart of Thorns, like a year before we hit Heart of Thorns. I thought Necro was I thought Necro was very well balanced. I felt I like think it, the only the only person I really solidly remember playing Necro and being successful in World Tournament Series was Nos, and that was only because he was at a ridiculous level on it and never gave so, up. It was it was never guys. guys I, I, I really hate to say this, but this, this isn't. This, I mean, Ajax is right. This stuff. This isn't relevant. I mean, we're we're yeah, we're, the, the, we're, we're kind of complaining about stuff okay. that doesn't that doesn't really matter much. This is this is a this is something <laughs> that isn't that important. It's not. The, it's not like the the design memes. We, we need to. We're, we're trying to address how to convince people to get into the game and learn the game. We're not talking about like the the kind of annoying bullshit. I mean, it, 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 it the, yeah, like there's some annoying bullshit in the game. But I think even if all of that gets fixed, we'd still be complaining about the same thing. I don't think fixing all that stuff fixes the <laughs> core problem. We're we're just well, all we're doing is we're addressing the symptom, not the underlying cause here. In my opinion, like, I think. I think Jebro is jealous that I can rock, rock baldness better than he does, so he keeps interrupting what? me. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think hold that's on, what on. it is. He's jealous. <laughs> hold on. I, I need to do a, a quick little spot here for Mordramoth. He promised me $5. Bic, you're bald. There you go. Let's move on. Topic. <laughs> I need to make my five bucks. Mordramoth, I expect it in my PayPal. Thanks. <laughs> Um, the thing Matt, is, I, I think the thing what, is, what you're saying is like the core The core issue is, is you're right about is is people people getting into the game right, and which we keep coming back to. But in a game that is five years old, in a game where we all get the questions about the game, is this game dead? Is this game okay? Is it fun to play? And the first thing we'll admit is as soon as we stop bitching about it, if like if we're if we're bitching about it at the time, I will stop and I'll say please. Note this: I love the game. It is good in this way, that way, and and. But the problem is, is the word of mouth, and this is Mo's words exactly. I can't remember the exact phrase, but didn't he tell us to spread the word of the game and how good it is and how <laughs> quality the game is? Yeah, don't get me fucking started on that, mate. I'm with you. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, my friends. Cool I'm with you. Uh, um, which is a bad way to market your game. This is 2018, people. Um, <laughs> just, just. FYI. It's current year. It's current it's year, current, guys. It's not. It's not 1993. Um, <laughs> and if people are upset with things like balance, like game modes, like Bic, uh, and he wants something else, whether or not me and him agree on that, it doesn't matter. There's still a frustration base there. People will see that as a thing, and that that word will spread. 
So balance and all these different things are very important for word of mouth, especially for the way that Guild Wars 2 is marketed. Guild Wars 2 marketing is re- is based and is very reliant upon word of mouth. They do not sell their game in a way to an audience where they market Path of Fire promotion compared to Heart of Thorns. Day and night. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. They, there was a really... Uh, yeah. The, the event, the events, the, the yeah, down. the public presence. The public presence wasn't there at all, right? It just wasn't there. And I... if you rely, like I would say, if they rely on a Mac marketing campaign where they can, and it's not marketing's fault. I don't think it's marketing's fault at all. This is all from above. I, where you basically want to market your game in the main way that it is word of mouth. That if your game is not getting to people in the way that they want it in terms of balance, in terms of maps, in terms of raid, in terms of content, then how are you supposed to spread that positive word to new players? It's very, very difficult. But the, because, and then Bic, like Big said, and uh, is very valid. Like there are people who will want that early level experience and he will pass that on. It's all very personal to what we want. So if there is so many areas where we feel let down, we will talk about that in our streams, in our videos, and that is where the game is marketed. So it is all about that word of mouth. That's that is as simple as that. Like you can it that's how they market their game. Like if we're oblivious that. to that fact, then people need to get the fuck up and learn some shit and read the forums and read Reddit because that's the way it is. I think you're absolutely right. But I think one of the things that players always have an excuse on is to blame each other and then use I'm those... I'm not blaming players and people. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying you are, Baldi, Jebro. I'm not. I promise. You, you, you are not doing that. You're, I'm not saying you're doing that. All I'm saying is, dude, that players in this community have a way of arguing and blaming each other for basically things that cannot be controlled like teams hacking um and what do you call it the um the trade weight win trading i think that guild wars 2 first of all needs to take a, a principle and and say you know what we're going to set a standard for these players and we're going to get rid of the community those excuses need to leave the player's mouth because now you are just faced with not 10 problems but now seven problems the first three are gone. The next seven problems can be tackled. What's number one? Like, I think with most players in Guild Wars 2, they don't care what part of Guild Wars 2 you tackle as long as you start tackling something and make them feel like you're doing and you're progressing through an actual development of this game, not just doing simple changes here and there and then seeing you guys in six months on major balance changes. I think that that's how I felt in Guild Wars 2, especially when Harder Horns released. It was just like we had the expansion and then we didn't have like we were actually getting development. It was just basically <laughs> excuses of patches that were pretty much doing everything. We're being stagnant. And I think even even if we make new game modes for PvP, even if we do that and if they fail, at least we're moving to a step of the direction of taking chances and not having the game feel so stagnant. Because it, it has felt it has been feeling very stagnant and stale in the last couple of in, I say at least a year, even after Heart of Thorns coming out. Communication is one of the things that Guild Wars 2 does not do, and I know Teapot has says that they do talk, they, they are talking more, they're trying to be more transparent, but is that enough? I, personally, in my opinion, not enough. I think that they need to be more transparent. I think they need to give us a timeline a lot longer than what's going to happen on Tuesday. I think a, the, a lot the, longer. I completely agree. Completely agree. But the thing is, is, is that it is, we've been talking about the communication issue for, for so long. I mean, yes. there there are there are problems as well with that <laughs> because they did try to. Now we all know that the partner program has a lot of people in it, and and that's even been an issue in the past. Like we know that people, there's been like massive leaks, even from like ArenaNet's own team, for the frustration of releasing info and like not getting people informed because we really want to we really want to hype this game up. But they won't release this information up. And I think that's a frustration and why things get leaked. So there is a worry from them that even if they do communicate, it's going to get it to, to such people as a partner pro. I'm not yes, saying yes, that they should yes, just be yes doing Yes and no. Yes and no. So first of all, a lot of the leaks come from like alpha testers and, and crap from yeah, what yeah. I understand. But regardless of that, it's just that uh, a couple of years ago, they decided to change tactics on how they communicate with the community. And mm. Mo specifically had a particular way about things where he wanted to produce content. And then he'll talk about the content they produced. 
rather than promising you things that may never happen. Well, I'll um, having a guild chat. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, unfortunately, people like, a people like a roadmap. They like to know where the game might yeah, be man. heading. They like to get excited and speculate about that stuff. Did you remember, yeah, brother? Will, will, will some people get disappointed and will some people get angry and make Reddit threads? Yeah, that's going to happen. But that happens in pretty much every community anyway. Yeah. That happens even in, like, you know, I follow the hardware community uh, uh, pretty closely. AMD released a release schedule to, like, 2020. Like, mm. will all that stuff happen in the time frame? No, probably not. Some things are going to be wrong and, and out of place, and some releases are going to totally bomb. But there's a roadmap that people get excited about. They talk about YouTubers make videos and so on and so on, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. We actually had that for PvP. We actually had that for ESL, for Pro League. We had all the Pro League seasons. And we had the World Championship. And it was awesome because we were like, guys, there's a fuck ton of, there's a fuck ton of stuff coming. It's all produced professionally at times. And it's going to be sick. It's going to be hype. You said you're road completely right. Hold on, hold on, Siggy. Who said roadmaps solve anything? I didn't say it solves the problem. I said it helps the problem. Say it's so going to magically it's solve called, it's all of the problems. It's building hype and excitement. Yeah, and that, the, that's marketing, exactly what it is. the marketing is lacking. Okay, this is one way in order to get players um, more involved in what is happening in the future, rather than not communicate until something is actually released. Can can it be the devil's? I think in America you guys say devil's advocate. Is that how you say it in America? Go go. Yeah. Okay. Yo, so, in America. In America. Well, like. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Say if you so, want. I mean, <laughs> let's pretend the roadmap. Let's pretend the roadmap was on January fifth. We're going to create three new changes to three classes, and then February seventh, we're going to change three cl classes, and then from six months from now on the roadmap, we're going to have basically build templates. I think if they had mapped out the balance changes that they did through Heart of Thorns release until, you know, pretty much Path of Fire release, I think Guild Wars 2's community would have pretty much started playing something else just by looking at the roadmap because the calendar would have been empty. No, but I think Inks is saying if they had, like, plans, like, not judging on what actually happened, but maybe, you know, if they have something solid in the works to yeah, say. Right. And so that's, that's my point, it. is that they, they didn't have anything solid. <laughs> they, they didn't have anything in the works, so therefore they basically stayed it. silent. So basically it kept you guessing on what's going to happen because you absolutely knew that something was going to happen, but guessing is what kept you there and kept you there season after season after season. And then that's when you started realizing maybe Santa Claus isn't coming this year. <laughs> and you're just going to get coal instead. Or not even coal. Yeah, yeah and, and again, <laughs> that, that, that is another huge issue. And this is another internal issue. That This is one issue we can't control. At the end of the day, if ArenaNet has nothing to deliver, then eventually, yeah, that is just going to drive people away. Like, if they don't have anything they're going to do, then nothing can happen, right? Uh, but that, that's, you know, that is a, that so is a big happens, problem. Then. But then that, there's the word of mouth again. That's when that comes out, and then and, and that's their their reliance on upon, upon us for selling their game from the word of from well, the mouth no, of the main. But it, what it, it, what, I'll tell you what is insane, and this is this is I th this is to a certain extent. I think what Bick and Inks are actually talking about. The fact is that when they have something, no one knows about it. No one knows about the yep. current events. I, uh, nope. I saw a great I saw a great thread about Guild Wars Two efficiency. Something like three percent. Of the accounts on efficiency have done the um, the PVE current events, and that's skewed positively because the people who are on efficiency are more likely to do it, right? So it's yeah, less yeah. than three percent of the player base has done the new content. Do you want to know? Right? Do you want to know how but, I found out that those events were going on? Do you want to know? How I was doing wood and potatoes merciless, and you just I would never have known if those events were going on if I hadn't have gone to level the, one. It was in the patch start, notes. Yeah, yeah but no, like... A what, blurb. I, a blurb was in the patch notes. But patch notes are just like... Patch notes like... I, I'm, no, I'm don't get me wrong. I, well. Right. It's like... 
I understand. It's not, I understand. It's not sold. It's not like, guys, you know, mini tr- mini trailer, like, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds. These events are occurring in all the starter zone areas, you know, blah, right, blah, yeah. blah. Some sick voiceover. Look at these fucking undead bastards doing all their shit all over the place. I don't know. Something. Mm-hmm. Just some little kind of excitement to be like, yeah. there's a little bit of content here. Eat this up. This uh, is, uh, might take you an thing, hour. A big thing for me it was also the new Raid Wing. The... Promotion for the new Raid Wing was honestly like amateur as an insult, right? I mean, like a blurry screenshot. Yeah. Of, of like a house at the very start <laughs> of the Raid Wing. That what? 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 I, I, it was why? a ghost house. A go- <laughs> yeah, a ghost house. Uh, it was just th- no, no, dude. Honestly, uh, the, uh, the the way the way that they could do this is uh, I, I don't know. I don't even care if they leak the last boss, dude. P- if people saw Doom, okay, ho- that would get people hyped. If there was a clip with an au- an audio clip or something like that with Doom saying something cool, like or you know, uh, you know, struggle, submit, flee. Uh, it matters not. Your life is mine. Oh, you know, people are going to start going crazy. You know, that'll be such a fucking cool clip, you know, and show some gameplay of him, like getting off his chair, you know, and, and like about to smack a bitch, you know, like, dude, that's going to get people hyped as fuck. Like, it, oh, there's so much stuff they could have shown, but they showed like the worst possible part. Like, I actually think they couldn't have done it any worse. Like, it, it's, it's amazing. I, I don't understand them at all. Right. And <laughs> I, I don't know. There's just there's so so much stuff about this. You know, it, it, I don't even know, man. Like, there's so many problems. With That's this probably stuff. the orders I, they're given as well. Yeah, I like, know. You know, I know, guys, right? we don't want to show anything because they need to see it in game first. Yeah. I yeah, want to say cool. that right. I need to get people I, excited. I <laughs> love you, Aina, and I know it's hard to make a game and please everybody. And I understand sitting here and listening to all the screw ups we've done is kind of like when you are being raised and your mom and dad telling you that, you know, you, you're never going to go and you're going to flip burgers for the rest of your life. And I understand your game is is very hard to balance because of all the different mechanics and stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing that as a community we're saying is that please just fucking try. Like, just, 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 just take a leap of faith. And if it sucks, just take another leap of – just just try to, to introduce something exciting because as a PvPer – it's, in my opinion, it's not a bad call to try to make a new game mode, at least for PvPers, that are, <coughs> are, it's going to bring some excitement. It's, it's not about winning or failing. It's about at least putting your foot out there and saying, we're going to attempt and do something outside of the ordinary that we've been doing the last five years. We're going to make a game think, a different. I actually think that PvP that Ben on the forums is probably a good example of someone who is trying to at least communicate. Like, they are developing new 2v2 maps, uh, the deathmatch maps. They are developing... I think they're refixed. They're trying to fix Stronghold, whether or not that's a good allocation of people. I'm not too sure. Um, and, sure. and they are bringing new Conquest maps as well. But I think... Yeah. Go on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Somebody in chat earlier said, Bic, um, you can't make balance changes in a roadmap for future uh, future patches content. And I wanted to I wanted to re-say that. I, I said balance page patches for later on patches. I, I didn't mean to say it like that. What I meant to say is when Heart of Thrones came out, you know, we had strongholds. They could have made a roadmap <laughs> on how they're going to to fix or make uh, strongholds more competitive. That's that's what I meant to say. So, like for instance, if strongholds was an issue and it wasn't played the way they intended it, so a roadmap six months from now, we're going to basically find a way to make this more competitive. But first, we're going to balance the tank meta first. Okay, that, that's what I was saying. I wasn't saying that you can make balance patches six months in advance because that's I like saying I'm going to have an a full- example. Right, you're just giving an example of something. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. exactly. Like, don't take me literally like this is my third yeah. language and i speak albanian greek and american and a little bit of spanish and tomate is my my fourth so again when i say some of those things you have to pretty much you know like i was like it, it's like saying i'm gonna be sick january 6th i can't come to work it's not possible you, that's basically lying you can't do that but it's like the roadmap is based on the problems that come up than the problems that long term need to be fixed like build templates i think build templates obviously everybody's been talking about this you have to address it somewhere along the lines where we don't have to use Arc DPS, but actually make you know build templates a thing. You know what I'm saying? 2019. Two th- whatever the hell it is. It, it, w- never. 
Well, they they have Delta. Delta is their slave now. You, you, you're not gonna have. <laughs> you're not gonna get built Delta Blizzard. Uh, but I, I don't know. I examples. Think, examples. Yeah, That's sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Sure. Um, um. The, the thing is, uh, again, we we're kind of we're kind of again, we, we've gone on this on this bit of a tangent here again. We're 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 kind of quibbling. Uh, about we're, we're complaining about problems we're not talking about solutions boys and i think we should be talking about solutions all right yeah but who gonna, but where can they come from like who's gonna like we i think i, I, I well, haven't you, you've said a couple of solutions yeah yourself. i know, I know I, but i i, I, I want to i want to be ready? raw ready? solutions boys raw oh, solutions. Right. you ready ban the win traders ban Woo! those breaking terms of service ban the doom cm oh, exploiters those fuck those doom cm exploiters <laughs> <laughs> yeah if they're exploiting yeah, on, on purpose <laughs> ban them don't don't okay, ignore so, the competitive part of your game, be it the the most difficult boss in a raid wing for the CM title. Don't don't ignore your PvP community and allow people to win trade, speed hack, etc., which is becoming more and more rampant because you're doing nothing about it. You're not making a statement about it, you're not talking about it, you're not banning anybody as far as we can see about it. And I, I hate to be such a, a jackass about the topic, but it's sickening to see. Every it's season, it gets worse. Stuff. Every <laughs> season, it gets worse. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, well, and I'm not even a person who, I'm not exactly. even a person who's as invested in PvP like Jebro or Bick or like Wooden Potatoes this particular season or Cintronir. I'm not even invested as those people, and it makes me sick to see it. Just fucking ban them. I'm sorry. Get them out. Yeah. The, what, the I, problem the, you is, know, look, is the community problem. is small. I get it, but the community is just going to keep shrinking if you let them keep doing this. It's a leech that keeps sucking you dry. I just died in your arms tonight. It must have <laughs> been the wind trading. You should have just banned me long time ago. Yeah. Are you just making notes up now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lyrical genius. <laughs> But like, Inks Inks is right, but also I think there is only, they should ban the people who do it at at all. Like first their main account, like if they actually give a shit about the game, like the banning their main account will be enough for a lot of people lower down who actually care about their accounts in other areas. It will influence people. It won't completely get it out because you can just make a new account and you can do it again, but they have to buy the game again. So it does deter people. But like, I I think they do just need to straight up be like, you know, there is going to be an app, just a statement, like, like Inc says, just say, like, I think that's just, that's a core, that's a raw salt, like issue. That's a raw thing to solve a problem. It's a good start making a comment on the forums or even they can't put it on the front page of their website because obviously that's bad advertising sure, but sure. somewhere where they can release a statement and say if you do this you will be banned we can find out because of abc not because okay. of just players randomly and and, and 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 snow goes hand makes a good point like a lot of it is hidden not all of it's easy to catch or visible but some of it is super public super public find yeah, an example good. that is super public and make an example <laughs> out of them. Strip all their characters naked. Make them jump off the fucking roof. Make a video about it. Whatever you want to do. Oh. And make a statement about it. And say, we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Can, yeah. Can, can I say something? Do it. Lay it down. Why the... Sorry. Why the hell do you have to make a post about cheating? You learn that in grade school. You cheat. You, go, you don't go to college. You go flip burgers. Yeah, but nowadays it's different, man. Well, you have to make it <laughs> transparent. Like, just, 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 just make an example of like you cheat, you move on, you go play something else, homie. Like, we learn in grade school if you cheat, you have to be really good with it. I got through grade school really, really good because I was a really good cheater. I earned it. I earned cheating. So if you're gonna cheat, you have to do a really good job of cheating, or you're gonna get banned. Like, why do we have to make a post on something that's so common sense? That basically we learned while we were kids. PvP games do that all the time, mate. It's it's a normal thing they have to do. They have to do it. It's a regular thing that a lot a lot of companies do. Paragon actually does a really good job of their reporting system, where you actually feel very, you know, you actually feel really good because there will be as soon as you load up the game, it will say you have contributed to this person being banned because of the amount of reports well, and things we've. 
Martha Stewart cheated on her taxes. She went to prison. No warning. If Martha Stewart goes to prison first time, why can't Gilbert Stu ban the cheaters? Give me my easy emote. Where's my easy emote? Easy, boys. Hang on. Let's get that shit. There we go. Hang on. I'm putting that shit in. I'm putting it in. Let's go. Come on, boys. There we go. Ooh, there we go. There we go, lads. Woo. Easy. Easy, boys. Easy. 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 Boys. Easy. I'm serious, dude. Like we're we're so far be we're so far past that that we are yeah but the, they will ban them we're not saying that's not ban sense. them we're not saying no don't wait like wait for a statement ban them now but obviously mm -hmm. release a statement as well like you need sure. you need to actually be you were talking about you but you said this earlier you were talking about transparency and that's what transparency is about transparency and and it's about saying you be, can't just be like. We're gonna like random people are getting banned, so there's no explanation. Like, if you want to be, and what you were saying earlier is about being inclusive of everyone, ju not just the veterans and everything else. Yeah, then those new players need to know the right. rules as well, and they don't. No. They so it needs to be a statement. It can't just be You're just banned. Right. It Jeffrey needs to be in the zero. You're absolutely right. You won this title. You won this one. Big big zero. Jebra won. Hey! Jebro destroyed Bick in this debate. It's I over. This one. I, I it. Oh my god, Bick <laughs> demolished live by Jebro on stream in debate, my friends. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so Deck Max academic debate. <laughs> so Deck Max says banning cheaters won't bring in new players. You're you're 100 right, but you can't bring in new players while cheating is so rampant and active well, because you, new players when they find out. Are just gonna leave. Yeah. Well, you Amen. can't. You can't bring in new players when quite a large part of the community, especially the the old guard, so to speak, kind of use PVP as like a giant meme. You know. Yeah. R right yeah. now, like PVP, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm, I I personally, I, I'm getting it. I'm trying to get into the game mode a little bit more now, but people think it's a fucking joke. You know, it, it's ridiculous. It, it, no one takes it seriously because it because it's like a dude like top ten on the leaderboard is bought and paid for. That wh what? That's just crazy. That's insane. That's completely <coughs> ridiculous, and it shouldn't happen. It, 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 I, I don't even know, man. It's just we can't we can't have stuff like that. Otherwise, the game mode is never going to be able to thrive. You know, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and also, if there are people genuinely getting up into that area. Then, and the more like that we talk about it as well is that those people aren't even noticed because they're actually genuinely trying. There, there are people genuinely who want to get up to that, who want to play fairly. Like I, I wouldn't mind getting up to like top two hundred or hundred or whatever. Like, but my my I, when I play, my my focus is, you know what? I I am not going to use the chat anymore. I'm not going to use the chat. I'm not going to try and help people or try and instruct. I am going to, through my stream, say what I'm doing badly, what I'm doing right, and how I can fix that and try and teach people as well. And I will try play for fun. I will play purely for fun. I'm not going to try and play for, like, strict competitive nature because what's the point? And that's bad. That's really bad. Like, I shouldn't be, I should be trying really fucking hard to do well. But that is the problem. Like, I don't want to because what's the point? It's like, because the top is represented so poorly, like, it's it's just, it is a meme. It is a joke. And yeah. so who, who, who gives a fuck? Yeah, and that, that, that is something that, again, that we of the community have got to address to a certain extent. But also Arena needs to, need to slap these guys. Like, they... No, no, you need to, you need to stop, you need to stop doing this. Like, Arena needs to, like, ban these motherfuckers. It, like, you can't just fucking win trade. Wait, what's this? What's going on here with this, uh, this boss? <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. Dude, this is like, really messed up, man. Apparently, like, this guy was trying to, like, say that he was trying to accuse a very new streamer of doing a giveaway with real, mon real money, real um, money, bought items. Uh, yeah. and everyone was, like, going on him. And then looked into it. Boom. It was fucking complete fake news. It was a complete bullshit. And actually, as and ex oh the justice boys, as extra punishment for defaming someone, he actually got more suspension. Get fucking wrecked! Holy shit! Fucking That's me. what they should do. Yeah, why do so? They will ban someone for literally buying a precursor, but they won't perma ban people for and selling an automated tournament for real money or win trading rank one. And some of them are still partners. Uh I mean, yes. what, what, I didn't even, I didn't even know. Exposed. I was gonna go there. Expose, expose it. Expose. Just expose it. Expose oh. it. Expose, expose. them. Things. I want to see how it shakes. Expose. expose it. Go. Expose.
I, I don't have my emotes. I can't expose anybody. Like I've just done. I don't <laughs> <have anything. laughs> Yo, can, can I say something, guys? End of the day, this community that we log into is an outlet. And I talk about this almost <laughs> every day. It's an outlet. And we have to find a way to enjoy our outlet. If Guild Wars 2 becomes a stressful thing, it's no longer doing what it's, what it's meant to be doing. It's not, it's not being your outlet. It's your inlet, which is basically your job. Okay? So... To create Guild Wars 2 as an outlet, you have to find ways to enjoy this and to, to experience or, uh, and uh, express yourself within this community. And I tell you what, I've struggled with this so long until I found a new product called Koga Divine. I decided to go ahead and basically release all my tension through no longer complaining about things that I can't change, but actually just finding ways to enjoy what I've always been doing, and that's pew pew. And, and that's focusing on the more positive things of this game than the negatives. And, and like, I, I joke all day, all night, because I know if I leave Guild Wars 2, what do I have to look forward to? My job, my nagging girlfriend, no offense, babe, cleaning up the dog, the bad <laughs> mess, okay? Uh, going going to work. You're some trouble with that today. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> mess. Like, what, what is there to do? Like, for me, Guild Wars 2 is my outlet. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's my outlet. And no matter all of the bullshit <laughs> that happens in this community, it's, in my opinion, just as bad in those other communities too. There's, there's, they're just as bad. Like the other communities like Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, I mean, they might not have the win trading, et cetera, but they have their problems also. So with Guild Wars 2, you just pretty much have to log in and if you if they're not going to do what it is, you know, that makes you enjoy this game, you have to find something else to do. And that's pretty much where, like, I think the majority of players are going to be going the minute a new MMO comes out. Like, the minute a new MMO comes out, this is pretty much what they're going to do. Just like when Black Desert came out, everybody jumped on that. Was it a better game? Hell no. Is Black Desert better than Guild Wars 2? Hell no. But they still all did it because they were looking for something else that was going to fulfill that void and that gap that other games are so as developers as 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 you guys are pretty much have the market for one of the best MMOs out there regardless of what you do and you don't do you have to do something even if it's wrong you have to do something and you no one can tell you if it's right or wrong until you actually do it and let us actually play it and then once you mess up fix it as Time comes along. Like, for instance, Stronghold. Strongholds was developed and forgotten about. That is the, like, that is like the, the mark of Aina. Like, they put out content and then they never finish it. Obsidian Sanctum. Like, I don't even know if anybody even knows where Obsidian Sanctum is located and you know, why it's even there. Like, what, what, what was the point of that? Like, what, like, things like small things like that that basically are developed and then just forgotten about is one of, the, one of the biggest things that I have a problem with Aina. Like, they need to finish as what they start, uh, basically just remove it from the game. Like, that's that's something. And if they continue making content like this, it's going to come to the point where pretty much, no matter how positive, no matter how many mighty teapots and British pots and, and, and bald pots you make, it's just going to be a repetitive chain of, of, of just tired of hearing this. It's time for something new, you know? And I think... I think Anet right now has a market because there's very, very shitty MMOs out there. And it's time for them to slap something on the keyboard and make it go live, regardless if it's bad or good. Yeah. Do you guys disagree with me? No, I, I, no I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think action is necessary. It's been too long. It's been far too long at the end of the day. However, I do slightly disagree with you. I think even that no matter how much of... Like, a clown fiesta this game becomes, I actually think that, the, especially the Twitch community, can actually get work done, no matter what, in my opinion. In my opinion, no matter how much of a fiesta this game becomes, I think people like, I honestly think, I think Guild Wars 2 has got, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking say it, boys. Guild Wars 2 has got some of the best streamers 
on Twitch. Boom. Serious. We got Bic. We got release streams. Okay. We've got the dankest memes. We got yummy sauce. <laughs> like, like he, he's like joking about selling raids and shit. He's going crazy. You know. We have got Nike DNT going crazy. You know. We've got Cinder and his fucking memes. We we well. You know. We used to have. We used to have. You know. People who went off to go play battle right. You know. Like who, who were bringing those memes. You know. what I'm saying. We used to have. We, we still do have great content. Guys. We got Jebro. He does everything nowadays. Like Jebro's doing PvP. Does PVE. Uh, does World versus World as well. Like we have. The best communities here, man. We have the best communities in this in this game. So we, we can we have we have this stuff, man. Like we can get it done. Uh, <coughs> and I think we could we could we could really help out no matter what how much of the game. I think as long as as long as we're here to support it, we have Jack going crazy, big Our dicking Lord underworld PPT, set. dude. And we've got loads of stuff, man, that we can we can do ourselves. Like uh, uh, yeah, Ajax forgotten. Ah yeah, we gotta don't forget about un Uncle Ajax, Who's that Papa guy? Ajax, dude. Who's Ajax? Papa, yeah, and then the YouTube guys, you know, we have people like Noxie doing the dankest memes. We've got, you know, Ajax big dicking on his char warrior trying to like, trying to, you know, solo cue to glory. You know, like, there's loads of crazy, we've got so many great people. Um, so we have to focus not on what we need ArenaNet to do, we need to be the ones taking action and getting work done ourselves. For the little we can do, we can make a big difference, boys, okay? And that's all of you guys. All of you guys can support the scene and the game by just checking out the streamers, boys. You gotta go watch the streamers. Gotta go watch What them. you want, baby, I got what you need. <laughs> you know I got it. So, so it is true. Uh, how could we forget about Fireproof, boys? Like, I, guys, I'm not gonna... Right, don't be upset if I missed out ever. Oh, we got Malfarum at Malfarum Quick Streaming. Uh, listen, boys, you know, I can't name literally every single fucking streamer. Mal right, uh, Malfarian? Malf oh, okay, he's Belgian and right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. That remembers his yeah, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was actually uh, one of the... One of the, what, what the oh, my God. Oh, dude, why'd you delete that VOD, man? That... Oh, dude. Oh, man. I that, delete a VOD. Wait, I didn't... I can't... Someone said it's gone, it's, and you can't see it anymore. It's there. It's oh, there, it's, it's there? It's there. You can see that shit? Bro, come on. Dude, someone, to someone uh, said that shit was fake. Someone told me it was gone. Oh, oh my God. God. That, guys, that was, that was dude, 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 you got a link. I need to link that shit. That stream was probably uh, raw fire. That was raw fire, boys. Seriously. That was some of the best content I've ever seen. A Malferrin versus Bic debate. Oh, my God. That was fucking good shit, dude. Oh, when was that? that? <laughs> <laughs> there was was like a week ago or something, or something like that. I, I can't What's remember exactly. That's like a week and a bit ago. That's like a dank ass debate. Anyway, I, I think we need to focus on what we can do. And yes, I think we have pretty much hammered home what Arena needs to do. I think we've pretty much beaten the horse right through undeath back to life, boys. Seriously, like, but I, I think, okay. I okay, think that the problem. One more time before I leave. The horse is dead. We beat it. The necro comes over there, resurrects it, spams his necro on it, and then kills the rest of the game. <laughs> but okay, I I, 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 one thing I want to bring up because because I, I really wanted to get this new player thing, and I don't think I don't feel like we have ever addressed the new player thing. And so for PvP, do you think ArenaNet should move away from Conquest and go to a more simplistic, based on fighting game mode? Much like, for example, what about something a bit more like GVG in Guild Wars One, where the aim is to kill the Lord? Yes. Not stronghold, okay. not stronghold, exactly. not stronghold, not stronghold, uh, but more like very, uh, like uh, Guild Wars 1 almost, where it's, it's team-paced uh, fighting games where the goal, a goal is very clear, very clear, there's no factor of rotation, and it's about to, like, capture the flag or killing the Lord even, something like that. But isn't, I think that's what they're doing with stronghold. They're, well, I mean, stronghold is dead as fuck, so. Uh, I, I but mean, they're, they're rebuilding it. I and mean, if they did, I think that would be good because I think haven't they said a, that on the forums? To a certain oh, have they? I may have missed that. But it, they I mean, said they were jigging something with stronghold it, because yeah. at the end of the day, um, they stronghold, could do that with stronghold. stronghold might be a bit easier to get into because I think the goal is a bit more. It's it's a bit people more still apparent. Play it. Yeah, I know people, people still, still play it. It's ridiculous. Uh, but actually, I mean, yeah. maybe that might be a little bit easier, for a little bit more of a a better new player experience, like a, a much more obvious goal. It's much more obvious how to win. Where's Conquest? Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me. Go, yeah, yeah, do it. Go. Do it. Hit me. I, I hate saying this because every time I say this, I always get attacked. I don't want to get attacked when I say this. Please don't attack me. I'm going to attack you. I know there's guilds in Guild Wars 2, but I feel, I feel so homeless in Guild Wars 2 when it comes to guilds. I feel like I'm part of guilds, but I'm never at home. 
I know a lot of you guys disagree with me, but this is my opinion. Please don't attack me. Please. I don't feel that Guild Wars 2 is so really focused on guilds and guild combat. It's more focused on basically joining and not really bonding. And I feel like Guild Wars 1 <laughs> did such a good job with bonding with your guild mates and like in early stages with guild halls and introducing guild hall battles with Guild VG. I think Guild Wars 1 did it a really good job, and I think Guild Wars 2 feels like Elder Scrolls Online where you're a bunch of you're a bunch of a lot of trading guilds and you really never really bond with them unless you like, you know, raid and PvP with them, etc. But with the p- player progression, you know, um, players like quitting the game, it's like you never really feel part of it. Like I never really feel like I'm part of a guild. And I really wish and again, please don't attack me. This is my point of view. Please don't attack me. Please. And in my point of view, I wish that Guild Wars 2 took in GBGs and found a way to introduce them, not in only PvP, but also in the GB in the GBG World of World community. And I think that would be an amazing, excellent achievement if Guild Wars 2 took their name and actually made it a game mode called Guild Wars. I actually think that is kind of fair. And... Uh... The thing is, with that... Do you guys read the forums? They literally said they're working on 15 versus 15. Or some yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, like... Yeah, the, yeah. No, 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 no. There is this... Yeah, I know, I know, that, I know, I know, they, I know they are. We've had that debate before. I know they are, I know they are. Uh, but too, with, with the social aspect, the social <coughs> aspect is really interesting. Because I actually think it is an inherent problem with design in modern MMOs, right? It is... Honestly, to play Guild Wars 2, you barely have to... You don't really have to kind of get involved i think i think because of how convenient the game is you don't feel that personal connection but the thing is that is that is a design choice so it is on people to do that right it, it's the way yeah, guild wars 2 is designed to. yeah exactly um but i i, I, I what, what i think what big was is kind of something a bit like um almost like vanilla wow you know, where the players you encounter matter. You know, you need these people. You need that group. You need to have that kind of bond between people. Otherwise, you're going to really struggle to get stuff done, almost, you know? Yeah, uh, that's dangerous, though. That, if, I mean, if, that, you're, if it's if you, the game's low pop early on. Because I, I, I hate that bald fucker up there. I hate him so much. Oh, oh. I hate him. Ooh. I fucking hate him so it's much. true, though. I'm right. You! <laughs> you <laughs> are so bald! So I can't stand like you. Me? Every time we make progression, you're like, no, mate. It just won't work, mate. That pork crocodile, mate. It's so poisonous, mate. It will not work, mate. It will not work, mate. That's what dungeons are. That's what dungeons are. But I, I understand what you're saying, but like, <laughs> Guild Wars 2, it's just not like that. It's just it's just not that kind of game. It's supposed to be casual friendly and like people like the I, I the level experience. I think I think they'd be doing themselves wrong if they started focusing on that. And like to what to what the original point was um, in terms of like PvP in the game modes and stuff. Like I agree. Like actually doing those those kinds of like just making something simple like the Lord thing. Deathmatch just. 5v5 ain't gonna work. Deathmatch is shit. Deathmatch is just a face roll. It makes people feel like shit as well. If you lose, it's awful. Courtyard was bad. Courtyard was their experiment. It they it's just not good. Have the Lord the Lord thing. I that is fine. Replicate some kind of Guild Wars one experience. I'm gutted. I was never involved in that because it sounded like it was epic. Um, that is fine. Conquest is a beautiful game mode. It's got fort. It's got some kind of tactical. A knowledge that you need to kind of develop over time. There's some brain power involved, and there's effort. I like that. But again, like I think the flag. Oh, like capture the flag or something like that. I don't know. Because even like War Song Gulch as well is fine. Like I enjoy that as well. I've been playing that a little bit recently. Can, 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 can I say something? <laughs> sure. Go. Ahead. Go. Okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. So let, let's 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 look at Wrath of Basin. Okay. Okay. Wrath of Basin. You pretty much have conquest, but you don't have conquest. And it's it's such a beautiful design because here here have Jebro, which is a very negative bald of baldness wow. coming at you. Woo. Okay. Courtyard. Courtyard. Jebro, Jebro, you you negative you negative, whoa, negative whoa, bald man. Give me let me say something. Courtyard was never designed. Courtyard was an accident. Listen, you die, you spawn, 
literally five meters from where you die, and then you die again, and then you die again, and then you die again. You never die. Listen, Arathi Basin, you die, but when you spawn, you go like 3,000 meters at spawn, and then you have a chance to come back into your farm while your rest of the team is going around the back and trying to decap something that takes like an hour to get to, or not an hour, but like, like two minutes to get to. You know what I'm saying? So in Courtyard, in Courtyard, you die and then you'd literally just get snowballed over and over and over. It was it, it never actually it never actually worked because it was just like a snowball effect. And it was like it was so too you, small. What, what, how would you change that? There's no way well, to make that different. The no, the arena is so small. You can't no, have like no 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 no, no, no. it's 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 fine completely fine because you don't have to make you don't have to get rid of a uh, courtyard. You just have to basically make courtyard ten thousand times bigger with actual objectives in the middle, and that's either boss objectives. Or it's either going to be some sort of I cap. I said that. I literally agreed with you. I'm confused. Oh. What are you disagreeing with me about? <laughs> I actually oh. said this. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> Wait, oh, listen. I was lagging. I was lagging. <laughs> I, I literally didn't say anything. I said oh. that having TDM is shit. TDM is shit because it's not. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in Guild Wars Two. Like GVG <laughs> is fine. <laughs> and not talking about the fact no, having a boss is fine. It's okay. <laughs> I literally said nothing wrong. I listened so don't uh, don't didn't the, didn't the player base really hate the PVE aspect of like of um, stronghold though? Well, not yes. one of the complaints. This is the thing they preferred. Like like I liked it. I liked it, but a lot of people. In the PvP scene, really didn't like it. You know what it I mean? Yeah. It was the top. It was the like Alterac Valley in 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 World of Warcraft. I loved. I loved, yeah. I loved yeah. right? But how well would that go over in Guild Wars Two? I don't know. That's World v World again. That that's what that's what Alteric Valley was. Alteric Valley was World v World. Uh, well, it's not the same thing, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, like, it's slightly different. But yeah, it's, yeah, you can see the themes. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where. Jeff, it I'm sorry. But it's like. And when it came out, like, I got really excited. It was, like, a new game mode, and it was like, yeah, this is fucking hype, and mm. this is going to be awesome. And I made a video, and it got shitloads of views, and, like, I went around the world and, like, was flipping help promote this shit. And I was, like, one of the people who was well on the hype train, and then we had our first Stronghold tournament on the U. <laughs> Which was awful, because it was the first time I actually got to commentate it. And then I was like... Yeah, this is not gonna work. I, so now I have to be professional and try and sell this somehow. And it just it just sounded bad. It was just not good. I, I'm gonna say something else that's probably gonna get me unfollowed and banned on Twitch here in a second. Okay, that... let's go. Ban ban yourself. Okay. Boom. So <laughs> if I was making either PvP or Warless World and I had to choose one, I would pick, choose Warless World and I would scrap PvP. That would that would be me. I would scrap PvP and I'll go Warless World. I would make PvP Gone and World's World, the primary thing. That's, yeah, that's but how I feel. They appeal to two different complete um, crowds of people. I disagree with you, Jebro. How? I'm going to come at you now. Now I'm coming at you, bro. It, it, it's literally a different game mode for I'm a coming reason. coming at you, bro. They're developers. <laughs> coming <laughs> now at you right now. Oh, well, World World, you literally have forts. And you control forts, and okay, maybe you could think of it as a capture point in terms of the similarities, I suppose. <laughs> but okay, but having a door in the way and hitting of and putting C, I, I just okay. So no, I want to no, say something. No. So <laughs> Elder Scrolls. I, I want to compare two games. <laughs> I want to compare oh, two yeah, games. He's, he's out, dude. He's, he's done. Yeah, go, do it, big. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do World of World and Elder Scrolls Online. Have basically the game the same game modes. They have <laughs> open Realm world, Realm vs. Realm. Okay, in Elder Scrolls Online, you have the Chinese, the Russians, and the Americans going head to head. It's uh, red, yellow, and blue. And I call them. And I basically so uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I, you know, obviously since I'm Caucasian, I joined the Asian forces. Um, so, anyways, what I decided to do was I, I make make and see how Elder Scrolls Online did it. <laughs> And the way they did it was they basically put PvE um, with World of World in one aspect where you would have Zerg fights, but at the same time have, you know, small skirmishes. And 
it's it, to me, in my opinion, I think Elder Scrolls Online, the actual skirmishes that 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 go throughout the game, is very, very, very skillful and appealing. Well, back then, but now it's very, very cancerous because of all the builds that pretty much made unbalanced. But I think World of Scrolls in in Elder Scrolls Online is done very well. The the game the, the the game is developed with points and PVE and grinding, where players no longer just like run around in circles and just look for fights, but they also get stuff done through the like the PVE aspect. And it makes the game a lot more exciting because, like, here you're grinding in the same zone where you're not protected, and it, and it makes uh, PvP very interesting, which I think P- open-world PvP for me is just more appealing altogether, okay? Stage PvP with conquest where you have to do this, to do that, to do this, to win, sometimes it feels very boring and very repetitive. Even though I do it every single night, sometimes it gets old and I go in there YOLO and do something else. But with not knowing what's going to happen is the fun part now how would you fix this in warbus world i personally would make the maps in warbus world bigger but more strategic points on the map just like eso is to make the points uh have to make zerg split apart to actually develop and 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 use smaller teams to be able to take over these points that's exactly what happens in eso there's a lot of zergs in elder scrolls online but at the same time there's a lot of small skirmishes from small guild teams that run around as a group together taking these points over and making cock blocks on the road so a big Zergs can't get through. So I think that if you were to take if you were to take GB as World of World and make it bigger, but at the same time make it smaller by having smaller points on the map to where people have to split up, I think it would be a lot more fun <laughs> than running around in circles and big doing Zerg versus Zerg. I think the maps in World of World are very small, and I think a Zerg or two Zergs can cover the ba- the map the entire an entire entire bases you know, without having to really move around too much. How do you guys feel about that? I haven't played uh, ESO's Realm vs. Realm in a long time, so I'm not really aware of its current pitfalls or how it's developed over time. Isn't it dead? <clears throat> no, is man. It? Yeah, why well, you're so I negative, man? I'm just saying know, the know. truth. Like, the, no, the, is, it, is it successful? Like, one of the things in um, don't, don't one of the things with ESO was the maps were so large <laughs> that you could actually you actually yeah. needed to use your mounts to get back to the battles and such. There were a lot smaller points that were a lot more important to hold. For like, if you were going to hold a keep, there was a lot of extra roads yeah. around it that you needed yeah. to to hold as well. Uh, and doing so gave you a much greater benefit. It was also harder to siege, I felt like, in ESO, at least at launch. So uh, there was also this whole Emperor line, and if you crowned an Emperor, he became yes. Superman and so on. But Look, my, my thing wasn't to, to jump in ESO. My thing was ESO is shit because it's got a lot of lag. It's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of horrible problems with their issue, with their, with their balance and stuff like that. But I wasn't saying go play ESO, boys, easy, quick. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the way the map, listen, the map is designed in ESO is very, very appealing for me because I found some awesome fights in World of World. I'm sorry, in, 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 in Elder Scrolls Online, just on the map design. And if I think <laughs> you were to design the map that way, I think it would be a lot more appealing to people that want to roam, Zerg, and do Guild Wars. But then, like, ESO has the problem that... They can't even get people to play that good content in the first place. So at least Guild Wars Two has got something going for it in in that respect. <laughs> people actually I, like I, I the think, <laughs> you know, I think, and I think what Bic is saying here is there are some aspects that ESO uses in Realm vs. Realm that would probably work really well to Guild benefit. Wars, yeah. This Guild is Wars why too. we need Inks in this community because he is so, so many, wise. There are so many games that do that as well. But we've been going on about like Warhammer Online, like Dark Age. Yeah, of Camp- yeah. Yeah. Like these are the games that they needed to have looked at. Yeah, D-A- the- DAOC was like everybody's favorite for the lo- until they totally well the so game good. aged and and balance killed it eventually. But yeah, I mean their their RVR and stuff was just epic. Like it was so good mm. before it even got popular. Like if people if you if you have got the opportunity to go and play on the private server for Warhammer Online and you like World v World, you will fucking love the shit out of Warhammer Online. Oh my god, it was so good. So and the problem, unfortunately, and I know people don't like to hear this. I hate hearing this. But the problem with World vs. World is that uh, in order to revamp it, uh, number one, there's a lot of different individual groups in World vs. World that make up the entirety of that scene. And they don't always want the same things. Mm. So getting proper feedback is a little bit difficult, I think, sometimes. The second thing is they don't really dedicate, in my opinion, they don't dedicate enough resources to World vs. World and haven't in quite some time. 
And in order to pool more resources to World vs. World to give it proper justice and to give it more attention, those resources have to come from somewhere. So where do you pull it from? Do you take it away from living story, expansion content and work, raids, fractals? Do you take it away from PV? Like, where do you get those resources from? So I know people hate hearing that they don't have enough resources to do or revamp particular things. But mm -hmm. War vs. World is a giant monster of a mode that Super really much. needs a lot of manpower and attention that I just don't know that they have. And where do you focus your where do you focus your efforts as well? It's like with with they've obviously got people who are thinking about, you know, the various games that are going to be able to come out and compete with it and the hype behind that. Now the the you've got to imagine if you're arena net and you're top level or if you're even a dev or whatever you're working on, the the core at the moment, and, and this is why I, I can understand, again, why they don't develop things in World v. World and PvP further, that their core audience is PvE, is a casual audience, and that is where they want to focus their efforts, and that's fine. But I think that there are things that they can do when we were talking about the bans and things like that, which are not developmental, that <coughs> they can do to just help, to just listen to us and just say, like... You know, maybe it's not good to leave that Reddit thread up for a week and leave it constantly going with five or six hundred likes or to say how you can win trade in PvP. Maybe that's something someone could do about that. Not not a reading, well, obviously. Yeah, yeah that, that's Reddit. Right. Though. That's the Reddit. But like that's say. Reddit. But like someone who is in charge, like get that off. Like there's arena net like ban the people who are fucking win trading ban the people who are hacking like what? these aren't developmental things and then i think they really need to start at like that level and then try because it's the basic stuff that is the issue like in terms of I, that because it puts people I, off trying to have something in the actual first place when i played football we had this guy named tyler and every single time you'd say some truth he'd come right behind you and say Hell yeah, man. And he would make your ass red. And this is how I felt with Inks said this. I, if Inks was here, I would high five him and do that to him. Because I think what Inks said the most is that he he hates using the word that they don't have the resources. Okay. And they don't have the resources to, to focus on either PvP, PvE, and or Warbles World. And I think this is what I talk about all the time is that they're making us have to pick. They're not saying this out loud that we're going to have to make you pick either World of World or PvE or, or PvP. They're not saying it. They're all. They're, they're basically making us guess it. And if I had to feel that I have to pick one game mode over the other, I would pick PvE and I would pick World of World because I know in PvE and World of World, I can feel that my friend Jebro, my friend Mighty Teapot, and my friend uh, Ink here can all play together and go in harmony as a as a as as a coalition, other than solo war heroes. I mean, actually, I've actually lost so many friends in PvP because a I can't play with them, and b after we either win, um, a just a just a friendly casual tea bag makes the friendship never happen again. So I think. <laughs> in you know, oh, yeah, like, that's, think... just, that's just people being snowflakes, they're little bitches, man. But yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. No, I see what you mean, man. I think um, for 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 the stuff that you're looking for, Bic, I definitely feel that, yeah, Duo Q was probably really... You, when Duo Q left, you were pro that was probably like really shitty for you. And honestly, for me as well, I, I really like doing playing with a friend, right? And to a certain extent. I but love it. The, the only outlet you have for that now is, ba is really 80s, right? That's it. Or you can do scrims, right? And I think that... But honestly, I, I'm sorry, man. Like, I, as much as it hurts me, and believe me, I lo I'd like Duo Q. I prefer to Duo. But unfortunately, they had to bring, they had to bring Solo Q in. They, they had, had to. to. They had I agree. To. I agree, they guys. I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that those players in this community were so much better, more knowledgeable than when you saw them. You're like, you know what? It was fun while it lasted. And you know what? The, the morality, the demorality in your team. Like, I'm streaming, and I see, like, I don't know, um, I don't know, um, cauliflower on the other side. And it was like, oh, my God, that's cauliflower. He's so healthy. He's going to kill everybody. Oh, and that's shit. basically, it was over before he even started. It's like, please, just play the game, you know? But they would give up before he started. And yeah, I, I agree yeah. with you. That it, it, you know, but now with cauliflower is like 50-50, either my team or your team, we could st we have the, the chance that we could still win. You know what I'm saying? But again, that is not how you solve a problem. You don't make cauliflower be RNG. You make cauliflower basically have to be part of a team and grow, grow more cauliflowers. 
And the word, what I mean by cauliflowers is the healthy player in the community that understands. You want to thrive with cauliflowers. You want to have, and cauliflower, like I said, cauliflowers is something that you want in a community. Um, I don't know if you guys, in my country, cauliflower is, is a term that we use for healthiness. Okay, so I guess cauliflower is not a good way no, to, no, to talk no, to no, Americans. No, I, get, I know exactly what you mean. But the thing is, I, and I completely agree with you. However, however, the thing is, we have had the cauliflowers, right? We did, we basically did that, Bic. We had the cauliflowers. You would have two it's cauliflowers. It's so stupid when you say no, it, dude. No, we're doing it, dude. We had cauliflowers <laughs> duo queuing. And people, instead of being inspired by the cauliflowers, just said, fuck it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lie down and let the cauliflower take my ladder points, dude. I'm gonna let that cauliflower take my ladder points, boys, okay? And that is not what we want, okay? And that is because of the community. The community is not the kind of person that says, you know what? I'm gonna turn into a fucking cauliflower, boys. No. It's the it's the kind of community that says, I, I will never be a cauliflower. I'll never be good <laughs> enough. It won't ever happen, man. Like that's the kind of community we have, okay? I was like, oh, I, I mean, and honestly, we have a lot of people who say, I don't even want to be a cauliflower. I just want to get my I just want to get my legendary back piece. I you know I just want to get my like raw, you know, like plat two. You know, I don't want to be a cauliflower, okay? That's the thing. Like, we don't live. You, you you want to be a cauliflower, Bic? I see that shit. I know that shit. I can see you as a cauliflower as a head. Someone photoshopped that. Let's go, boys. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Okay? But some people don't even want to win versus the cauliflowers. They don't even want to win. No, not everyone wants to be the best, and especially in a community as casual as Guild Wars 2. Like, people don't want to be cauliflowers. Okay? They don't want that shit. And we have had I'm, that. I'm... Because I'm, the thing, I'm a the thing, lost. the thing that should have happened, okay, <laughs> I, I have with no the cauliflower situation, didn't happen, okay, <laughs> because we had, we had that situation for ages where people could have, okay, people could have said, right, I'm taking down Cinder and Misha, I'm taking them down. They're easy. They're fucking newbies, okay? But that shit never happened, man. Okay, like no one got good. No one wanted to get good. You know what I'm saying? Like. It wasn't what it wasn't really there yet, you know. Like the, the, the cauliflower, the inspiration to be a cauliflower, there. and this isn't the fault of the devs, okay? This isn't ArenaNet's fault. It's the fact that the community just wasn't that interested, okay, in becoming the cauliflower. That they that they are being defeated by. They just they just maybe they just didn't they just fucking like cauliflower. It, they yeah, broccoli. pretty much. We've got a nightmare in the chat, boys. Oh shit, dude. We got so we got so lots of memes here now, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that no, is, is, cauliflower is uh, I use the word cauliflower because like it's a it's a healthy thing that you want to you know eat and it's good, it's tasty and it's pure, right? Cauliflower is pure. So in my country, it's like you want to be healthy like a cauliflower. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and what I mean by cauliflower is that player that wants to basically. Uh, Prosper that, that, that wants to grow that wants to learn wants to be healthy. You know what I mean? You want to be a cauliflower you have to eat like one. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I can't like I can't explain it to you for no, no, I know I know what you said. I know what you said. I know what you said. I know what you said, man Cauliflower makes you fart. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. Now here's the core issue. No, no, no uh, 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 Tyn Kush, well, I'm sorry, you have hit the nail exactly. How can you be interested in overcoming the top of the ladder where there is no perspective considering both rewards and tournaments? No, because the reward is being the best. Okay? Yeah, but I've, I've been talked about that numerous no, times. No, no, no. Like, there should it, it, be a want to be the best, yeah, but there should, isn't. No, like, exactly. People That's the have whole to. issue. That's the whole issue. We, we're yeah. asking for a fucking broccoli to turn into a cauliflower. That shit ain't gonna happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you it's don't like, want to go back on yourself. Uh, That's fucking you, shit. You, you're not gonna have a carrot. <laughs> you're not gonna have a potato turn into a cauliflower. You're not gonna have a carrot turn into a cauliflower. It's just never gonna happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. It, and you, it shouldn't need motivation. Watch a PvP stream. Well, actually, no, honestly, Cinder is a little bit different because he actually does care about the other game modes as well. But like, watch a pure PvP, okay? They delete the chests they get from World of War. Give away everything, pretty much. Because they don't... A, a, tr a PvP -er who, who gets to that high level doesn't care about the rewards. They care about being the best, okay? And that is how you get... That's what cauliflowers are, boys. Okay? Yeah, there's not, that's what there's cauliflowers not are. And there and, are not... And you know what? Uh, yeah, and, but that, mm. 
Yeah. And you know what? That's exactly what I wanted to say about the cauliflower. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't PvP because I want rewards. I could give a fuck less about the rewards. My reward every game I go into is having a good match. When I have a game where it's 499 to 500, it is the most satisfying thing. When I have a game that's 450 to 500, it's so satisfying. It's not about winning or losing. It's about competing. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. Like, I'm not bullshitting. Please just take me Let's seriously go. for one second. I take seriously. I always Listen take you seriously, Bick. I am always okay. deadly serious with you, real talk. Okay. I'm a very competitive player in, in, in games. When I, when I see high schoolers playing football in the backyard, I go in there and say, yo, who's going to get our asses beat today? Because I'm still very competitive. It doesn't matter if you're high school. It doesn't matter if you're in grade school. I'm going in there to play football versus you. So when it comes to – when I walk in there – You're a small I, child. You're going to defeat them. It you doesn't matter. You your hands. You better start running, boy. You better start running because, you know what I'm saying, I'm competitive. Anyways, when I walk into that field, I don't want this kid just to get slammed. I want him to be able to <laughs> – I want him to be able to give me some sort of competition. And that's what it comes down to. When you play soccer, when you play football – when you play chess, do you like smearing somebody 62 to 0? No, you want the competition. When you play Madden Online, do you like smearing somebody 100 to 0? No, eventually the winning gets boring. That's you want competition. Luck. You know what I'm saying? When you watch the NFL, do you like when the Ravens smear and go 15 to 0? It's fun, but not every season. You want them to kind of struggle. <laughs> you want the underdog to win. And that's where competition starts. You have to have competition. You have to have some sort of counterplay you have to have some sort of like oh my god i might actually lose this it doesn't matter for misha it doesn't matter for bisha it doesn't matter if i'm even held something about the tv i might have to lose that tv yeah well yeah, that's what it comes yeah, down uh, to. yeah. And, and that is what it comes down to and the only and the way you do that is by getting a bigger player base uh simple exactly. as that simple as that. That, that 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 the reason the games are shit uh, is because <laughs> there is the the the, the, the skill weight is I, I don't I don't know how I don't know how to sound like a dickhead here. Like the skill weight is weighted very low, right? Majority of players, not good. Okay, uh, to the point where uh, even like players, yeah, like, you, you, I don't know. Dude. Honestly, there are probably some cl complete bloody donkeys in Legend, even like who will eventually get to Legend, right? Because you can just kind of grind out and uh, you can kind of like fifty fifty, like you'll eventually get there because of like, how much of a goddamn like meme fiesta. Uh, much of a meme fiesta that that PVP is right, and the the way we need to do this is is to is to just try and get people back into the game. We need to try and increase the population. I think there's some stuff a Net can do. I think some great stuff would be like making PVP very rewarding temporarily because that would bait in the PV um that would bait in the the. Like the the mm, PVE you players. Gotta be careful though. No, you no, no, no. Uh, dude, I think you. I, I think at this point you've got to you got to you got to bring the uh, you got to bring the memes, <clears throat> man. You got to bring the memes. Yeah, but but when you when you take those rewards away or you yeah. nerf those rewards, I mean, rem do you remember the backlash uh, that people that, had? It was about... too far. You you, you, know, you got, it, it was too far. I mean, you got to You got to bring <laughs> in stuff like bonus Inks. weekends. You got to bring in bonus weekends. Hey, you know it. what? Finish I it. totally agree with you about bonus weekends. I totally agree about bonus weekends. I, I think that uh, I think all game modes should have some kind of bonus weekends. World vs. World, PvP, whatever. But um, you got to be careful with how rewarding you make something because if they make it, re remember when you could get like the ascended armor, super easy farm PvP that attracted a lot of people. But then the next season they added the armor tokens in or whatever. And they upped the cost, right? I think that was the change that was basically made. And people freaked out, right? They, they went crazy. They lost their damn minds because they, they started taking the rewards away. That was an easy farm before. People hate it when you nerf rewards. So you got to be super careful. If you're upping the rewards to, to attract players, and it will, it will attract players. Look at the legendary back piece, right? That will attract people. When you start to take those rewards away, you got to be super careful because... Uh, it's easy to lose those players just as fast as you gain them. In America, I've always seen lines on on uh, Black Friday because the rewards are massive, and that's exactly how these players bring their the, their mentality. Is they're waiting for Black Friday to happen, and it's going to be Black Friday every weekend. See, I think that's a I think that's a very scary mentality to know that. These players are playing purely for the rewards and, and not for the actual competition. And this is where it comes down to that you have to have a community um, and you have to have some sort of guild guild laddering system. Like this is why I, I – guys, this is what I'm going to say. Guild wars. This is why I think that guilds and rankings really matter because 
if you force players into communities and, 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 and guild gameplay, I think all of these rewards, all of these things that we talk about don't have to be Black Friday specials. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, I, guild I don't team, know. Guild, team didn't, guild teams didn't work in PvP, though. Jember, Guild Wars 1 was so big, dog. What do you mean it's not going to work? Dude, I, I'm, I, dude, so I, I, guys. They've literally done it. They've guys, I'm, done re it. I'm really sorry, but I don't know. We're, we are the old men. They, welcome, to, welcome to 2018. Everyone wants that instant carrot, dude. Everyone wants that instant. They want those they rewards. They're obsessed with it. Also, yeah, guys, yeah. I was being a bit of a meme about the 50-50 legend win rate. Of course, it's much more like 70 because of how like skewed the win rating is. Oh, don't be yeah, silly yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Don't be silly about that. But you know, you know what I was trying to say. Like, the, the core point is still there. Like the, the skill distribution is very weird. Like the leagues are kind of meaningless almost. But, but you, you guys are being uncharitable. Never mind. Fuck you guys. Fucking guys. Uncharitable. Anyway, oh. yeah, no, not uncharitable. They're just uh, delete. You know, going. Oh, I was going to get Deliberate, <laughs> not recognizing wow. a little bit of a meme. Okay. What anyway. is going on about, today? <laughs> I know, what is going on? <laughs> but anyway, like, like, people want the we, carrot, man. They need the carrot. Yes. It, in the current day, everyone wants instant gratification, especially in the especially in the casual community, right? Especially in the casual community, and that is the community we find ourselves in. Okay, yeah. it is very difficult to find people who want to do it just for the joy of it. They because they want the shiny, they want to feel gratified, they want to feel they want to be feels good man, they want to be feels good man without the gun. Okay, they want that yummy carrot, dude. They want that yummy yummy carrot, dude. The little rabbits going hey, for the carrots. You know what? And you know what? If that yummy carrot comes with good mechanics, a good gameplay, I'll take yummy carrot at the same time. But first, focus on the good gameplay and the good mechanics. Secondary yummy carrot, and I'll take I'll take both. And does anybody disagree with that? It, uh, yeah, no, I mean, no, uh, obvi obviously, you need to have a meta that is that is enjoyable to the larger player base. Um, if something is extremely powerful, broken, or whatever, it needs to be balanced as soon as it can be, right? But that's where we're gonna go right back to stage number one: the basics of Guild Wars Two. From the cheating, etc., is uh, is I think Guild Wars 2 needs to go back and reevaluate if we're gonna start making this great game great again. What is the middle class citizens of the Guild Wars 2 United States of America missing? And that's the middle class of the United States, which is what? the uh, people that run this economy, people that log in every day. What are they missing? What are they missing out of the life? What is the 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 balance of life that's missing in Guild Wars 2? And I think one of those things is. The fairness of equality of both of them. Honestly, just take the entire U.S. Constitution, put it right into Guild Wars 2, and you have a good game. The equality of players, which is from cheating, from oh god, from no, trade, win Please trades. Don't do that. And, hey, hey, hey! Listen, I'm done with them talking. And on top of that, make it fair and prosperous <laughs> for everybody. And that's not to have five necros in a match or two firebrands, two yep. necros in a mesmer. So you Guild Wars 2 is going to shut down, guys, if we get the American Constitution. <laughs> Don't you dare! <laughs> about America. Don't you dare. Because Don't you dare. America shut down the other day and I <laughs> wants to put it in Guild Wars 2. I understand what Bic wants now. He wants Guild Wars 2 to die. That is what he's doing. He's infusing positive ball, man. fire it's shutting so it much. down. Don't support oh him. Goodness. He just wants to shut it down. Oh my I, I just want to. I want to interject for a second here. A Ajax has been talking for quite a while now about <laughs> about basically sales and price reduction for Guild Wars Two, as well as putting it up on Steam. And I, you know, hey, yeah, absolutely, you know, that'll that'll garner more people in. That'll attract more people if the game is on sale. But you know, when you go to do those things, you also need to. You also need to you need to fix the current state. You need to balance it a little bit. I mean, we are getting a balanced patch mid season, but um, you know, some of these underlining problems that we've been talking about all stream need to be Ranger pets will looked be, at, um, addressed, and so on. Will be empowered. Uh, you'll be able to inflict ten more stacks of torment um, via sunshade. <laughs> um, <laughs> What, what else? Oh, salty, mother healing, salty motherfuckers, brand. dude. You salty Fire motherfuckers. healing will be improved. Yes, they, they're going to they're gonna, <laughs> just gonna stack it up. Like, a, a, like if you just dodge on someone, it full heals them, right? <laughs> one dodge is one full heal, boys. That's how it goes. I mean, they made... they The last balance patch was like... A, there were some parts which were okay. and <laughs> like, But then there were some things where you're just thinking... that they, they just can't... They, 
maybe they've just not got the ability to do some of this stuff. You know, like the the Guardian general change to healing. What was it on one of the tomes? Where 100 percent extra healing was it the healing power stat? Oh, they just buffed the beneficial. they they just buffed the scaling on um everything yeah. on the hill tome. Yeah, they just they just buffed it and increase and, and increase the number of condies as well. And the I think cleanses. that was more for like trying to bring in Guardian as a potential healer for raids, was it? No, that was not, the not, not, not for raids. You don't really need a lot of healing in raids at all. Um, it, it was supposed to. It was supposed to counter scourge. I think that the entire point of that was to to counteract scourge and condi. <coughs> I don't even know. Like that's the thing. Like because it was already strong. It was already ridiculously strong. Yeah, but scur like, scourge, like was, scourge, scourge was dirty, dude. Have, scourge was dirty like, as hell. Was, and but the thing is, is that they they didn't they nerfed some of the potential for scourge but then they buffed the guardian so the fights were just longer they weren't just they weren't just they weren't short and it was easier to kill it was just the fights are elongated to ridiculous levels where the guardian can 1v2 forever as well and still do a decent amount of damage i mean it's not it's not the worst in the world but still it's like what i would love to have and i don't know if anyone remembers this the shows back in the day with uh, guild Wars 2 guru and when grouch was doing them early on is when they had devs on talking to the community about balance. We used to, that 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 used to happen. Those shows were epic. I don't know if you guys remember them. It might have been yeah, before. Yeah. Like I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah, um, I remember. But some decent talk and t discussion about balance, and they used to open up the forums. They opened up World v Worlds, and and all of it is this is communication, this to and from, which like. I think we've been missing for a long time. I just would love to have, at least to have the feeling that you're being listened to. Um, and, and even like um, like the ASP, we used to have a lot of communication with devs, with Josh, with other people. And our opinions were genuinely asked about things, about like even the pro players and top players at the top set, end of the scene, like what they thought about Stronghold, what they thought about the league development, what they thought about all these different things. Whereas now, there is none. So I mean, I there say, is no communication. Yeah, bro, I have to say something, man. You know, I think Mighty Teapot and I, we're at the bottom here because we have all the brains. <laughs> and this is... <laughs> no offense, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Holding this but shit like, down, baby. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the thing is, I think... Your outlook on this is very, very realistic, and I, and I don't think it's not realistic at all. But I think that you're very, um, very repeating in the way where you're always going back to ain't it isn't doing this and ain't it isn't doing that. And I think we've, as a community, haven't. I haven't I'm sorry? said that at all. That's not what I said, dude. You, the thing is, the thing is, is that I've been in this community from almost day one <laughs> until now. Like, I haven't gone and played other games. I haven't streamed other things. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I have been in communication with the devs. The dev there's been a point where people have listened to the top tier players like Sind and Helseth. And they've wanted to have that development. And communication, especially in a PvP game, and this should be obvious to all four of us, is important is the basis to develop a PvP mode, a game, and balance. If you do not have that conversation... That fucks everything I, up, and the I, work, like PvP games. This, I'm, I am genuinely serious about this. It, it's about that. It has to be because that is I, what PvP games are about. Paragon have failed to do that. They are going downhill. Uh -oh. Any PvP game that happen, it fails. That I, is the core line, and it's not me insulting arena net. It has to happen. If it doesn't happen, yeah, it yeah. fails. I think Jeb's. I, I think Jeb's kind of right, man. He's, he's, he's I right, don't. Dude. I don't it's disagree with Jebro. I think Jebro hit the nail in the face. 100%. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. In the face. <laughs> and whatever the, uh, you know, the term. That's the term. A valid point. I don't, I don't disagree with you, but I think we're like way past that point where we as a community know that that needs to happen. That's like saying if you want to drive a car, you got to get in. I think that's pretty much like common yeah. sense. Is it happening? No. Is it going to happen? God, if anybody knows. I mean, I think pretty much we as a community agree that you're right. Okay? Like, God I don't think anybody agrees. <laughs> you're, you're right. And what you've been saying is what we've all been saying, I think, on this channel for the last couple hours that this, this channel has been streamed or not, right? But I think 
as 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 the plebs that we are, that we we don't basically get listened to, and and we accept this in this community. I feel like you know, as to be playing Guild Wars two, you pretty much have to accept this because you know, like you, you can't expect them to do something uh, without being let down on the other end. And I, and I feel like for PvP, here, I feel like this is very true. Like I feel like the letdowns in PvP since season one have been coming patch after patch after patch, and the and the um, the communication hasn't been there. And I I totally agree with you. I don't disagree, but the where 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 I call you negative in the aspect is is like we're past that. How do we avoid the fact that they're not going to commu- communicate with us? And how do we still enjoy this game without them actually listening? And how can we introduce something new in this community without having to have a net basically? Okay, let me explain it in your in your terms as well that you mentioned that you've been saying you've you've used the examples of shops. Call right? of hours? You've used the example of like <laughs> things. I don't know. Think of a relationship. Man, woman, communication, talking, issues, problems. They come to and from one person to the next. If that doesn't happen, this relationship breaks apart and it ends. But and you go happens. on to a new relationship with someone else. But that's these relationships and though. people are, are community developers. Players and community go and play some other game. They go and talk to some other developers and community that want to develop and actually, you know, enhance and make them better you're and right. actually enjoy it. Jeff, bro, you're so but right. Like, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. But the thing is, right. is, is that that is part of... I don't think that you can actually... Like, as a community, I've done these things. I have created an organization where we have had monthly tournaments. That is the exact kind of thing that needs to happen in the community. You're right. Like, You're right. People does like his PvP stuff as well with the Mystic right. Build. That's the only other thing we can really do other than the communication. Like, what else can we do? I don't I, think... I actually... I asked that question. Teapot earlier asked... Um, <laughs> What can we discuss other than making sure Aina can do these things, which is communicate, more frequent updates, balance, etc. All the things we talked about tonight, okay? Mm-hmm. What can we put on the table that can introduce and give ideas to Aina that they haven't thought about? What is it that we can do? And, and I think repeating the fact that Aina, you're not listening to us, isn't those ideas. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think they know they're not listening to us. I think they, I think that I think they understand they're not listening to us. I think there's, in my opinion, I think it's done by design, because if Aina's listening to us, then they're speaking North Koreanish, North Koreanish. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not a language we're speaking. It's something that's un, un, un not. It is not English. It's something. So wait, didn't different. you just say what are the ideas that we could say to Arena that, but then you said they're not listening to us because <laughs> they're not. They're, they're, they're so not what's the point? To... <laughs> I'm confused. No, because the idea, <laughs> the idea that we have, what we have to prove to ArenaNet is that we are worth listening. Nice glasses, by the way. Okay, we have to demonstrate. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck is this tea time? This is like the dankest tea time I've ever seen. Right, boys, <laughs> what we need to explain and demonstrate to Arena is that we aren't just a bunch of fucking clowns who are just going crazy. Did I, do I need some glasses as well? I, I, I. <coughs> Oh, I got that shit? I, 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 <coughs> let me think, yeah? Wait. <coughs> oh, oh, what I was saying was, what I was saying was that if there's like actual ideas, new game modes that we can actually talk about other than, ain't it, please listen to me, I got glasses on. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what we need to do, dude. We actually need to fix that shit. We, we can't just be a bunch of people with glasses on. We gotta be someone that Arena Net takes us seriously, boys. You know what I'm saying? Hey, oh, we, 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 have to, we have to come together as a community, express our ideas clearly. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 oh my god. What, what the happening? fuck? What is Carry it? on going, what, what, what You're making it? complete yeah, sense, yeah, man. Right, Go. okay, boys, boys. I understand. I'm as, boys. A, as a thing boys. First fellow Englishman, having right. sunglasses <laughs> is weird. We need <laughs> to come together as a community, express our thoughts in a calm, a clear way, and then, yes, yes. then that at that point, that's when ArenaNet can either they can. They, well, for, for a start, I would I would quite like a response, right? Do you need some hats? I haven't got a fucking. Actually, I've got yeah. the hat. Hey, like let, Arena of Valor, guys. Let, if you got self phone. Let, let me get some. Up. Let's just let's, let's get some hats on, boys. You know what I'm saying? Let's what get the some, fuck is that? Hat? Yeah, we, let's get some hats going as well. You know, let's just just do that. Let's just get some hats. 
Yeah. You guys, you guys got some hats right. or something? But anyway, you know. <laughs> Whoa, fuck, that knocked my hat. But anyway, all right. We have to, we have to clearly express ourselves. And then if Rinnet listens to us, and they listen to us. If they don't, they don't. But what we really want is we want to have some kind of uh, communication on that, like to you know, if our ideas are being heard out. Because right now it's kind of just a very weird situation. Where honestly, no one in the community really knows what the fuck's going on, dude. I mean, no, no one really knows what the hell's happening. <laughs> what is Inx? Yeah, Inx has got. Okay. What, what the hell is it? He's got some Cthulhu set up here. I mean, what, what is even going on here uh, at this point? I, I I would like to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to say something. Okay, do it. Okay, so Ink started this, by the way. Um, <laughs> let me put on my my hat here. Yeah, 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 nice, nice, yeah, yeah, nice, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to say something here. <clears throat> I have talked about this on Twitch um, many times, and I've been burnt about this many times. Um, and I think that Guild Wars Two has enough classes and specializations where they can basically limit one class per game now please don't burn me let me just say something real quick when you go play paragon when you go play these other mobas they have like 50 different classes we currently have 27 we have three 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 times okay. three okay if guild wars 2 were to focus and this is an idea i'm throwing out here if guild wars 2 were to focus to make guild wars 2 Specs all in line with another one, uh, all in line with the other one to make them all pretty much bring something new to the table. And you were to limit each spec from being and going in there. Like Druid and Soul Beast can be in one match, okay. but Druid and Druid cannot be in yeah, one yeah. match. Yeah, yeah. I think that the game would be a lot more interesting than having two classes out of out of basically twenty seven, basically playing in one match at all times. Yeah, uh, two firebrands, two mesmer, uh, you know, etc. Yeah, two firebrands yeah. and two three scourges. I mean, sorry. I, I, like, I, yeah, I, and here's here's the, here's the thing, and I, I think that would be good. I think that would be good. However, I think it will be a problem to split the player base further. So right now, as it stands, I don't think implementing rules like that is wise especially when you have so many people playing the same classes scourge is very popular because it's very effective it's a very easy class to get into and you can feel good you can feel like you get and work them in the same way that stuff like uh firebrand is also a pretty popular class because you can get into it you can feel very powerful very effective and you could say the same thing for stuff like i'd say sp spellbreaker as well you know you can feel strong you feel powerful you can feel effective right uh, uh so if you if you do this, you're just going to increase, like, you're going to make the queues get really wonky, man. I think it's, I think right now, I think they have to be very careful with what limitations they put on the matchmaker. <coughs> and I, I, I totally get that shit. I agree. I you know what? Hey, you know what? You made a valid point. Uh, you made a very valid point, and I agree with you. I don't agree with Jeff Verbal. I do, but I do agree with you. At the end of the day, I, I do think that, yeah, like, having, having, uh, but at the same time, like, the thing <laughs> you're is, you're a if, fucking if, wanker. If you, <laughs> if you have, it, <laughs> If you've got three, oh, no. if you've got three necros in the same in the same team, that's really not that good. I mean, like if you actually play well against something like that, you're going to lose. That team is going to lose. If you have a team that doesn't isn't well rounded, it's not going to be what. It's not going to be good. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, boys? It's it's not going to be good. Uh, PvP is not just about having like the beefiest fucking like, team fight ever. That's the, kind of the beauty of Conquest to a certain extent. There is there is that rotation factor. So if you're playing against three Necros, just never fight all three Necros. Just, just like play the map. Don't play the fucking like team fight. Otherwise, you're gonna have, you're gonna get AIDS. And honestly, even in a team fight, you can beat that because Necro is fucking slow, dude. At the end of the day, Necro is slow. You can outplay him and you can play around it. You know what I'm saying? You can still you can still get the <laughs> you can still get those wins. You know what I'm saying, boys? Uh, so I think I think class hacking is not too much of an issue because I think if you're a good player, it doesn't matter and you're just going to win anyway. And I, some people will say like, oh yeah, double mirage, double necro, firebrand, op, op, op. But honestly, I mean, that, I, I don't know, dude. Like the meta, this meta isn't as fleshed out because people aren't playing it that competitively. Like. Uh, 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 people aren't playing this that competitively, and that is what uh, needs to change. Uh, all the kind of balance complaints, are, especially class stacking, is a bit kind of wonky. Because honestly, I think that you don't see that in the um, in the EU AT, right? You don't see that in the EU AT. It was a balanced team versus uh, versus some balanced teams, right? So I, I don't think it's uh, the, the class stacking is really as bad as maybe in low leagues. It's kind of cancer, but. I don't know. Like, it, it, that's how it's always going to be, really. Like people are going to play kind of wonky, weird, annoying stuff in 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 the earlier stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, but okay, so let me yeah. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. Hit uh, me, hit me. I, I, I want, what do the whole thing? Well, do you Americans say devil's advocate? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's pretend that Guild Wars Two makes another expansion tomorrow, and they introduce another specialization for and another weapon sets for every other class. Okay. Okay. Now you have nine times four is thirty six. Okay. <laughs> That, yep, that, that, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's no, no, four, that, yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay, so now 36 different variants from the nine classes. Do you limit now the classes in his, in his tier? Do you not have enough, or do you continue a lot of class stacking for the next one? Well, no, I, I actually think that the joy of the joy of Guild Wars 2 is that eventually, when the balance is refined. Um, it will be less of a class thing. It will be more of a role thing. Maybe that in the future we'll have, um, let's say, uh, Mesmer could have a new spec that could be instead of it could be like a Necro almost. It could be like a the Boon Ripper. It could be a, a Boon. It could be the primary source of Boon Rip. So you wouldn't take a Necro. Maybe you'd take a Mesmer. Uh, if you wanted to have, I don't know. Uh, let, let's think. Let, let's think about something that maybe like now you ha how you have a, like a side node holder with something like a Druid. Like maybe in the future you'll have a Guardian that can do that. Right, that can, can that can kind of be that annoying piece of shit that kind of like jumps around like a druid and and, and like jumps on the train and is a dickhead, right? Like maybe you'll have you'll have a warrior healer, a warrior support <laughs> class in the future. Right, as the game progresses, the joy, the beauty of the elite specialization system is that you can have role overlap, and that's something that we are going to see in the balance. I genuinely, in the balance, when the balance is refined, we are going to see a resurgence of all the specs. For a great example of this is SD Thief is back. Right? SD Thief is back because it's good against stuff like Firebrand. Right? It's very good about like wrecking wrecking the boon boon, you know, boon bitches. It's, it's what it does. It's very good dude. about yeah, yeah, most people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very very good against because everything everyone's got boons for days, man. That's what in the, so that the SD Thief is doing really well against that stuff, right? So uh, we, you, so we are going to see. Yeah, no worries. Dude. We are going to see the resurgence of stuff like as the uh, as the as the balance is refined. That is how Guild Wars Two is designed. Yeah, right now it's a bit skewed in favor of Path of Fire. You know, it, it skewed in favor of Path of Fire. However, uh, that can be refined, and we'll, you know, we'll we'll end up. And that's okay. That's, yeah, that's it, it's that, fine. Like, yeah. I'd, it's fine if stuff's overtuned for a bit, as long as it gets fixed. But that's very important, as long as it gets fixed and addressed. Right. Right. Balance. And I, okay. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I want to say one more thing before before you go go, go that way. What what that what you just said. So, you, um. You just said something that I think really hit the nail in the face again, and it's um, if they if they go that route and they and they and they get new introductions of a new class. Okay, so okay, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna tell you honestly. Okay, so yesterday I went into a ranked match with, and this was this was done accidentally. It was I was playing Spellbreaker. I was playing Sword, Offhand, um, Mace, Main Hand, um, Bow. Wait, what? Okay. I was playing sword, <laughs> man hand. <laughs> yeah, okay. Awesome. Yep. Mace, soft hand. Okay. And then bow. He's playing longbow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely fucking useless. I did it on accident. I thought I was trying to show the, the stream how useless it was, but I did it. I did it on accident. I didn't realize the build was. I, I actually had that build on there. My my point to the uh, couple couple of days ago, I was trying to show them how useless these weapons were. Right, absolutely useless. Okay. And there's there's certain weapons, especially on the warrior type, that are just absolutely pointless. And I think that the reintroduction of another expansion, because a lot of people have been talking about new expansion already. They're going to be adding new weapons, but I think that Guild Wars Two right now, balance wise, it's really really good with some mind tweaks, and it can bring a lot of Different variants if they focus on the old weapon sets that pretty pretty much are not used. I think that I think their primary uh, primary one of the primary things they need to balance is these weapons that are not just utilized when it comes down to competitive PvP whatsoever or War of World or even PvE. I think they really need to focus on these things. You yeah, know, uh, yeah. 100%. Uh, I, I think, think that is something they're looking to address. But also, some of the weapons don't have to be good everywhere, right? For example, you might think that Longbow yeah, right, on right. Warrior is not particularly good, but it was. <laughs> it was at one point when Condi Warrior was about. Yeah. And right now, uh, Longbow is the... Uh, well, Longbow Sword and Torch is the meta for Warrior in PvE. Right, and hammer is not particularly good. It used to, again, hammer used to be good in PV, PvP. There was, you know, the classic build, right, the the, the hambo memes, where, where it was good. But however, uh, in world versus world, hammer is currently the meta for 
Uh, well, for, for Warrior, right? So they, and in the same for, same for Rev, right? Rev Hammer is not particularly useful in, in PvP. You can play it as kind of a, a cheesy build. Hammer but, Revan is so good. Yeah, but, but, so in, good but in World, in World, in World versus World, Hammer yeah, Rev is one hundred percent the meta. It's arguably the strongest build in the game. So one it doesn't, of the it doesn't yeah. have to be good. Not every weapon has to be good in every game mode, right? So that that's something that also needs to be taken into account. There are three game modes, and the weapons can be designed around specific and game modes. You know what? Fine, right? I, I I was actually plotting against you. Oh yeah. You're baiting me? This is You're this trying is to expose me. I was baiting you guys. Me, this is this trying where I was trying to expose you next because I wasn't yeah. done with you. Yeah. This is where I choose <laughs> if you were to make this perfect balance, this perfect balance of the game, and you were to choose a game mode, I think World of World would be that game mode to choose where things just go so smoothly. Because you bring some of these classes in PvP or semi spexy weapons, they're absolutely they just don't work. But if you take the stats of World's World of Food, you can make almost all these weapons yeah, very, yeah, very yeah. strong. That's why World that's why World Wars World is such a great game mode. World of World, yeah, World like is it. so beautiful in that aspect. Yeah. Like I I, I personally think that if Gear Wars 2 were maybe choose and I and I chose World's World, I think that I would be able to play Gear Wars 2 for a minimum of another three to five years without complaining too much. I, I think that I would be a lot happy, a very, very happy with World's World and going away from the whole PvP scene and Conquest gameplay. Not not completely giving it up, but not taking it like we've taken the last couple of years as as how as hardcore as we've been taking it since season one. I would be very happy. That's me though. I don't know if you guys agree with if you guys agree with me. Inks? <coughs> What? Can you give me your knowledge here? What do you think? <laughs> about that? What, what are your thoughts? No, what are your thoughts? Let's go. Let's bring in. Uh, and the reason what? I ask you is because you don't PvP. I want to hear your thoughts because I know you don't PvP. And somebody that doesn't PvP, how how would you handle having to choose between World of World or PvP? Which one would you choose as, as a player that doesn't PvP? I would choose World vs. It, this is a biased opinion, though, because back in 2012... When I got to level 80, that's pretty much all I did was World vs. World for probably two years. Why? Like, well, because that was really the end. There was really no, there was no raids. Fractals were relatively new, uh, and they weren't nearly as developed as they are today. I wasn't into speedrunning dungeons, which was really kind of the other thing I guess you would do back then. So World vs. World was the big community thing to get involved in and do. There was a, a constant presence of... Uh, you know, what they would call raids, where you got together, you know, two, three times a week, whatever the schedule was. And then during seasons, when they introduced World vs. World seasons, you know, it got really intense where people would actually burn themselves out for playing for mm, like 36, yeah. 48 hours straight. Um, which I didn't really experience until they released things like <laughs> Tequadal and Triple Trouble, where I would go 36 hours straight, refusing to give up on a boss. Uh, which Teapot can now experience, like in raids, where he refuses to give up until he's killed it, no matter what happens. I never go, Binks. Never. <clears throat> never. So, but I think those things are good, right? Um, but if you're talking about, do I have to choose between PvP and World vs. World? I'm biased towards World vs. World because I have a better experience there. So, and because I, I enjoy that game mode more. Teapot. I know this is your show, but I'm going to ask you a question next. Yeah, do it, dude. Lay it down. I, I just had a comment on YouTube saying, Bick is dumb because he's asking a PvP -er that never PvP is, which one would you choose? I don't know if you don't understand that this community is not made from people that only PvP. Like, you have to have people that don't PvP choose PvP of course, for yeah. PvP to thrive. So you have to have plebs, some are plebs, moderate, above moderate, Experts. You can't just have experts and then the plebs don't matter. The plebs do matter. Yeah. Pleb lives matter. Okay. Plebs matter. So, man. Plebs the are the core ask, of the game. Core of the game the, completely. The reason I ask Inks is because Inks is one of those players that doesn't fucking PvP. And I'm asking yeah. him, if you were to choose, which one would you choose? Because I don't I know you don't PvP. I know you want to unite in that scene. But if you had to choose, <laughs> which one would you choose? And he says War was World. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the that's what's gonna base her on meta. That's not what's gonna be. What's gonna be? That's gonna. What's gonna make PVP? It does. What's gonna be based around inks like in the game? I'm asking a player that doesn't PVP. Which one would you choose? It's just this basic basic knowledge of having more players choose a game mode over another game mode. Now, what was, uh, uh, Teapot, if you were to have the same question, which one would you choose? 
Uh, definitely. Uh, well, uh, uh, World vs. World because I I like uh, I uh, well the reason I would choose World vs. World is because I kind of like the scale of it and it's also a lot more about the battling. Uh, I I really like. I, I don't know. I, I have a thing for like 30v30, man, or in particular 15v15. I think it's an epic, epic, cool, like team coordination fight. I love that it's all about the, the team coordination, team communication, stuff like that. Um, but honestly, yeah, yeah, I would pick World vs. World right now. But I'm, tr I'm trying to play PvP as well, because I think uh, I would really enjoy... Well, I'm, I'm, I would really enjoy PvP in a 5v5 organized situation, right? I would definitely... En I, I enjoy playing stuff like... Played a few ATs. I've even won the ATs, the but... What is the point of this discussion? I'm confused. Jebron. I don't, I just I don't know. I, it's just big, was, man. It feels big, man. There was, there was a comment. Je, um, MMO made a comment saying that it almost feels like Anet doesn't have the manpower earlier. Ah, right. And if you were not, to choose. About two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a while. If you choose. <laughs> but I, I know, I know, but we've been talking for a long time. And you know what? Hold on. Inks, you know, I haven't attacked you all, all game or all conversation, but it's time for me to attack you. <laughs> Jared has repeated himself like six times. How come you don't look at him and attack him? What? I have not repeated myself. Jebro. You have I'm repeated yourself like 20 times. Every time. Because... And it doesn't listen to me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. No. No. I Big roasts, boys. Big roasts. I've literally, like, I've answered the question correctly every single time. Yeah. And which is you actually, like, you have to, it's, it's, I'm not even going to answer it again. Like, when you make a PvP game to be successful, community and developers have to work hand in hand. Yeah. Here we go. That's not, that's no, not me the, insulting. The, no, wait. No, uh, Bic, Bic, I'm laying this shit down. I'm, laying, I'm exposing you. That is the correct it. answer. It is. It's, it's I don't agree. I don't agree. <laughs> It's the You're easiest. Right, I don't disagree. There's no other answer to the question. I'm not being yeah, mean. But the thing I'm is, Ana doesn't truth. use common sense, though. That's a problem. It's like you're trying what to you dissect about? the animal, but you're using a fucking por uh, pork. Like you're using pork what? to dissect the animal. <laughs> Like, it doesn't make sense. That's what Ada does. Walk in an animal to dice Yeah, you're trying wait, to cut him meat. You're trying, wait, you're, trying, wait, you're trying to cut meat with a slice of pork? What the fuck are you talking about? Yes. What the fuck is this shit? Yes, wait, I know. What the fuck are you talking about? This shit? What is this shit? What? Oh, my God. What does that even mean? I know. I don't what, know. Pork? Is that pork <laughs> gameplay or something? What even is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> talking about cauliflower. Talking about pork? I mean, what? what? <laughs> talking about the Worst forms now, of like what? vegetables and yeah. meats. And, and, and <laughs> like, yeah. to be fair, to be fair about the PvP World vs. World question, I played <laughs> PvP for the first five seasons. So for the first five seasons, <laughs> yeah. you know, when I had goals to work towards, when I was actually enjoying the meta a little bit from time to time, some metas were better than others. Some balance patches were better than others. Um, but when I enjoyed that stuff, I played PvP for the first five seasons. But balance really wasn't happening there was a couple of seasons where balance was kind of stale the meta was kind of stale and so you lose interest or i lost interest anyway and and i moved you know back to playing another different game mode or whatever and luckily world versus world you know within the last i don't know last year they got a fairly large update which brought me back into world versus world to play that for several months yeah so yeah bro if you were to ask the question, which one would you choose, PvP or World vs. World? <sighs> well, I, it's a difficult one. <laughs> All right, so I, I played World v. World from the start of the game. I played it more than PvP. Um, but World v. World died for me your first year and a half after launch. Um, a lot of the community disappeared. When they, tried, when they started to do the whole server transfer thing, it, it just went to shit. A lot of the the best guilds in World v World left as well, and like other guilds had to reform and stuff like that. I'm not saying that it's bad now. Um, and then I went to PvP because I wanted more of a challenge. I used to raid lead; uh, it was fun, but I wanted to test my skill as an individual, um, and I wanted to have more tactical knowledge about the game. I wanted to know my class more, and I felt that leading a raid um, wasn't really going to be doing that for me. So that's why I wanted to be in PvP. And I think that's why people play PvP. Um, that doesn't necessarily say that to be a World v. World player, you don't need to know your class and you don't need to be skillful because I think the best people in the World v. World obviously do have that skill and that knowledge. And there's different kind of tactics 
um, and ways of playing the game that I can appreciate for sure because I I love that kind of uh, realm versus realm combat. I've played all of the realm versus realm MMOs out there because I love it. Um, but I think Guild Wars 2 is, is lacking. I don't like that Zerg versus Zerg mentality. Um, and now if I play it, I do have a tendency to just roam about more than more than often than not. But PvP is uh, a different kind of satisfaction. It's bite-sized stuff. I can get that enjoyment instantly. You know, that like you were talking about earlier, like that 499 to 500 game, like I can get that in 15 minutes. I can get that I'd release, I guess that you, you, you get, you know, and I just don't think... <laughs> I knew that oh, was release? Is it release stream? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Release? Release! Oh, wait, have we had two releases this stream, dude? That's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's been more than two. I mean, this has been more that's than two. That's a lot of releases. But that's, but that's what it's about, you know, and, and, that's, and that's what you want to have from game to game. But, you know, it's, it's just not... And it does still happen, but there are, it is very much one-sided most of the time now, especially when you get to like mid gut like even earlier, probably silver, top of silver. But it's just, it's the core <clears> of what <throat> I said before. There are issues and there's communication issues. They need to ban fuckers. And there's, there's some easy stuff they can do that will solve a lot of the issues. But community is a problem and players are a problem as well. And it's, this is a mixture of shit. Do- do you think do you do you three individuals feel like there's a big division between the PvPers and the War of World players that just one is going to choose one of the other and they're not going to they're not going to accept? Well, like, I, I think they're totally uh, there's crossover in players for sure, but they're also very different communities, right? Yeah, the communities are quite separate, but also what's what's worse and why this is a very difficult task for arena is the fact that you can ask you can ask five players for their opinion in world versus world and get at least seven opinions and you can ask you can ask players about the same game mode and you'll get completely different answers like the communities yeah. are are very different and also quite fragmented within the game mode uh, and that's why it's difficult to get a good kind of cohesive overview of what people want and i think that's why, to a certain extent, that, that's part of why it's very difficult for Arena to make decisions and why it's hard for them to change things. Because they're not... They're, 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 they're expecting like, the like, very negative reactions no matter what they do. And they have, and they have um, evidence to support that as well, actually. Uh, because basically whatever arena does they get really hard flame for it by at least someone <laughs> right and, and this and honestly and i i'm I, i've i have to say this is our fault as a community the reason Amen. why arena don't communicate as much i know there's some arena that guys here so I, I you know it's good to say this i 100 like to their faces right the reason they don't communicate as much is probably something to do with every time they open their fucking mouths like a, a giant army of angry redditors and forum users just just I jump on them it's got them ridiculous yeah. it's got them You're fucking right. can you imagine though they're trying to fix our fucking game that had come through from, like, as an example, the Mount Crisis, the Mount Gate Crisis was put into something oh, that was that, something positive. ridiculously yeah, that, important. Yeah, Mount Gate. Positive. I mean, come on, what were people get, thinking? What get, were they thinking when they were being that get, negative get, about some, like, irrelevant get, bullshit? Get, get, can I say something? Yeah, yeah do But it. they don't do that about balance. Yeah. Can I say something? Oh, they won't Please. do that about balance of the game. Can I say anything. something? Please? Yeah, go, yeah, hit, hit us, big. Are you going to expose? Okay. No, no, not Jebro. <laughs> Jebro's doing a good job right now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Okay. So, I'm not an ENA partner, okay? So this this automatically means that this wouldn't favor me, okay? <laughs> Which is fine. I don't care, okay? But for you guys, you guys are all partners, right? Yep. For ENA? Okay, perfect. So this is yeah. this is so this At is least taking, currently. Okay. <laughs> Mine's so this is that gonna way take <laughs> this is gonna take like me out of the picture completely, which is fine, because I <clears> want this I want this community to thrive. But imagine, imagine, imagine a perfect world if Anet gave the job to you three to take their ideas and put it in perspective through videos and bring it, bring it the front line to you guys so you guys tell the community the truth of what's going to happen. So let's say a pass from now, we're going to have magical mounts that fly in the air from zero to 100 miles an hour. 
Hey guys, my name is John Brown, and ANET's going to introduce new mounts. Now these mounts are going to be able to go from 1 to 100 and from here point. And this has been tested by me, and I've tried this out myself. We've done now, this. This has actually been a thing. This yeah. has actually been done with, with the new classes in Heart of Thorns. We all got to stream the classes. This was actually a really, really good incentive, and this is actually something that's been done. We actually got to stream the classes before anyone got to play them. A, a ton of streamers, so we've actually done this, but they haven't done it again since. It's, actually, yeah, it's a good bro, idea. This is why, They've this done is it, why, I don't know why. Jibro, this is why, Jibro, this is why we're going to do all like this. This is why you and I are going to go 1v1 now, dude. Why? Oh, because, 1v1? <laughs> because this is what it's I'm talking about, done. dude. Jibro, it's good. We're, like, we're talking, we're it talking about that. not what happened in, in Sir, Sir, Siberia in 1961. We're talking about what's happening now. Now yeah, as no, we no, speak. No. Well, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying like, okay, do, okay, you okay. Remember, do you remember? I'm actually agreeing with you. Like, no. I actually okay. completely okay. agree okay. with okay. you. Okay, I thought you were disagreeing with me. I thought you were disagreeing no, with me. No, 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 no. Okay, it's, okay. It's, okay. It's, so, it's communication. Again. Okay, okay. The, it's because you're, I can't, I can't say English. That's why. So, to, to go back to what, what uh, what's his name? Uh, Mighty Teapot says. Teapot says this. It's our fault as, as a community because we always play main as with a forum post. Four posts can't really get their ideas out they want to, so all they get is flamed and they basically give up, right? So if we were to take, or if you guys, because you guys are the partners, if you guys were to take the front line, get the mechanics, understand what's going on, communicate with them, and then release the information, then you guys could explain what's happening without all of that flame for a and front line. Well, do you, don't you guys think that's well, just that, a better subject? Well, that's what, that's what I try and do, man. I, I, I really hope that it's come across that I really sing the praises of, the, for example, the latest Raid Wing. And I certainly did with the World vs. World change. I, the World vs. World reward structure change, brilliant. Really, really nice. There were a few problems, got ironed out. Really good stuff. New Raid Wing, amazing. Pretty much the best Raid content they've ever done. Uh, uh, by far, <laughs> like, they've done a proper challenge mode that, like, actually took even, even the best guilds, took a very long time to actually kill it. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, I feel like, uh, the, 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 to a certain extent, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do, man. And I'm slacking on the videos, and when you talk about videos, I, I, that's the thing I really want to try hard. New Year's resolution, boys. I'm actually going to try and do this sort of stuff. I want to try and approach... Uh, approach the community with these discussions that we need to be having because right now people are just raging um when some when we need to be the counterbalance was we need to be the warriors okay the gladiators my friends okay when there's some like when there's someone saying some dumbass shit on reddit or on the forums you need to have that person out there that says hang on what are you talking about boys are you fucking brain dead he's like your brain a cauliflower or some shit boy you know what i'm saying Good. Like, it's yeah, but Brett, I thought cauliflower was healthy. No, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> He's in the wrong context. Yeah, I mean, if you cauliflower's a brain, you're not going to get far, are you, dude? You, you know, you, you, <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's why Jeffrey oh gets old right now by you, Teapot. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Expose him. Yeah. Expose <laughs> him. Expose him. Expose him. We, we've got to be the ones who are... Because, you, 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 right, guys, okay? One of the reasons I even bother to complain about this game so much, which is not... I don't really complain about it in a bad way, I don't think. I don't like... I don't hard play in the game. The reason I complain about this game is because I'm just going to straight up say it. I know, I know there are people there. There's a lot of people here. Nearly 500 people here. Boys, Guild Wars 2 is the best MMO. Best combat system. Simple as that, boys. And I think some of the most passionate devs <laughs> out there. Like, when you see the devs talk... You know they fucking care about the game, boys, okay? I know they care about the game. And it has the best content. It's got the best combat system. Raids, awesome. Have more fun in, in this game's PvE than in any other game. My brain is not pork, boys, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a pork brain, okay? That's not what's happening, here, okay? And that's why I complain about this game, because I, I think this game <laughs> is, yeah, is we awesome. Yeah, like, all right, boys? I, I think World vs. World, well, PvE and PvP, or great game modes. I think they're great game modes, and they've got so much potential, right, boys? And... The core of that is just, you know, in the, the mechanics of the game, right? The mechanics of the game, awesome. Devs, great, friendly guys. You got big memes, like, uh, you know, people getting banned. Hilarious as fuck, like, that, you know, they rip off the clothes off, uh, jumping off. You got, like, Chris Curry exposing people on, on Reddit. It's hilarious. It's, it's goddamn hilarious, boys, okay? Like, you've got memes. We've got memes. Okay? And that's all that we need to live on, okay? But... That is why I complain about this game. And that is what we need people to have. Instead of just kind of complaining, you also need to have that positivity shit, boys. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta have that positive energy. It's fine for me to kind of <coughs> complain the game, you know, I complain about the game a little bit, you know? Like, I, you know, I bash the game a little bit sometimes, but I don't think I bash it in a particularly mean way. But it's you can have that and be positive in the same way that you can bash the game and also be positive, you know? You can you can, you can can be positive, but you don't have to be 100% positive. You have to be critical. I've used the word positive too much, though. Yes. Okay? I'm cool positive that word. I've used it too much. All right? You can't, you can't be, and you can't, and <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you praise the game too much 
and you aren't critical, which is like I've I've been critical all day. Like I've been and these are meaningful, important things that and I don't think I've ever been like this, like about the game. I don't think I've I've always been like people have blamed me, like said, Oh, you should say what you think. I've always been honest, but in a respectful way. You can be respectful and be critical about something. You don't have to be a complete wanker. Um, and and there are people who do that in in various game modes, and they insult the player base to a ridiculous level. It's different than getting salty in PvP, um, like I do. And and it's just like you know knowing the difference between that. And you can this is what this kind of show is good for because you can be critical, you can have those things, and you can think about okay, they could they're not doing this, but maybe there's something we can do that that can help. But I think that you do come to a point where you know you do really need to have that that push and pull that push and pull needs to work in both it needs to go both ways right we need to have some kind of communication in pvp we just we need it like we need to have it it needs to be there and i'm going to be calling talking about it until the cows come home but also the community is like and i think something big was saying earlier as well is that we've got to be careful that all this stuff that goes out on reddit about wind trading and everything it also gives people an excuse to for their own poor gameplay or their own willingness to not actually try hard and get better because they can just now they can be like oh well there's win trading anyway so you know that's why i'm losing and and then you've got to have the mentality of just like i've got to just try and improve and sometimes it might be that and sometimes it might not ban everyone that is doing this shit and then maybe and warn people a statement some simple basic stuff and i am repeating this from earlier mm. as this basic stuff can be done to and it's not development work it's not about representation if anything it will just say to the community that we care about the game mode it's another way i am a trained therapist for four years i dealt with people who had issues with support and care it's a simple thing people want to be heard people want to be listened to and this is what an mmo community is about if you do not listen or if you do not acknowledge the fact that you've listened to someone they feel like they are sh- they're not worth anything and that is about that is the simplest way i can put it down that yeah. is it's, it's simple i think that's real talk fuck, this is real this is this isn't re- this isn't tea time this is real time and that's actually real shit dude that's nice yeah that's real i think people it's do just, feel like they aren't they, they, they people do actually feel like they are man listen you're 100 right man uh and I, that's uh, what i hope that we can get some communication going and make this game together the community wants guild wars 2 to be great i definitely think the devs Net want Guild Wars 2 to be great, so let's fucking work together on it, boys. Let's and, get let's work together is, on it and make it the best game emphasize, ever, boys. Even better I than this now. I want to emphasize that it doesn't mean that you have to be. It has to be like my balanced decision is the best decision, and you should do this. I'm not saying that. I'm more saying like a simple, like an example, like a simple statement saying anyone that does this will be banned for this time period or will be perma banned. That is the uh, like. It doesn't have to be much. It can be a little thing and start off from there. You know, it's as easy as that. I but I can say, constantly eat his microphone. Okay. I, I wanted to say something that Jebro said. Um, so, hi guys. My name is Bick, and um, I make a, I make a clown of myself all the time in this community because I think it's more fun when you're laughing and learning other than just being serious all the time. And this is, this is the serious side of me that I don't really show on Twitch that much. Cause I want to be fun, exciting as I'm learning and talking about the people and talking to other people. And I think a lot of people think I'm a fucking dumbass, and that's fine. And a lot of people think that I'm a genius and that's fine too. And a lot of people think that I don't even know me. That's just fine. Even better. My point is that this is a game and no matter what it comes down to is that you have to have fun. Learning <coughs> should be fun. Talking about a game should be fun. And I think that in general, all of this serious talk that sometimes we talk about sometimes goes over the edge. And you just have to remember, no matter how bad things get, you always have Alt F4 and come back to it when it's fun again. Like, you don't have to make this a stressful. You don't have to make this a job. You just log in, you have fun, and it's easy. And that's what it comes down to. Enjoy it 
and play it while you have fun. When it comes to the point where it becomes a job, just take a damn break. Chill the fuck out. I mean, honestly, sometimes I take I need to take my own damn advice because sometimes I get over the edge. I start doing backflips. I start twerking on the walls just to keep my, myself yeah. on the thing. Yeah. But the thing I've is, seen it. That you just have to, you have to you have to just <laughs> calm down. And 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 the biggest thing is when you <clears throat> you talk about things like this, you kind of need to kind of get away from that all of that you know seriousness and just just have some fun, let loose. And this is the reason I act the way I do is because. I think that there's a place for business <laughs> talk. And there's a there's a bit there's a place for just having a good old time about some ga- some ga- some stuff in the game that are just really depressing sometimes. And I think not being heard and listened to is very depressing sometimes. And I think that it, it doesn't have to be from your wife, your girlfriend. It could be from A Net. It'll make you very depressed. Hi, my name is Bick, and A Net's been ignoring me for years. <laughs> That, that that is that is boys. You don't get that anyway. That is uncensored raw bick. Okay, boys, raw. Okay. And I think that that is kind of a sentiment that we can all agree. And I, I think we all love the game. We all want the game to do extremely well. And we all have a lot yep. of fun doing the game. We, you know, we're here to help the we're here to help the community. I'm, I want to support the community. I want to grow the community, man. I want to see two two K eighteen being the year of Guild Wars two Twitch. I want to see big memes on Guild Wars two Twitch. You know what I'm saying? I want to see that. I think everyone wants to see that. Okay, and we really care about this game. I think this this is the longest tea time ever, and we have we've had one hell of a discussion, boys. I, I really hope that I really hope that at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know, like obviously you know I'm a mere pleb, but I really hope that at least something we're doing is helping um is helping ArenaNet do their thing, you know, because we want to make this the best experience for us and for everyone who watches us, everyone who participates in the game with us. That's that's the experience we want to create, and I think that's a pretty good way to round it off, lads. Longest tea time ever, by the way. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. But I think it's time that after telling, uh, solving every single problem, uh, simply, <coughs> easily, I think it is time to uh, tell you guys how to solve one more problem, which is uh, how to find us and what we do, okay, and find out what we do. So, I'll tell you what, we're going to go with our illustrious guest, the legend, legendary release god, Bick. Tell us, oh, <laughs> ooh, are you going to release that bicep? Oh, shit, dude. All right, so... Tell us what you do, man. What are you doing? What are you up to these days? What's uh, what's Hi. up with you? My name is Bick. You can always find me on Beluga Pod, uh, rubbing myself with lotion, showing you guys something that you guys don't have, and that's muscles. Ooh. I pwn people with my Berserker <laughs> Ranger. <laughs> I pwn people with my Berserker Ranger, yeah. and I'll tell you what. You've probably been pwned by me many, many times. If you see me, you're going to see death. When you see me, you see me from 2000 range. You see the American Sniper Baby, and I'm not even American. That's how Seth. Jebro. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so okay. confused. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and there you go. Link is in chat, guys. The bot is posting those links. Make sure to check that stuff out. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Our second guest. It is MMO Inks, also known as Cthulhu Inks, Child of Satan. Okay, tell us about what you're doing these days. <laughs> what, the, what the hell? That What is that kind of intro? I mean, how can I follow, how, how can I follow what Vic just did? I mean... It's not really going to be quite as exciting, you know. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube at MMO Inks. Uh, we put up, I think, three or four videos on YouTube this week. And uh, we did 10 hours of streaming yesterday. So we've been Holy killing it. Shit. We've been killing it with the numbers. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. So come check out, you know, come check out Twitch. Check out the YouTubes. Always follow on Twitter. We must crush Mighty Teapot. He's fake news. No, 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 no. He, doesn't, he, doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have black line boosters, so... What? Follow me instead. Oh, actually, singers are awesome devs here. Guys, black line <laughs> boosters. Can you just put a word in for me? Just put it, in, put it back in the, put it, put it on the statuette table. Just, just put it in there. Maybe put that, put that back in. We could maybe do. That. Okay. Anyway, but that's if what you she want, said. that's what if, she said. Ooh, ooh. If we, uh, if you want a streamer who can stay up for more than four hours, then you definitely want to go for MMO Inks, uh, or Bic actually, or Jebro. They all stream. Uh, they, all, they can all stay awake for longer than me, so that's pretty good stuff. And let's see our final guest, final surprise mystery guest. <laughs> it is the second bold man on this stream. It is Jebro. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what I'm you're all, up I to these days. Start to, I, always start to, I always come in as a ninja guest, like yeah, halfway surprise through. Surprise guest, I, dude. Like, I, am a, I am a surprise surprise guest, yes, indeed. Um, you can check out all my stuff. It's been in the chat. Guys, Like I, 
I've been doing this for fucking ages, PvP wise. And uh, the devs, and like you are some of you, my friends, you know, I don't mean any disrespect. Let's keep going. Let's keep doing awesome shit. Play PvP. Be good. Duo queue up to plat two. Just to just have a good time. Don't fucking win trade. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like just just try and if you want the PV if you want the PvP scene to be good, just be just be a decent person. That's all. That's all I want. That's all I want. And follow me on Twitter at JebDan. And also JebRayUni is my Twitch stream. And I will be streaming after this because yeah. I was meant to stream at twelve. <laughs> Um, so I am three hours late, so I apologize about that. <laughs> but I was like, they're talking about bit. PvP, yeah. and I got to stick my oar in. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> well, again, uh, thanks a lot for coming on, man. Surprise is always good. I love a surprise. Uh, and then finally, if you've enjoyed all of that stuff, then it's time to hit that follow button on this stream, guys. I stream every day. We do <laughs> PvE and World vs. World, intense stuff. Best PvE guild in the game, also best World vs. World in the game, easily. We're rank one, easy, best. You've got memes. We've got hats. We've got all sorts of things. It's a massive clown for us to be sure to watch every single day. Get back here and save the community, boys. But also, I just want to give a quick meme. Guys, I want you guys check out streamers, guys. Streamers and spread some positivity. Let's go. Wait, Jeb's already gone. He's starting his stream. But guys, seriously, check out the other streamers. Support the boys. Let's get more people streaming this game. Let's get that community going. And if you see some dumbass shit, you, got, you guys have got to call that out, okay? Like, we can't just yep. let ArenaNet take all this bullshit. Okay, we can't let ArenaNet just take like a huge amount of fire and think that it's all pure negativity when actually it's most people are just saying nothing. Okay, we've got to make our voices be heard. Okay, we've got to make ourselves loud. All right, and we've got to tell ArenaNet that actually we do care and we do want them to do well and we were, we're willing to work with them to make this game better. But anyway, follow me on Twitter, not Inks. Follow me on Twitter, boys. Follow here. <laughs> subscribe on YouTube. Watch all the other tea times. Okay, all of them. All of them. Watch them all. Uh, we're going to host. We're actually going to raid. We're going to do a raid. So get ready for that, guys. But yeah, follow, sub, all that stuff. Get those emotes. Get those memes. Follow everyone here. Going to make the bot uh, post it again. Loads of links below the stream if you want to find everyone who's ever been on Tea Time. All that good stuff. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that is going to be it for us, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. This has been one hell of a Tea Time. And we're going to be starting the raid in just a moment. But until we do that, thanks very much for watching, guys. And we'll bye bye. see you around. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me, man.